For the next 1,000 days, I'll be fighting in the Skibbity Toilet War, harnessing every Titan ability to destroy the ever-growing toilet army in Minecraft. On day one, I spawned into a city as a baby cameraman. All around me was war as the Skibbity Toilets and the cameramen fought to the death. Wait, I don't have any weapons! I ran for my life as the haunting song in the Skibbity Toilets echoed through the battlefield. My people retaliated with weapons of their own, but there were too many. Just then, a massive jetpack skibbity toilet touched down and prepared to fight it out with the Titan cameraman. The toilet made the first move, charging at the cameraman for the first hit, but the Titan brought down his hammer to smash the skibbity's head. The skibbity growled and fired a barrage of rockets at the Titan cameraman. His steel plating took heavy hits, but he was built to last and retaliated with a giant laser from his chest. The laser scorched the skibbity toilet and bored a hole through the building behind them. The fight continued, and each side took to the rooftops, firing every Everything they had at one another. The cameraman got a few hits in with his massive riot hammer, but the toilet shot rocket after rocket at the Titan. The massive cameraman dodged left and right, but got hit for some heavy damage and was eventually grounded. Things were not looking good. To my horror, the strength of the giant toilet was too much. The Titan cameraman was defeated, and the jetpack skibbity toilet turned his sights on me. Ah! I thought I was done for, but a mysterious TV woman stepped in front of me. She turned on her screen, setting the massive toilet on fire. Her TV head then detached from her body and flew up to me. Run! Her head then flew towards the Titan toilet for a second attack. I did what she said and ran for my life. On day two, I was being pursued by the smaller skibbity toilets. I tried to throw them off my tail, but I turned a corner and got ambushed. They hit me with a painful attack, attaching some sort of device to my inventory. I punched the toilets away and kept moving, but now enemies were waiting for me around every corner. This thing must be a tracking device. I tried to throw the device out of my inventory, but it wouldn't budge. I was forced to keep running with it attached to me. I ran until I finally finally took cover inside of a facility. Unfortunately for me, the giant jetpack skibbity toilet broke through the wall with his army. They had tracked me here and I had nowhere to run. What am I gonna do? On day three, the army was inching closer and closer towards me, but I spotted a strange device out of the corner of my eye. I rushed towards it and snatched it to find that it was an electromagnetic laser gun. I locked it onto the enemies and fired like crazy. The smaller toilet started falling to the weapon, but the giant skibbity was completely unfazed. Your life ends here, pathetic camera. I knew this was the end until the TV woman from before returned to my aid. Hold on tight! She managed to teleport us out just as the massive jetpack toilet fired lasers from his eyes down onto us. We had then arrived inside of a TV secret base. Did we lose them? I could hear the skibbity song progressively getting louder and louder. They were still on our tail! Don't tell me they put a tracker on you! Oops! The wall of the base exploded as the toilet army flooded inside. On days four through six, the TV base was being invaded by skibbity toilets. Led by the jetpack skibbity toilet, the toilet army belted out their song loud and clear. They zapped all the TVs down one by one. The TV men tried to retaliate with their own attacks, but they were losing the battle. I knew this was all my fault. Bring out the secret weapon! Just then, the TV Titan touched down onto the battlefield and began approaching the jetpack skibbity toilet. The Titan hit him with a left and right hook to the face, only angering the toilet even further. He retaliated with a headbutt, knocking the TV Titan's head back off his shoulders. The two Titans began duking it out, showing their immense power with hand-to-hand -hand combat and deadly explosives. The TV Titan used his speakers to blast explosive rays at the jetpack toilet, knocking it backwards, but he wasn't through yet. The jetpack toilet retaliated with massive incendiary rocket launcher blast, setting the TV Titan ablaze. The Titan shook off the flames and kept fighting for the sake of the base, but was starting to look exhausted. Every single attack that didn't land or was deflected caused a ton of collateral damage to the surrounding base. His fists dealt massive damage to the skibbity toilet, but it still seemed unfazed. The toilet's barrage of rockets seemed never-ending as he fired upon the Titan with a limitless number of rockets. Back and forth, back and forth, the two Titans continuously slammed into each other in an all-out brawl. Despite the power of the TV Titan, the Toilet Army and the Jetpack Skibbity Toilet were still too much to handle. The TV Titan was defeated! Retreat! All of the TV men ran for their lives around me as the Skibbity Army closed in. 
I tried to run, but the jetpack skibbity toilet took to the skies and fired a powerful laser attack that vaporized the ground. We all fell into the pit below us. On days seven through nine, I woke up in an underground room with only a few hearts remaining from the fall. All around me were my TV allies, defeated from the horrific battle. This is all my fault. To my surprise, the TV woman ran up to me in a frenzy. They're awake, hurry, they're going to come for us. I followed the TV woman and hid as more toilets arrived to look for stragglers. They were getting closer and closer to our hiding spot and I knew that we wouldn't last long. They're gonna find us, they can track me still. Hold still. The TV woman's screen lit up and she she managed to scramble the tracking device's signal. He went this way. The toilets all headed off in a direction to follow the new signal. That won't last forever. Come on, hurry. The two of us made a run for it, but during the excitement, I actually bumped into a random bell, making a lot of noise. Why is there a bell here? There they are, get them. The skibbity toilets turned back towards us and we continued to run as fast as our legs could carry us. On days 10 through 11, the TV woman and I were being chased by the skibbity toilets. I didn't think I could run much more until we ran up to a giant vault door. This way. The TV woman activated a switch and the vault door began opening before our very eyes. The latches to the vault depressurized and lifted the heavy disc from the floor, revealing our escape. When we saw an opportunity, we ran inside and locked the door behind us. I looked around and realized we are now inside of a secret underground laboratory. All around us were TVs building different kinds of weapons to fight in the war. This place is amazing. Thanks. But even with this tech, we're still losing the war. <laughs> Skibbity toilets are too powerful to defeat. I'd love to serve your cause. Well, we have been working on a way to make cameramen stronger, but it's a dangerous procedure. Suddenly, my tracking device began to beat wildly. They locked onto you. Leave now! On days 12 through 15, the TV woman forced me through a vent in the underground lab. When I emerged on the other side, I found myself in a storage room full of plungers. I didn't have a moment to rest though, as the skibbity toilet forces fell from the ceiling to ambush me. There's nowhere to run. Your journey ends here. I quickly grabbed a plunger off the ground to defend myself from the incoming toilet forces. The skibbity toilets attacked me from all directions with their crushing numbers. I jumped out from the plunger room to give myself some space to attack the toilets. Luckily for me, I was armed with a few weapons of my own. I alternated between my plunger sword and gun to break through the onslaught of toilets after me. The weapons were pretty effective, and I managed to take a few out until the jetpack skibbity toilet arrived. Uh-oh. I continued fighting with everything I had, but with the jetpack skibbity toilet helping out, I was left with only half a heart. The giant toilet charged his final attack, ready to land the finishing blow. On days 16 through 18, I was about to be hit with a fatal laser attack when the TV woman popped out of nowhere. Leave my friend alone! The TV woman tossed over a mysterious upgrade. I grabbed it and suddenly my body began to change. I grew in size and my camera head transformed into a higher grade cinema camera. I was now a large cameraman with 10 hearts. Time to put this new power to use. I dual wielded two plungers and ran into battle. Toilets began to fall one by one to my flurry of attacks. I was able to deal a lot of damage now. I slashed into the horde with my dual plungers, knocking them back and doing heavy damage with my new strength. The horde surrounded me, but they were no match for my spinning plunger attack as I put all the combat knowledge that the upgrade gave me to the test. I made sure to avoid incoming rocket fire from the jetpack skibbity, dodging and rolling out of the way just in time. I helped the TV woman flush the rest of the enemy she had swarming her, and then began to set my sights on the jetpack skibbity toilet. He was a powerful foe and his laser eyes would melt through my skin for loads of damage. I dodged and weaved past his devastating explosive attacks, taking cover behind the nearby rocks while returning fire. But the jet Jetpack Skibbity blew my cover to pieces. The TV woman kept unleashing her blazing hot TV ability onto the Jetpack Skibbity, forcing him to dodge and stay on edge. In a fit of rage, the Jetpack Skibbity launched a fury of explosives that destroyed a nearby helicopter, ensuring that we wouldn't escape this fight easily. Finally, I shot my electromatic laser gun, hitting him with a direct blast and forcing the flying nightmare to come crashing to the ground. I stayed on high alert and beat him down with my plungers when he hit the floor. As his armor weakened, we both took the opportunity and beat down the Titan, weakening him severely. It was anyone's game, but I managed to strike down the jetpack skibbity toilet and defeat him once and for all. That was some impressive fighting. Welcome to the resistance. Suddenly, a flying saw blade skibbity toilet zoomed by in the sky. I was too weak right now to take them on, so we retreated back into the TV lab. On days 19 through 21, the TV woman and I regrouped at the laboratory. 
Unfortunately, your tracking device is compromising the lab, so you'll have to make your own base. Can't you just remove the tracker? Oh, I'm not qualified to. If I tried, I could accidentally kill you. Then I'll just have to stay on my toes. The TV woman handed me a walkie-talkie to stay in contact, and I set off to find a more secure location for my base. Once I found a good spot, I got to work on building my very own base. I made it shaped like a giant camera so I could have the best security possible. Next, I built a room to call my own, complete with a bed and chest to hold my stuff. Finally, I added a camera room full of monitors so I could watch the feed my base was broadcasting live. Hopefully, this will protect me from the skibbity toilets. Suddenly, I spot a movement on one of the screens. I armed myself and rushed outside, only to find it was the TV woman setting up equipment. I was about to ask what she was doing when I spotted a horde of skibbity toilets coming towards me in the distance. They found me already? Hang on. Watch this. The TV woman powered on her device and the toilets turned the other way. She had set up a signal jammer to protect my home from the tracking device. This will help throw them off while you're here, but everywhere else is dangerous. Be on high alert. Just then, alarms begin to blare in the distance. The resistance needs us. Come quick! On days 22 through 24, we arrived at the source of the sirens to find the sawblade skibbity toilet flying wildly around the city. An army of speakermen and TV men led by the Titan speakerman fired their weapons at the massive flying toilet, but he was able to mow them down like nothing. I tried to help out with my laser gun, but the speed of this foe was unbelievable. I couldn't land a single hit. Calling reinforcements. The TV woman's distress call brought more TV allies into the fray. The Titan speakerman became enraged and unleashed his laser cannon attack onto the battlefield, beating the smaller skibbity toilets into submission. He turned his attention to the sawblade skibbity toilet and the two began to fight it out. The sawblade toilet sliced through the air and whizzed past the speaker man at blinding speeds, wheeling back and forth to cut deep into his electronics. The Titan attempted to shoot the sawblade skibbity down and got a few hits in, but his engines kept pushing him faster and faster. The Titan's speed was nothing compared to the toilet adversary, but his strength and endurance was giving him the upper hand, allowing him to withstand even the deadliest blows. The Titan speaker man seemed to be making leeway. I thought we might actually stand a chance until I spotted a mini spider toilet run by. The mini toilet latched onto the Titan speaker man and he stopped in his tracks. I don't like the looks of that. The Titan speaker man turned towards our own men and began to unleash his attacks on us. The skibbity toilets had gained control over his mind. I quickly ran behind some rubble for cover. On days 25 through 26, we were under attack by our very own Titan speaker man. He blasted his way through our forces effortlessly. He was our winning condition, and now we were left defenseless. Without a Titan to help, we don't stand a chance. Everyone, run! We were all forced to retreat from the battlefield when I realized my tracking device would still give everyone away. Go to the base. I'm gonna lure them away from you guys. I parted ways with the resistance and tried to distract the enemy forces. It wasn't long before the Titan speaker man was already on my tail. I gotta take cover. I found a body of water and jumped in. The Titan speaker man tried to blast me away with sonic booms, but I held on for dear life. Eventually, he gave up and flew away. I better make sure the others are okay. On days 27 through 29, I returned to the TV lab to find that all the resistant forces had returned safely. <gasps> Max, you're alive! You're, come with me, I need to show you something. The TV woman took me into another room where dangerous experiments were being performed. Cameramen were enduring different tests and some even died in the process. What is all of this? We found a way to empower an average cameraman into a Titan, but the procedure is incredibly dangerous. Nobody will volunteer. Would you be willing to do it? If that's the only way to win this war, then I'm in. I knew I could count on you. But before you do the upgrade, I need something though. The TV woman handed me a map to a skibbity toilet base. The final part needed for the experiment was there and she wanted me to retrieve it. Mission accepted. On days 30 through 33, I arrived at the skibbity toilet base on the map. It was a train station they had repurposed for their skibbity deeds. There were toilets crawling around everywhere, so I had to be discreet. Here goes nothing. I stealthed through the halls of the facility, narrowly avoiding the eyes of the skibbity toilet guards that lurked them. It seemed endless, but I knew I had to be getting closer to the part I sought after. Eventually, I found a way underground. I arrived at a room where loads of cameramen were trapped in cages. I kept myself hidden as the skibbity toilet walked up to one of his test subjects. 
Don't worry, this will only hurt a lot. The toilet zapped the cameraman, killing him in a single blow. No! I couldn't bear to watch this any longer. I jumped out of my hiding spot to intervene. On days 34 through 36, I ambushed the skibbity toilet only for him to evade my attack. How did you know I was there? You fool! I can track you, remember? The toilet called in for backup and the room filled with enemies. I had been set up! I leapt in the horde of porcelain abominations, plungers swinging wildly. The sheer number of them surrounded me in an instant, their terrifying song ringing in my ears. I swung my plungers expertly, swatting them away one by one, but there were too many to keep them at bay, and my health started dwindling. With a few big swings, I broke away from the pack and took out my laser guns, shooting them down one by one. Slowly, the massive force of Skibbity Toilet surrounded me once again, and the brawl continued. I gave it everything I had, but their numbers were too great. I was about to give up hope when a large TV man entered the room. Leave him alone! His screens lit up in a bright white light and held the army of toilets at bay temporarily. Get the upgrade part! Hurry! While the large TV held back my foes, I ran deeper into the facility in search of what I came for. On days 37 through 40, I entered another room where I found the upgrade part that the TV woman had requested. Now's my chance! I ran in and snatched up the part, only for the alarms to get set off. The lights flashed red and the noise echoed through the entire facility. Soon after, the skibbity toilets rushed inside. The complex layout of the building proved difficult to traverse as I attempted to evade the unrelenting horde of toilets chasing after me. I climbed up and down ladders, sprung from platform to platform, and narrowly leapt over the razor sharp blades of the helicopters. However, the toilet's numbers were too vast. There was no escaping the wave of enemies before me. I rapidly pulled the trigger of my laser gun, unleashing a rapid burst of scintillating lasers from its chamber. But there was no quelling the resilient foes. I was surrounded, and I knew that I would have to face the swarm head on. I firmly gripped my dual plungers in both palms and began slicing through the toilet adversaries as best I could. But my efforts proved to be in vain, as there were still too many of them. Their numerous forces were beginning to overwhelm me. I had no choice but to retreat into another room. The toilets, proving their fierce determination, chased me even still, all the way into the hall where I became completely surrounded. The toilets hit me until I was left at low health. I needed a better way to defend myself. Just then, I spotted a riot shield on the floor. I picked it up and pushed their forces back, giving myself more room to breathe. Stay back, you toilet fiends! Thanks to the help of my shield, I narrowly escaped the facility and reported back to the TV lab with my prize. Your mission was a success. It's time to commence the upgrade. Prepare yourself. On days 41 through 43, I was strapped to a table and being experimented on by a group of TV men. <laughs> that tickles! Wait, ow! The procedure was dwindling my health down bit by bit. After a while, my health was getting low, and I started to worry this might kill me. Ah! Wait! Stop! Just as I was about to die, my body began to transform. I burst out of my restraints, becoming a titan cameraman with 20 hearts and new epic laser powers. The experiment was a success! I can tell! Suddenly, my walkie-talkie went off. Sounds like the Titan Speaker Man is close by. I'm on it. I immediately rushed into the fray to confront the Titan Speaker Man and found him approaching our territory. Speaker Man, I'll give you one last chance to snap out of it. Skibbity boop boop, yes. All right, then you leave me no choice. Without another word, our battle of epic proportions began. We charged in two titans clashing against each other's massive frames. The city below stood no chance against our colossal size, our immense feet crushing everything beneath their weight as our fight raged on. A tremendously loud boom erupted from the foe's giant speakers, emitting a frequency so great that its sheer volume dealt massive damage to me. Flames littered the streets, scorching everything nearby. We couldn't stay at this destructive impasse forever. I needed to come up with something that could damage the gargantuan foe. I wielded my dual plungers and struck the speaker man with all the strength I could muster, but it was still no use. They were too weak to use against his whopping scale. I was running out of options and my health was low. I needed to do something, and fast. Without any other weapons or abilities in my arsenal, I had no choice but to resort to using my new shield. With an echoing thud, my buckler clashed against his metallic exterior. Finally, I was able to hurt him. Now, the fight was back on. I dealt one final massive blow, and he froze. He shook his head and looked up at me. Where am I? The Titan Speaker Man's trance was broken. But before I had a chance to celebrate, the sawblade skibbity rose up from behind a nearby building. It began floating towards me, but I was too weak for my fight with the speaker man. 
Let's go! We cut our losses and retreated back to the base. On days 44 through 46, the Titan Speakerman and I made it back to the base. The signal jammers at the base got the saw blade skibbity off of our tail for now, so I took this chance to regroup. I started by adding a large section to the base to fit my new massive size. I also made sure to make it a little extra large, just in case I grew any more. Once that was finished, I added a room for the Titan Speakerman, since it seemed like he would be sticking around for a while. Finally, I added a food source to ensure we would always have something to eat so we would be ready for battle. Uh, how do we eat without mouths? I don't know. With that, my base expansion was complete. I decided to ask the Titan Speaker Man if he had gathered any info on the Skibbity Army. My memory is fuzzy, but I know there is a way to restore the Titan TV to even stronger than before. We just need to retrieve his body. Okay, where's his body? It was taken back to a secret island base. I don't know the exact location. I know! Now that I'm a Titan, I'll fly around and look for it. With that, I took to the skies in search of the secret island base. On days 47 through 50, I was able to locate the island base, and it was crawling with toilets. I found the base, but I'm gonna need some backup. Over. I waited for a response, but there was only static. Looks like they're jamming my radio signal. I'm on my own. Suddenly, my tracker started to beep. Oh, so much for stealth. Intruder, intruder! I was immediately attacked by a swarm of toilet drones. I fought them off using my new powers, and the lesser toilets didn't stand a chance. I took flight, soaring circles around the wave of aerial enemies, evading all of their attacks effortlessly. I fired a burst, yellow balls of light raining down onto the flying foes, making quick work of the drones. But that wasn't where the battle ended. On the ground, the other toilets joined in the fight, eager to avenge their fallen comrades. I flew into the air once more, bombing the enemies from above, unleashing a wave of fire onto the ground. Even with my superior agility and strength, the toilets proved unrelenting. I retreated back to regain some health, but the foes followed suit. They leapt from the pier onto the sandy beach below in pursuit of me. Finally, using my shield to defend myself and my plungers to attack, I was able to finish off the stragglers. Bring out the secret weapon! The ground began to shake, and a massive beast landed in front of me. Wait, is that the TV Titan? That's right, we made your former ally our new weapon. Not again! The cinema man hit me with a heavy blow, and I immediately blacked out. On days 51 through 52, I woke up inside of a strange testing facility. I was trapped inside of a cage, and a group of skibbity scientists were experimenting on me. I was paralyzed! Ugh, let me go! Oh no, he's awake! Quickly, deploy the mind control bot! I couldn't do anything to stop them as a little spider robot climbed up and went right inside of my head. I went into some sort of trance. I was just a little baby cameraman, and a massive spider skibbity was singing songs inside of my head, giving me a splitting headache. Ugh, get out of my head! I tried to fight back, but the music got louder and louder. Ugh, I don't think I can fight the mind control much longer! On days 53 through 55, I was about to give in, when suddenly the TV woman's voice rang out through my head. Max! You're the last hope for the resistance! Don't let the skibbity toilets control you! She's right! With newfound motivation, I looked up at the skibbity spider. I'm not afraid of you! My power is stronger than your song! I transformed from a baby back into a titan and smashed apart the spider toilet with my awesome powers. After I did that, I snapped out of my trance and the real spider fell to the ground and died. Ha! I did it! My mental fortitude caused a surge of energy to course through me, and I transformed into an upgraded Titan cameraman with 10 more hearts and a massive hammer weapon. No, he broke the mind control. That's right. Now it's my turn to fight back. I used my new hammer to bust out of the cage and sprung into action. On days 56 through 58, I was wreaking havoc on the Skibbity Lab. After smashing everything up and flushing a few toilets, I was able to escape the facility. As I was adding distance between me and the facility, the Sawblade Skibbity emerged. You're not going to make it out of here alive. Come at me, you oversized weed whacker! While I would easily overpower the Sawblade Skibbity in strength, what he lacked in that department, he made up for tenfold in speed. 
The foe was gliding circles around me at a pace so rapid that not only could he evade all of my attacks, but also I could barely even keep my eyes on him in the first place. I swung my hammer and fired my ranged abilities in an attempt to predict his movements, but it was to no avail. The sawblade skibbity just kept darting around me, dodging my attacks effortlessly and only moving in close to slice into me with his sharp razor edges. I knew I couldn't endure his carving for much longer or I would surely bleed out. Finally, with one massive swing from my hammer, I was able to turn the tables. With that monumental hit, the sawblade skibbity went down and I emerged from the battle victorious. But my victory was short-lived as the cinema man landed in front of me and charged into attack. I attempted to hold him back by unleashing a powerful blast of lasers but he retaliated with an attack of his own, emitting an ear-piercingly high-pitched sonic boom at a volume so loud that I felt my eardrums shudder. The sheer force of Cinema Man's attack sent me stumbling backwards, disoriented from the pain. With my senses momentarily compromised, I tried to fire another laser, but it was no use. Even as the buildings around me crumbled from the impact of the detonation, the Cinema Man was too strong. My blast had only momentarily slowed him down, and now he was closing in for another strike. Suddenly though, the foe stopped his assault. Before I could assess the situation, the adversary took advantage of my confusion to stun me with his screen. I couldn't fight back. I needed to retreat before the Cinema Man delivered the finishing blow. I flew off further into the city, but the Cinema Man was right on my tail. We continued on this pattern of stunning and withdrawing, but I was quickly losing stamina. I had no choice but to stand my ground and fight. With all of my might, I unleashed the full extent of my force, releasing powerful blasts and swinging hammer at the foe but he remained undeterred, showing no signs of defeat. I wasn't strong enough to beat their new titan. I was gonna lose. Just when I thought it was all over, Speaker Man appeared. He stunned the Cinema Man with his sonic boom, giving me an opportunity to escape. On days 59 through 61, I regroup with the TV woman at the base. The Sawblade Skibbity is defeated, but the TV Titan has been converted into an evil Cinema Man. Whoa. Thanks for the update. Good work. I decided it was time to do some more base expansion, so I started by reinforcing security measures around the base, making sure we were safe from Skibbity intruders. On top of cameras being placed everywhere, I added a laser wall and two sentry towers manned by helpful TV men. Once that was finished, I added a lab for doing small repairs and projects. This would also serve as a medical center for all of my TV and speaker allies. Finally, I finished the meeting room area where we could discuss future plans of attack. Once that was finished, we proceeded to discuss plans. If the Skibbities have control over the upgraded TV Titan, then things are looking even more grim for our cause. What are we gonna do? We have to increase our own numbers, infiltrate one of their bases, and abduct their men. I have an experiment that will make us even stronger. On days 62 through 64, I headed to the location that the TV woman gave me to find a bunch of smaller skibbity toilets gathered in a yard. This is the perfect time to strike! I took my chance and ambushed the horde of toilets. I stunned them with my attacks and used the opening to trap them inside of a cage. I quickly built as fast as I could, and in a matter of moments, they had nowhere to run. Time to take these guys to the TV woman. Not so fast! Just then, a horrible three-headed skibbity toilet appeared before me. They were massive, and I knew that they would be tough to face. You're going to release our men. Why should I do that? Because we'll tear you apart with all three of our heads. You'll be reduced to rubble. Yeah, right. I'll flush you all down at once. I charged full speed at the toilet, ready to do anything to complete my mission. On days 65 through 67, I was fighting off the three-headed skibbity toilet. They were incredibly strong. It was as if I was fighting three massive toilets at once, but I had to win this battle if the cameras were gonna stand a chance. I harnessed all of my power and unleashed a massive beam of lasers towards the foe. Alas, his enormous scale meant that his defenses were near impenetrable. I attempted to make use of his strategy to land some blows on him myself, but focusing on one head created an opening for the other two to attack me. I withdrew back, creating space between the two of us so I could devise a plan. But the three-headed skibbity toilet was too quick-witted, seizing the opportunity to summon helicopter minions to assist him. Knowing his underlings couldn't harm me, I focused all of my attention on the main enemy. However, even with all of my powers, they were tough to beat. It was anyone's game. Take this. I waited for an opening and blasted into one of the heads full force. Unfortunately for me, the three-headed skibbity toilet continued to fight like nothing had happened. What's going on? That was a direct hit. You have to eat all of us at once, you doofus. Time for us to end this. The three-headed skibbity continued their onslaught and moved around swiftly to avoid my attacks. I was getting low on health, but I just 
just needed to wait for the right moment to strike. I endured the battle until finally I saw all three heads were lined up. Now! I blasted through all three of the heads at once, vaporizing the toilet where it stood. No! The three-headed toilet died, leaving nothing but dust in its wake. Now that he's out of the way, I better get these guys back to the base before my tracker attracts more toilets. On days 68 through 71, I returned to the base with the toilets. The whole way, they wouldn't stop singing their song, and it was giving me a massive headache. Please, no more skibbity. Don't worry, I'll take it from here. Thank you. She began tinkering with them, and about a day later, she came up to me with some new friends. Ta-da! She had transformed the Skibbity Toilets into camera toilets. They were now an elite team of powerful allies that we could use in combat. Whoa, you're amazing! Aw, uh, thanks. It's not much, but I've always been pretty handy when it came to science experiments. Are you kidding? You're brilliant! I'm so lucky to have someone like you as my ally. Of course. I'll do anything to make sure the Skibbity Toilets lose this war. Suddenly, my walkie-talkie went off. Max, come in, Max. We need backup at the west end of town. Time to test these guys out. On days 72 through 74, I arrived at the battlefield to find the large TV man fighting off a horde of skibbity toilets. Come forth, my army! My crew of camera toilets jumped into the fray. They were much more powerful than the previous cameramen, and they fought off the lesser toilet drones with ease. Even with their increased strength, the camera toilets weren't fighting alone. I joined into the fray, slamming my massive hammer down onto the ground beneath me, sending the enemy skibbity toilets flying back. Our opponents stood no chance against my superior army and abilities. As I unleashed a final blast of embers from my flamethrower, most of the porcelain foes crumbled to dust as they were scorched by the fire below. Things were looking really good for our team in this battle, until out of nowhere, the cinema man arrived. Time to take you down! With renewed determination, I charged into battle to fight the cinema man head on. Laser beams and flamethrowers erupted from my massive chest, searing through the air towards him. However, the foe retaliated with a powerful screen projection engulfing my vision in a blinding red hue, momentarily stunning me. Reacting swiftly, I raised my immense shield before me, interposing it between us to block the cinema man's incoming attacks and sending him recoiling back. Seizing the opportunity, I swung my colossal hammer with a thunderous force, sending shockwaves through the ground as it connected with his towering frame. Undeterred, Cinema Man retaliated with a colossal punch, shaking the very foundation of the city and sending debris flying in all directions. As the epic confrontation unfolded, the city's buildings trembled, and the skyline bore the scars of the relentless battle between two titans, leaving a trail of destruction in our wake. But even still, the Cinema Man was way too powerful for me. I was at low health, and I was gonna die! On days 75 through 76, I was about to be killed by the Cinema Man, when out of nowhere, the TV woman intervened. Leave him alone! Her screen lit up orange and the massive titan was set on fire. Yeah, you're paid for that. He landed a heavy blow onto the TV woman, but she held on for dear life and drew his fire away from me. Run, TV woman! No, I'm going to protect you! She distracted the cinema man for me as best she could, but the beast didn't give up. She detached her head to distract him, but it didn't matter. With one final blow, the cinema man killed her where she stood. No! I felt rage swell up in my chest. I wanted to fight the cinema man and make him pay, but the large TV man stopped me. Running in now is a death sentence. Let's get out of here. But... You won't do the TV woman any favors dead. We have to face him once we're ready. I didn't want to admit it, but the large TV was right. The two of us fled with our lives intact, and I swore that the skibbity toilets would pay for all of the lives they had ended. On days 77 to 78, I returned to the base with a large TV man and my camera toilet forces. I was feeling really upset about what had happened. TV woman didn't deserve any of that. There was nothing I could do about it right now though, so I decided to distract myself with a bit of building. Now that I had camera toilets, I had to make a proper place for them to stay. On a new floor above the meeting room, I built a loft with six bunk beds and chests for their belongings. Then, I added a few extra furnishings for visual interest. Since the large TV man would be staying with me too, he needed his area as well. This was shaping up to be a big household. I built him a giant structure that was shaped and decorated to look like a TV screen. Inside, I made him a nice bedroom with a large and comfy bed and a room full of TVs so he could relax while watching them. With those two places complete, I had one more thing to do. I had to honor TV Woman. I figured the best way to do that was to create a memorial for her. I built a statue of her head, then made sure to place a lot of torches and decorations of her favorite things around it. I wish she could have seen it. 
This war had just gotten personal. I was eager to take down the Cinema Man and the Skibbity Army as soon as possible. As I planned our next move, the large TV man came up to me. How are you holding up? This war needs to end. Too many innocent people are losing their lives. I have an upgrade that could help make you stronger, but it's dangerous to install. You could possibly die. I don't care. If it'll make me stronger, then I have to try. On days 79 to 80, I was back at the lab where I received my previous upgrades. The large TV man began to upgrade me. Okay, hold still. Just like it did before, my health began to sap, getting lower and lower. I began to drift in and out of consciousness. In my mind's eye, I saw flashes of the TV woman. I remembered all of the good times we had and all of the battles we had faced together. She was my best friend, and the cinema man had taken her away from me. I knew at that moment I couldn't give up. I hung on to life for her. And there we are. Upgrade successful. I feel tougher. I came back to reality, now with 10 more hearts and even more durability than before with Titan armor. Suddenly, my tracking device began to beep wildly. The area flooded with skibbity armed forces, but they weren't ready for what was about to hit them. Take this! I started blasting through the toilet army using my new strength. The goons stood no chance against my giant hammer and my increased might. With one ferocious swing of my weapon, I came crushing down onto the foes with the full extent of my power, sending all the skibbity toilets flying backwards from the sheer magnitude of my force. However, the battle wouldn't be that easy. Not only were there normal skibbity toilet minions, but there were larger spider skibbity toilets as well, mightier and remarkably elusive compared to the ordinary ones, giving them the advantage of surprise, making it challenging for me to land my attacks or to counter theirs. The toilet forces were overwhelming me and I couldn't regain the advantage. But just then, TV Man ran over and joined the fight. With his help, we were able to defeat the nearby enemies, but the battle still wasn't over. Some of the minions were ganging up on the TV scientists. I knew I had to save them, so I rushed into the fray once more. Using all of my abilities, I was able to destroy the last of the toilets and rescue my allies. After a long battle, I managed to take out the entire swarm of toilets. That upgrade really did the trick. Just then, I spotted a note on the ground and picked it up. We are working on our secret weapon just west of here. Soon enough, those cameramen won't know what hit them. It seems like they're working on something big. I better go check it out. On days 81 through 82, I arrived at the secret base on the note. There, two skibbity toilets were performing maintenance on the cinema man. What are they talking about? I made sure I wouldn't be seen in my hiding spot and listened in on the enemy to see what intel I could gather. How's the upgrade coming along? Excellent. Soon the Cinema Man will be flawless. But isn't he already the strongest Titan we've ever seen? Yes, but the Cinema Man has one problem. He can't track Max from the safety of his base. But that won't be a problem anymore once this upgrade is done. What does it do? The upgrade will allow him to track Max through anything, even whatever those pesky cameras are using to scramble his signals. What does that mean? The Cinema Man will be able to track Max's every move without any interference. Yes, with that blasted titan out of the way, everyone will be forced to surrender. Oh no, I can't let that happen. I took to the skies. I had to figure out a way to remove my tracking device ASAP. On days 83 through 84, I returned back to the base to talk with the large TV man about removing my tracking device. The procedure is delicate, but I think I can do it. I'm gonna need a few things though. I'm willing to do anything. Let's get this tracking device off of me. The large TV man handed me a list and I set off to search for the three missing parts he would need. I started in a junkyard to see what sorts of scraps were laying around. It was just my luck that the reinforced saw blade was lying in the rubble. Next, I checked the ocean for a Titan wrench. There was a lot of different trash, but I found it eventually. Only one more to go. I returned to the shore and checked the list only to realize that the final item I needed was a skibbity toilet flushing handle. I have to go inside of a base to find that. I never fit inside. I have an idea. The large TV man walked up to me. What are you doing here? I had a feeling you might need my help. Hold still. The TV man tossed a mysterious splash potion onto me. My head began to spin around. Ugh, I don't feel so good. Just then, I shrank down into a miniature Titan cameraman. This will let you sneak around, but you're weakened in this state. Be careful. Time to get that last part. On days 85 through 86, I arrived at a skibbity toilet facility and began my infiltration mission. Time to get that last part. I stealthed around the facility as a miniature cameraman Titan. The halls were crawling with skibbity guards, so I had to be careful not to get spotted. I jumped from cover to cover, having a few close calls. Luckily, I was getting through the facility thanks to the potion. This 
small size is really coming in handy. After a while, I made it to a lab where a strange skibbity toilet was being experimented on. At the end of the other room was the handle I was seeking. That guy looks like bad news. I better be careful. I began to stealth my way closer and closer towards the final part, but everything went south when my tracker began to beep wildly. The toilet abomination turned its attention towards me. Nobody intrudes in my room and gets away with it. It jumped at me full speed and I braced myself. On days 87 through 88, I was facing off with the modded skibbity toilet. I unleashed my full extent of my power onto the brute, harnessing all of my energy to release my monster mental flamethrower and laser beam abilities. The laboratory stood no chance against my destruction, but the modded skibbity toilet remained unscathed despite enduring the full extent of my blasts. As a result of my decreased size, my power had also taken a substantial hit and my attacks were no longer strong enough to damage the foe. I had no choice but to retreat, taking advantage of the tight corridors of the lab to put some distance between myself and the enemy. But I couldn't run forever. The toilet was quick, and his blades were extremely sharp, slicing into my mechanical exterior like butter and dealing massive damage. I was too powerless to retaliate. I was a sitting duck. I fought with everything I had, but in my shrunken state, I was no match for the massive toilet. One hit too many from his saw blades would have killed me. I can't keep this up. I better get out of here. I used my jetpack to fly in after the part and managed to grab it. Afterwards, I hightailed it towards the exit. You're not getting away from me. The skibbity toilet ran after me with its robotic spider legs. It was quick on its feet, and I didn't think I was going to make it out alive. Luckily, I made it to the exit and took to the skies, narrowly avoiding the toilet's wrath. I'll find you and kill you. Just you wait. On days 89 through 90, I made it back to the lab and returned to normal size. There, the large TV man was already waiting for me. I finally got the last part. I'm ready. Not wasting time, I threw him the three parts. Great work. Let's remove this device. The large TV man began to get to work. The procedure was delicate, and one wrong move would have been fatal. Just need to. Oops. The large TV man's hand slipped, and I took massive damage. Ouch. Be careful. After a bit of tinkering, the TV man successfully removed the tracking device from me. It was a success. You're a free man, Max. Just then, the alarm started blaring in the lab. I rushed to the surface to discover that the modded skibbity toilet had chased me there. Won't you give up? Not until you're dead. The machinery on the modded skibbity toilet started clanking and whirring, and he grew three times larger. He lunged at me with his saw blade spinning. Luckily for me, I was back to my full size now. It was time for a fair fight. I unleashed a devastating barrage of my abilities, and this time they effortlessly shattered through his formidable defenses, inflicting substantial damage upon the foe. But a fair fight it would not be. I thought I had seen the full extent of the modded Skibbity Toilet's powers, but it seemed that with his increased size, he also gained an increased arsenal of attacks. To my surprise, the brute sent forth a bombardment of missiles and they were aimed right for me. The projectiles collided into me and detonated with a deafening boom, sending me stumbling back. As the smoke cleared, I found myself face to face with the strongest opposition I had countered who was completely undeterred by my earlier assault. Its modified form seemed nearly indestructible, and I knew I had to dig deep to match its newfound power. I pushed myself beyond my limits, summoning every ounce of strength and ingenuity within me to stay in the fight. With my confidence restored, I released the full extent of my powers onto the foe. Bursts of lasers and flames soared through the air, and my hammer swung down valiantly onto the toilet. The battle was close, but I managed to pull ahead. I took out the modded skibbity once and for all. Upon his death, he dropped a note. The cinema man is growing stronger than ever before. Soon we will use him to unleash an attack that will wipe out the camera forces and win the war for the skibbity toilets. We're running out of time. I have to end this soon. On days 91 through 92, I returned to my base to do a bit of expanding. I started by adding a storage room to hold all the weapons we could use in battle. We were gonna need a lot if we wanted to stand a chance. Next, I added a party floor for everyone to unwind, complete with a dance floor. My men were hard at work, but that didn't mean they couldn't get their minds off things for a while. Let's test this place out. Once I was done, I hosted a party. Everyone danced to some good music and had a well-deserved break. They were so happy that one of my men came up to me. Thanks for the rest and relaxation, Max. Take this. He handed me a potion of strength and went on his way. Just then, then the large TV man walked up to me. I have some important news. I'm detecting a familiar signal, but I can't place my finger on what. That sounds fishy. 
I'll investigate. I took to the skies, unsure of what would be waiting for me. On days 93 through 94, I arrived at the source of the signal to discover the TV woman having hacked into a power line. I couldn't believe my eyes. TV woman? Is it really you? I flew up towards her, but she didn't respond. Suddenly, she turned around and attacked me with her fire attack. Ah! The TV woman went at me with everything she had. I wasn't sure what was going on, but something terrible had happened to her. I desperately tried to plead with her while she continued attacking me with all of her fire powers. She even used the electrical grid to zap me with lightning. I could have fought back, but I didn't want to hurt her. Please snap out of it! This went on until I was getting low on health. One more hit from her would finish me. Enough! I landed one blow on the TV woman, causing her head to fall to the ground. After a few moments, her head returned to her body and she seemed to return to normal. Oh, my head. Max, is that you? Yes, it's me! I'm so sorry. The toilets repaired me and turned me against you. They could still be close by. Let's talk somewhere else. On days 95 through 96, I returned back to the base with the TV woman. I wanted to catch up with her and make sure everything was okay. I'm so glad to see you again. Are you feeling all right now? My head's a little fuzzy, but I'm good. Thank you for saving me, Max. Of course. Do you remember anything from your time under their control? It's a bit of a blur, but I do remember where they're holding the cinema man. I'm going to show him a piece of my mind. Oh, no way. Going there as you are now would be a death sentence. You need one more upgrade if you think you're going to be able to take him on. The TV woman handed me a map. This will lead you to a Skibbity Toilet's weapon storage. Rate it for all it's worth. Thanks! Time to get some more firepower! On days 97 through 98, I arrived at the location on my map to discover a Skibbity Toilet Weapons Shed. The place was full of countless different guns and swords, all mine for the taking. Don't mind if I do. I began to loot the shed for all it was worth, but I got so caught up in the different gadgets that I didn't hear something sneak up from behind me. I turned around and discovered a massive armored skibbity toilet behind me. Its weapons were pointed out and ready to fire. Drop your weapons. No way. I'm taking these for the cameraman. Suit yourself. The armored skibbity launches missiles at me and the two of us duked it out. The enemy unleashed a barrage of missiles, but with a swift raise of my shield, I deflected each one. The flames bouncing off of my buckler and raining onto the ground below. Feeling the rush of adrenaline, I took to the skies, leaving the ground beneath me. As the gargantuan foe pursued me in the air, I realized what he had in defense he severely lacked in speed, and I was able to easily fly circles around the colossal toilet. My heart pounded with excitement as I gracefully dodged its attacks. Seizing the opportunity, the toilet extended its long neck and reached out to strike me. The battlefield erupted in a fiery clash of force, tearing through the one serene area. As the dust settled and flames raged, I locked eyes with the armored toilet. The determination to emerge victorious shining brightly in my gaze. I blasted at him with everything I had, dwindling down his health bit by bit. After a fierce battle, I finally managed to defeat the armored toilet. The weapons are mine. I need to hurry back and prepare for the final battle. On day 99, I returned to the base and began to do my final expansion before my face off with the cinema man. I filled my storage room with all of the new weapons I gathered and even handed out some of them to my troops to wield in battle. We won't let you down, sir. I know you won't. Let's win this war for all the cameramen, TVs, and speakers that have fallen to the toilet's might. After I finished, the TV woman walked up to me and asked me to come with her. She took me to her lab and began to work on one final upgrade. Once she was done, I gained five additional hearts, as well as a bunch of guns to use in battle, including a built-in rocket launcher. At long last, I think you're finally ready. Are you sure? I can't fail this time. You won't. You're the strongest person I know, Max. I believe in you. You're right. I have to believe in myself. Thank you. Time to face the cinema man. On day 100, I arrived following the location the TV woman gave me to find the final whereabouts of the cinema man and the toilet army. Surrender, skibbity toilets. This ends here. You really think we'll give it to you? We're armed with the strongest weapon in the world. That doesn't matter. I'm strong too. And I'm going to show you what happens when you take the lives of innocent people. Tough talk for an oversight camera. I'll show you why we have control over the cinema man. And you don't. The toilet sent the cinema man on me and I engaged in the final battle. The enemy forces charging forward, I raised my shield. The cinema man immediately blasted me with new upgraded powers. I did my best to block and endure them. He spat out intense hot blue fire, even catching some of his own toilet men ablaze. I struck back with my hammer, doing massive damage and sending the toilet minions flying. Anytime I gained my distance, cinema man would unleash an onslaught of sonic booms from his speakers. I did my best to block it with my shields, but the attack echoed all around me. I used my own flamethrower to 
try and slow him down, but he seemed unfazed. Eventually, I sent out my new rockets to blast him back. We duked it out with powers flying in every direction. He struck with his mighty fist as I swung down my massive hammer. I had to constantly eat to refuel my health, but I could tell I was wearing him down too. I drank the strength potion I received earlier. Toilets were sent flying as us titans clashed. The ground soon became a sea of fire and rubble. The cinema man's power was unlike anything else I had faced on my entire journey, but I was ready to take on anything. I fought him with everything I had in my arsenal to use. I fired the various guns I gained at the TV Titan until I was all out of ammo. Cinema Man shrugged off the metal shells pelting his massive body, but I wasn't going to walk this far just to fall here. I was getting low on health, but I knew there was one way I could turn this around. I blasted him with my strongest laser and missiles all at once, causing the mind-controlling toilet on him to go flying. I got you now! I smashed the little spider and the Cinema Man regained control of his body. What happened? No time to explain! End this! The Cinema Man turned his weapons onto the toilet army and blasted them into oblivion. Cinema Man unleashed rocket after rocket and nothing was left but smoke and fire. Or so I thought. Before I knew it, my consciousness was transported into a whole new body within the Skibbity universe. On day one, I spawned Dan as a TV man during an all-out war with the Skibbity toilet forces. We fended for our lives until suddenly, the Titan Skibbity toilet led a massive army of all kinds of Skibbity toilets into the battlefield. Go forward, my men. We already captured the cameras and speakers. Next, we destroy the TVs. Tank Skibbity toilet reinforcements flooded the area and began to level everything with their powerful artillery. Between them and the Titan Skibbity's weapons, my TV men allies fell left and right to their might. We can't keep up much longer! Just as all hope is lost, the TV woman stepped forward. Bring in the Cinema Man! Our all-powerful Cinema Man touched down and marched towards the toilet's leader. Their haunting song filled the battlefield as the two Titans fought for victory in this war. Cinema Man began striking the Titan toilet with punches, but didn't seem to affect him. He tried using his TV screech to disorient the toilet, but the Titan countered back with his hammer-like sending the Cinema Man flying backwards. The two continue to fight it out, using their hulking strength to beat each other with immense power. The Skibbity Titan uses massive hand cannon to shoot lasers at our TV screened ally. The Cinema Man seemed defenseless as the toilet went airborne, striking him from above. To our surprise, the Titan Skibbity Toilet got the upper hand, and with one final blow, he annihilated the Cinema Man. Everyone, retreat! On day two, the TV forces were running for their lives as the tank skibbity toilets closed in. They were lurking around every corner, ready to level my allies. I turned around and took out my plunger, preparing for battle. I have to buy my friend some time! Using my TV man training, I fought back the tank skibbity toilets with my plunger. They were unlike any toilet I had faced thus far, and their numbers were crushing for me alone. As my brothers ran in fear, I took out as many tanks as I could. My swift and nimble movements were too quick for the tanks, but their heavy-plated exteriors weren't the easiest to pierce through. More arrived into battle, making this fight impossible to win. I was beginning to feel overwhelmed, but I had to keep fighting. One of the toilets landed a heavy blow, causing me to drop my plunger, and one of the tanks ran over it. Oh no, I'm unarmed! I knew without a weapon, I would die in seconds. I ran for my life, and the skibbity tanks followed after me. To my dismay, I found myself cornered by the tanks. My heart sunk. I knew this was the end. Just then, the TV woman's head flew in to save me. She came soaring through the air and descended upon the skibbity tanks. She used her screen to project a swirling pattern of hypnotic stars. The tanks were completely disoriented and hurt themselves in their confusion. While the tanks were confused, she switched a channel and doused them with fire while strafing over them. The smoldering tanks retaliated by launching explosives into the air, but the TV woman's head was a small and swift target, making her very difficult for them to hit. Find a place to hide. Roger that! I took my orders and ran into a nearby building for cover. I tried to catch my breath, but the wall exploded, revealing the skull skibbity toilet. You can't hide from me! The skull vomited green deadly poison onto the area, and I ran for my life. On day three, I was being pursued through the city by the Skull Skibbity Toilet. Onward, my men! Capture that TV! I turned a corner and was ambushed by a swarm of Skull Skibbity goons. They unleashed dark magic on me, causing a curse of the Titan Skibbity to be placed in my inventory. Get away from me! I smacked the goons away and kept up the chase, but I quickly realized something was terribly wrong. Every turn I made, Skull Skibbity goons were now waiting for me. Is the curse giving away my location? I was running out of places to go when I spotted a ladder. I scaled at the higher ground, hoping to gain some space between myself and the enemy. Unfortunately for me, Skull Skibbity helicopters flew overhead to attack from above. 
They showered me in bombs and I braced myself as the floor exploded all around me and I plummeted into the building below. On days four through five, I woke up from the fall and realized I was in some sort of arsenal. The walls around me are lined with plunger weapons. The skull skibbity goons rushed in after me, but I knew what I needed to do. No more running! I grabbed two plungers from the wall and prepared myself for battle. My muscle memory as a TV man kicked in and I began to fight my way through the horde of skull skibbity goons with style. The toilet swarmed down on me with increasing numbers, but I wasn't going down without a fight. I struck my opponents with a one-two plunger combo, dealing loads of damage to a handful of them. They tried using their overwhelming amount of goons to their advantage, but I was able to dodge quickly and avoid being totally surrounded. The skeleton toilet shot bone projectiles from afar, grazing me as I rolled out of the way. One by one, I was slimming down the herd, but more kept coming. My skills with the plunger were too much for them to handle, and I took out most of the flying fiends without a sweat. You guys are making this too easy now! I was holding my own until the skull skibbity toilet arrived. He unleashed a wave of green toxic sludge onto me, and I was unable to dodge it in time. I was poisoned by the skull skibbity, and my hearts were dropping quickly. I couldn't waste any more time here. If I can't find the antidote fast, I'll be finished! On days 6 through 7, I was fleeing to the city as my health gradually dropped bit by bit. This poison is already getting to me! As I fled, I noticed a hospital in the distance. The only problem was it was festering with skibbity toilets. The antidote I need must be in there. I'll have to sneak in. I crouched down and carefully stealthed my way towards the entrance. I used whatever cover I could find and slipped through the doorway. Once I was inside, I began to check room by room to find the cure. However, as I opened the door to one of them, I spotted a skibbity toilet waiting inside. I quickly shut the door and ducked behind the wall. Luckily, it seemed like he didn't notice me. This place is dangerous. The sooner I find the antidote, the better. I continued deeper into the hospital until I finally found the lab. There, I spotted the cure waiting for me on a table. There it is! I rushed into the room to grab it. But to my horror, the place flooded with skibbity toilet goons. It was a trap! Did you forget about your little curse? Get him, boys! On days 8 through 9, I was being swarmed by skibbity guards as poison was slowly eating away at my health. I took out my plungers and tried to defend myself. However, with the poison, I felt too weak. I wasn't going to win this battle. I have to turn the tides. I made a run for the antidote, but before I could grab it, a saw blade skibbity toilet dropped down and took it first. Give that to me! The saw blade took to the skies, and the toilet minions started attacking me. While I fought the herd, the saw blade was flying back and forth, swooping down every time at me, trying to pierce me with this huge sharp blade. This battle was difficult having to fight the goons and evading his blade, but to my my surprise, I was able to defeat the minions, leaving me one-on-one -on -one with the saw blade. I tried to get in close, but it was too risky because of his giant blade. If I tried close quarters combat, I would surely be shredded to bits. I have to think of something quick or else I'm finished! I ran around the room looking for anything useful until I found a switch that controlled high-powered doors. I have an idea! Hey, ugly! Come and get me! The saw blade skibbity flew down in my direction, and as he swooped in, I flipped the switches, closing the doors onto him, crushing his toilet body. It worked! I reopened the doors and revealed the poison cure on the other side. I chugged the potion, curing my poison and healing me back to full health. I had no time to rest, as another horde of goons stormed the room. I continued to fight them with my restored strength. Unfortunately for me, for every goon I took down, more and more would keep coming. I gotta make a break for it! I bolted into the next room and closed the doors shut as the skibbity toilets tried to Bust it down from the other side. I don't know how long this will hold. Just then, the TV woman appeared. Reinforcements? Charge! On days 10 through 11, the room filled with TV men to aid me in battle. Open the doors. I flipped the switches and moved out of the way, causing the skibbity toilets to rush inside. It was an all-out war with the TVs against the toilets. Together, we all stormed the skibbity goons and fought for our lives. The skibbity army's numbers rivaled ours, but the TV men stood strong. Using their high-tech weapons that were built to break porcelain, the TV men started to do massive damage to the toilets. Armed with high-grade plungers, the TV men were able to quickly and efficiently deal with any toilets that got too close. It still wasn't an easy fight, as one hit from a skibbity headbutt could heavily injure even the strongest TV men. The TV army had to fight carefully and precisely to survive, but it was starting to look like we were going to win. Things were finally going my way until the skull skibbity toilet dropped down from the ceiling. He had found me. You cannot escape your curse. Die! The skull skibbity toilet vomited onto the battlefield, poisoning all of my TV allies. No! Men were dropping all around us like flies as they succumbed to the effects of the skull skibbity's deadly attack. The TV woman detached her head and quickly sprang into action. There should be more of the cure around here somewhere. Hurry! 
She flew off to distract the skull skibbity. I better act fast! On days 12 through 14, I ran deeper into the lab and discovered a vault lined with the antidote bottles I was seeking. Here they are! I began to grab as many as I could carry when suddenly the skull skibbity toilet made its way inside. How did you get past the TV woman? She eventually succumbed to my poison. Now it's time I eliminate all of you! I unsheathed both my plungers and rushed towards the terrifying skeleton skibbity. I was gonna flush this undead freak if it was the last thing I did! His poisonous vomit covered the floors and made the terrain incredibly difficult to navigate. With my movement slowed, he smashed my body with a devastating headbutt. I retaliated with a swirling flurry of plungers. Despite my efforts, the skull skibbity was far too strong for me to defeat. He wouldn't go down, and he was wasting my time! I need to get to my men before they die! I pushed past him and rushed to my ally's side. I made it to the room and threw the antidote to all my allies, curing them from the negative effects of the potion. Onward, friends! As my foe entered the room, everyone charged in together and began to duke it out with the skull skibbity toilet. With our forces now fully recharged and cured, we were able to stand a chance against the monster. The skibbity strength still managed to take down a majority of the plunger forces, but the ranged attackers kept the beast at bay. His vomit was not as effective to my army due to the antidote we acquired, but he wasn't going to give up that easily. The TV woman rejoined the fight and blasted her hypnotic rays and flame power in his direction, causing him to be weakened even further. We managed to push the skull into a corner, letting the rest of our forces beat him into submission. With the help of my fellow TV men, the Skull Toilet was defeated. Upon his death, he dropped a strange upgrade. What's this? I picked up the upgrade and my body began to transform. My legs grew taller and I sprouted multiple screens from my shoulders. I was now a large TV man with 15 hearts. Suddenly, Tank Toilet reinforcements arrived to stop us. On days 15 through 17, my allies and I were being chased by a horde of tanks. Stay back! I tried to use my fire channel on them, but their armor protected them from the flames. I kept moving until I heard someone calling out to me. Hey you! Over here! I looked up towards the source of the voice and saw a cameraman calling for me. Climb up the ladder and I'll meet you on top! Hurry! Following the cameraman's instructions, I led my allies into the hiding spot beside him. Luckily, the tanks didn't see us and rolled right by. What's going on? Where are all the other cameras? My name is Cameron. I'm the last of my kind. Everyone else has been imprisoned on a remote island. I can help you free them if you're willing to join our cause against the toilets. You got yourself a deal. Just then, helicopter skibbity toilets flew overhead and found us. That were the cameraman, Max. Our forces will regroup together later. And so, we went our separate ways. On days 18 through 20, I followed Cameron to a massive docked ship. Looking more closely, we saw there was a line of toilets boarding into it. If we want to get on the island, we'll have to stow away on that skibbity toilet ship. Guess we'll have to stealth our way through this one. Stealth mode, activate! Cameron and I found an alternate route and hopped on board without anyone seeing. We were sneaking down the hall when we suddenly heard a toilet approaching us. Quickly, we ducked into a nearby room. Frantically, I looked for a place to hide before deciding to camouflage as one of the TVs in the room. This had better work! The toilet entered the room and got very close to me, eyeing me up and down. Hmm, that's a weird looking TV. What is this? One of them new fangled IMAXs? Yes, actually. I am Max. Huh? Woo. I turned on my fire channel and burnt the skibbity toilet to a crisp. That was a close one. Come on, let's keep moving. Cameron and I continued along the ship's interior until we had reached the very bottom. Right as we got there, the ship lurched, letting us know it had set sail. Great work. Now we just wait. Ah. Suddenly, we heard the faint sound of skibbity music playing. You hear that too, or am I already developing ocean madness? Just then, a horde of mini toilet spiders came crawling after us. Worse! This place is infested! On days 21 through 23, Cameron and I were being ambushed by a horde of mini toilet spiders. We have to kill them all before they blow our cover! I began swinging my plunger furiously, each swipe sending multiple tiny toilet spiders flying back, but they were relentless. I was quickly overwhelmed by their immense numbers. I saw Cameron holding his own against the horde, using his dual plungers to maximum effect. Despite their numbers, I was taking little damage thanks to my large TV man form. I used my height to my advantage and stepped over them, dodging a few of their attacks as I moved. I changed tactics and lit up my screen, setting numerous enemies on fire. The screen attack had taken care of most of them, and I was confident we were going to win the battle. My optimism was cut short, however, as I saw a fresh wave of tiny spider toilets running in, having been deeper in the storage rooms. There were just too many, and their attacks began getting through my armor, causing damage. During the chaos of the battle, I looked up and realized I had been separated from Cameron. 
I tried using my fire again, but there were just so many I couldn't take them all out at once. Cameron was forced to retreat to safety by jumping on some boxes, barely holding on against the relentless horde. I attempted to lure the tiny spider toilets away as best as I could. A few swipes of my plunger caused many of them to turn to me, and I led them away before setting them ablaze. Eventually, I was able to defeat them all and ran back to save Cameron. With a few more fiery blasts, I finally defeated the last of the remaining skibbity spiders. Just as I thought we had taken care of them all, one ran right by us. No, it'll alert the others. Luckily, just as it was about to reach the exit, Cameron ran over and stomped on it before it could escape. That was a close one. Thanks, buddy. Of course. No one can know we're on this ship or we're goners for sure. Suddenly, the alarm started going off. Curse detected. Curse detected. Intruder on board. Intruder oh no. Board. A bunch of skibbity toilets barged into the room. Well, we're goners. Not if I have something to say about it. Come on. Cameron followed me as we made a run for it out of the room. On days 24 through 26, Cameron and I escaped onto the main deck. Outside, the clouds were dark and rain was falling down heavily on top of us. The sea stretched out endlessly in every direction. Before we could get very far, skibbity toilets surrounded the two of us on all sides. We were trapped. All right, Max, are we goners now? No! It looks like there's no way out of this one. We're gonna have to fight them. Cameron dual wielded his plungers and began swinging, striking multiple opponents at a time. The toilets sensed our aggression rushed forward to match our ferocity. I followed Cameron's lead, attacking the group of skibbity toilets with my plunger. Each blow connected, landing with a satisfying thud as I moved on from one target to the next. I continued maneuvering around, dodging the attacks as best as I could before finally managing to get a group of enemies in front of me before using my flame attack. They didn't stand a chance against my attacks, and as the fire cleared, I saw more skibbity toilets running up to join the fight. Luckily, Cameron took initiative and rushed forward to start dealing with the skibbity toilets who were emerging from below the decks. With the reinforcements being dealt with, I brought my attention back to those who remained on the deck with me. I unleashed some sweeping attacks, knocking the skibbity toilets off the deck and into the ocean, gaining some breathing room. The battle raged on and on, and despite our best efforts, their numbers were too overwhelming. The whole ship was full of them, and no matter how many we beat, more just kept coming. There was no way we could win against these seemingly unending waves of enemies. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning struck the ship, lighting the deck on fire. Despite the rain, the embers spread quickly and soon the ship was engulfed in flame. This place is going down. Abandoned ship. Toilets were running around like crazy and jumping overboard left and right. It was chaos. In all of the commotion, I lost sight of Cameron and couldn't find him anywhere. Cameron? Cameron! Where'd you go? As I looked for my friend, lightning struck once more, this time hitting me. I got knocked out and everything went black. On days 27 through 29, I suddenly awoke and found myself on a beach shore. The ship and skibbity toilets were nowhere to be seen, and my head was pounding. Where, where am I? I took a look around and realized I had washed up on the remote island where the prison was located. Ugh, my circuits feel fried. At least I made it here. Better start the rescue mission. I headed towards the prison, but as I approached, I saw the place was crawling with toilet guards. There wasn't any way I'd be able to search inside and look around without being seen. Looks like I'm gonna have to be extra careful to not get caught. Stealth mode activated! I approached the prison cautiously and tried to sneak my way in, but the guards immediately turned towards me. I knew I sensed a curse! Get him! Stealth mode? How could you betray me this way? The toilets attacked me all at once. They descended upon me in seconds. I began a flurry of punches, attacking as they approached. As the horde got closer, I unleashed a fire attack, thinning out their numbers. I tried to run away from a building, but there were even more toilets waiting for me. Despite my upgrades, they were doing a lot of damage, and I knew I was in trouble. There were so many surrounding me, it seemed hopeless. My attempts to defend myself led to the fight spilling out into the yard. I continued my slugfest, punching left and right in an attempt to keep them at bay. Seemingly out of nowhere, skibbity helicopters assaulted me, swooping down from the sky. I let loose another blast of fire in an attempt to get the upper hand, but there were just too many. I made a break for some higher ground to gain an advantage but the skibbity helicopters could pursue me no matter where I went. I managed to escape the yard. Running as best I could, my attempt to escape led me to a dead end. With my back to the wall, I didn't have any choice. I had fought them off for as long as I could, but no matter how hard I tried to fend for myself, I just couldn't keep up with them. Eventually, they overwhelmed me and I had to submit. I was taken prisoner by the toilets. On days 30 through 32, I was in a cell with a group of other cameramen. I searched through them and discovered Cameron was in the cell with me. I knew that face anywhere. Cameron, you got captured too? Yep, 
I'm glad to see you're okay. But we need to get out of here before the Titan Skibbity arrives. Say no more. I'll have us out of here in no time. I did everything I could to break open the cell, but it wouldn't budge. I needed to think of another plan. Wait, I have an idea. I had noticed that a guard had a patrol that went right past our cage. I waited until the guard walked by again, and as he did, I burned him through the bars with my firepower. He dropped his key, and I grabbed it. Great job, Max! I used the key to open the door, but as soon as it swung open, the alarms went off. Uh-oh! Here we go again! Guards began swarming into the area. I prepared myself to take them all on, but the other cameramen stepped in to help. Don't worry, we've got your back. Let's do this. My allies joined me outside of the cell, and we began a brutal assault for our freedom. Cameraman clashed with Skibbity Toilet, fist against porcelain. Cameron focused on keeping my sides clear as I pushed forward and caused the toilets to fall back slightly. All of our forces spilled out of the cell, but unfortunately, more and more toilet guards joined the fray. The battle raged on as both sides fought viciously, and the fight moved into the cafeteria. I was leading the charge as my allies clashed with the enemies around me. The toilet forces had reinforcements waiting for us, however, and we were ambushed by spider skibbity toilets. They weren't the mini ones either. They were full-size spider toilets, deadly strong and crazy fast. With their renewed numbers, our forces stalled out and our momentum was stopped. We all fought hard, but they just kept coming and coming. We need the Titan cameraman if we're gonna stand a chance. Go, save him. You're right. Hold them off here and buy me some time. I'll be back. Leaving behind my allies to fight, I press onwards to find the Titan cameraman. On days 33 through 35, I found the maximum security cell where the Titan cameraman was being held, but he wasn't alone. A powerful looking battle skibbity toilet was speaking with him. I wanted to help the Titan cameraman, but the battle skibbity could have important information, so I snuck in close to hear their conversation. Well, well, well. Looks like we finally captured the almighty cameraman Titan. Yeah, took you long enough, Simon. I told you I'd get you eventually, didn't I, Bradley? Whoa, sounds like these guys have some sort of history together. You don't scare me, you big dirty toilets. Cameron will find someone to help me. Oh yeah? Like who? Like me! I ambushed the battle skibbity from behind, and our fight began. I started by swinging my plunger wildly at him, but he seemed to be resistant to these attacks. So I quickly switched to my fire channel, attempting to burn him to a crisp. He quickly retaliated with fire of his own, and pretty soon the whole place was up in flames. Before I could land a hit, he launched up into the air and started raining down fire on me from out of reach. I needed to get out of the way quickly, so I jumped down below, but he quickly flew down to follow me and began raining rockets down upon me. He flew around me in the air, and I couldn't hit him with anything. I thought I was done for, until he swooped down close to me and I was able to blast him with my fire channel, knocking him out of the sky. I thought I'd have the upper hand now, but even while he was on the ground with me, he was about to blast me to pieces with his rockets. I did my best to dodge the blast, but there was still fire everywhere and I couldn't avoid it much longer. I don't think I'm gonna make it! On days 36 through 38, I was on the ropes, and I would need a new plan if I was gonna turn the tide of this battle. Just then, I spotted a button near the cage of the Titan cameraman. I ran over and pressed it, freeing him from his cage. Hey, Max, catch. He tossed me a massive, powerful-looking hammer, and when I picked it up, I started to transform. I grew into a massive Titan TV man. All my health regenerated, and I had five more hearts. I also had a new channel power. I could shoot ice out of my screen to freeze my foes. Max, distract him. I have a plan. All right, time to kick some butt. The battle skibbity flew up immediately and began raining missiles down on me in a feeble attempt to attack. I sent shockwaves flying forward with each strike, ensuring I hit the battle skibbity no matter what. The battle skibbity flew around, dodging as best as he could, shooting missiles back at me whenever he had the chance. I weaved between the shots easily, and I finally saw my chance, letting loose and punching him with my new ice channel attack. I froze him in place, making him an easy target. I blasted him with fire, hurting him immensely, but releasing him as the ice melted. He attempted to flee, zooming to the top of the room, trying to escape my attacks, but I followed him quickly. We engaged in a slugfest, duking it out as we exchanged fire powers. He was no match for me, however, and I swatted him out of the air like a fly. I dropped down to the floor and we continued our fight, maneuvering through the flaming battlefield. I smacked him around, switching from my plunger to hammer, battering him with every attack. The battle skip but he was no match for me, and I beat him with one last hammer attack, sending him flying across the room defeated. Just as the battle skibbity toilet fell, the Titan cameraman yelled over to me. I'm finally all charged up. It's time to free my people. With that, the Titan cameraman blasted apart the prison, reducing it to rubble. We flew out of the hole he created to find all of the cameramen waiting outside in the prison yard. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go! Oh. On 
Unfortunately, our celebration was cut short when I spotted the Titan Skibbity Toilet approaching quickly from above. I'll buy you guys some time. Run! On days 39 through 41, I intercepted the Titan Skibbity Toilet to try to give my allies some time to escape. Do you really think that little upgrade will be enough to stop me? Let's find out! I shot into the sky, and we began our brawl trading powerful blows. After just a few hits, though, I was knocked to the ground. I attacked ferociously with my hammer, landing hit after hit, and even blasting him with the shockwaves. I knew I was doing damage to him, but not nearly enough. I wasn't sure what I could do. I ran, trying to gain some distance from him, but there wasn't anywhere I could hide on such a small island. No matter where I went, he quickly caught up to me, punishing me for trying to escape with more attacks. I attempted to defend myself, but he quickly cornered me on the beach and fought ruthlessly. The massive toilet was right. He was too strong for me even in my new form. My health was getting really low, and I feared it might be the end. Any last words? Before I could speak, a massive sonic boom blasted the Titan Skibbity out of the sky. I looked in the direction of the blast to see the Titan Speaker Man. Come with me, no! I immediately followed after him, before the Titan Skibbity could catch up to me. On days 42 through 44, I followed the Titan Speaker Man all the way to the Speaker Man's base. I arrived to find groups of Speaker Men who were amassing a Speaker Man army while staying hidden from the Skibbity forces. Okay now, can you explain to me what you were doing back there? I explained to him how I was on a mission to take out the Titan Skibbity Toilet. It then proceeded to ask him if they would be willing to join the cause. An enemy of the toilets is a friend of ours. You got yourself a deal, buddy. Suddenly, a Speaker Man ran up to us in a panic. Sir, they found us. Before we had a chance to react. A horde of skibbity toilets flooded into the base and started killing speakers left and right. Thanks to that TV man's curse, we were finally able to find the speaker man. The Titan will be so pleased. What? You brought them here? You're a traitor. No, please. I can explain. Completely blind to the chaos around him, the Titan speaker man attacked me in a fit of rage. On days 45 through 47, I was locked in battle with the Titan speaker man. I didn't want to hurt him, so I tried my best to evade his attacks without fighting back. Please, this is all a misunderstanding! I did everything I could, but he wouldn't listen. He just kept shooting at me with everything he had. I couldn't withstand his attacks for long. I tried to endure, but each blow felt like he was ripping me apart. Absolute chaos unfolded around me, and as much as I hated to do it, I rushed in to defend myself. I brought my hammer down on my ally. As the toilets and cameramen brawled around us, Titan Speaker Man took a few hits without flinching and dodged the rest. Each hammer attack that missed his mark instead sent toilets flying in every direction. I tried to use my ice powers to slow him down, but his massive form broke free each time without much effort. He endured strike after strike while retaliating on his own, assaulting me with missile attacks. I took to the sky to avoid his piercing sound blast, but he followed me above the base. We continued our fight, surrounded by helicopter toilets who joined in the fray but their attacks were nothing but mere annoyances. Our fierce dogfight continued over the desperate battle beneath us, and I felt like I was finally getting the upper hand because of my speed. The Titan Speaker Man flew back to the ground, landing on top of the base to try and regain the advantage over me. I landed down too, fighting him desperately, hoping to end the conflict and finish off the Skibbity Toilets attacking the base. As our rooftop battle went on, I could tell he was getting tired from our clash. Unfortunately, my own stamina was giving out as well. Suddenly, a laser shot down from above. Up. We both stopped and turned to see the jetpack skibbity flying towards us. Good work, men. Capture them all. I turned to the speaker man before I left. I'm sorry, speaker man. I'm gonna go get help and make this right. On days 48 through 50, I reunited with my allies and told them what happened to the speaker men. They're in danger, and I need your help to protect them. I have an idea of where the surviving speaker men might be held captive, but if we don't act soon, it'll be really bad. Then I have to go now. The TV woman handed me a map, and I took off towards the location on it. Eventually, I arrived outside some sort of testing facility. What kind of experiments are they running there? I jumped down, and suddenly I was ambushed by a horde of camera toilets. Ah, what did they do to you? They were nothing but mindless zombies now, and I was forced to fight them. The camera toilets charged at my feet, and I retaliated with my various TV attacks. Using my ice channel to freeze my foes in place gave me the opportunity to strike any stragglers. I doubled up with my fire channel attack to incinerate any enemies that tried to come in close. My previous encounter with the jetpack skibbity and titan speaker man left my health already in a bad spot. I took the skies to avoid my health lowering any further. I brought down my hammer one last time to finish off the remainder of the mutated toilets. This is horrible! I have to save the speakers before the toilets make science experiments out of them too! On days 51 through 53, I made it deeper into the base to find the Titan Speaker Man had been taken here too. 
the toilets were performing some sort of experiment on him. What are they doing to him? How is the procedure going, Skibbity Scientist? Very well. Soon we will harvest all these speakers for their parts and make something big. The enemy won't know what hit them. No, I can't let them hurt the Titan Speaker Man. I charge in to ambush them, but before I can reach them, the scientist toilet spoke. Activate emergency protocol. They press the button, causing the floor to open beneath the Titan and sending him plummeting deeper into the lab. The Skibbities all turned to me and rushed into attack. Wielding my hammer and unleashing bursts of raging hot flames and sonic blasts, I was able to thin out their ranks. However, just as I thought I was out of the woods, even more toilet reinforcements emerged from the nooks and crannies. As the new Skibbities bolted towards me, I sent them flying back with my hammer. But despite my best efforts, their numbers were too great and they swarmed me, surrounding me on all sides. Luckily, my firepower made quick work of them, burning the remaining enemies to a crisp. After I marked those sorry toilets, they dropped a strange device of some kind. What's this? Before I could mess around with it, the jetpack skibbity flew in overhead. Oh no, I can't let him see me. On days 54 through 56, in a moment of desperation, I activated the device, unsure of what it would do. Suddenly, it shrunk me down, concealing me from the jetpack skibbity just in the nick of time. Whoa, now I'm just a little guy. Utilizing my new decreased size, I avoided the jetpack skibbity overhead and snuck deeper into the lab. As I traversed the maze-like halls, I stumbled upon a storage room. Maybe I'll find something useful here. Inside, I found food and a laser gun. Nice. Finally, I made it to another room where all the speaker men, including the Titan speaker man, were locked in cages. There, I spotted the battle skibbity toilet, who was now upgraded and had been seemingly revived from the dead. Wait, he's alive? Suddenly, he he flew towards me and landed right in front of me. You thought you could sneak in? I can sense that curse anywhere. Why are you here? I thought I killed you. Are you a ghost? Crazy what a few speaker upgrades can do. I will lose to you twice. Without another word, the battle skibbity attacked me. On days 57 through 59, I was fighting the upgraded battle skibbity. He was way tougher than the first time, and I was still just a little guy. Come on, grow big! The device wasn't working, so I was forced to fight this battle in my tiny size. I would have to try to use it to my advantage. Taking to the skies, I soared through the air, flying circles around the much larger foe. Since my last encounter with the battle skibbity, his power had drastically increased and surpassed anything I had faced before. Missiles streak through the sky, exploding with devastating force, and his piercing laser blast diced through my defenses. I weaved and dodged, narrowly avoiding the incoming barrage of attacks. Closing in the distance, I swooped in with my hammer, but my strikes seemed to have a minimal effect. Meanwhile, his plunger attacks landed with brutal force, chipping away at my health. Using my ice powers, I froze him in place, temporarily halting his movements. I thought I'd finally gained the upper hand, but while his feet were frozen, his upper body wasn't. With his new speakers, he was able to unleash a sound barrage, knocking me out of the sky. I continued whizzing around the air, but his aim was getting more and more precise. I did my best to change my strategy, but no matter how hard I tried, I would never stand a chance in my tiny form. Suddenly, the TV woman's head came out of nowhere and zapped the battle skibbity with her lightning power. I'll hold him up. You figure out that device. She bought me enough time to finally get the device working, and I grew back to full size. All right, time for round two. On days 60 through 62, I charged back into the fray, allowing TV Woman to retreat and heal up. Now with my larger form, the two of us clashed once more. Finally, due to my increased size, I was able to break through the foe's defenses and deal some damage by hitting him with my hammer, catching the toilet off guard. He retaliated with the full arsenal of his abilities. Despite my larger proportions, his power still packed quite a punch. So I remained in close proximity to the toilet to best avoid his long distance attacks. Before I could gain the upper hand, the foe released a barrage of missiles, carving out a hole in the wall behind us. Before I could even react, the battle skibbity flew out of the hole. I took to the skies, following him from behind. As we both soared through the air, he maintained a good distance ahead of me as he rained fire down onto me. The base of the secret lab became littered with flames, covering much of the ground below in a layer of blazing ember. I couldn't believe it. Even at my larger size, I was still too weak to take on the upgraded battle skibbity. I was on my last legs. I was gonna lose again. Give up yet? If you join the toilet team, I'll spare your life. I'd rather die than join your cause. Just when I thought it was all over, the Titan speaker man appeared. TV woman had freed him. The way you're fighting. I could tell you're not my enemy. Here, take this. He tossed me a new upgrade, and when I picked it up, I transformed into the Cinema Man. I gained another 10 hearts and a new electric channel power. I also now had speakers of my own. 
Now this is more like it. Immediately, I flash my new lightning channel at the enemy, sending a jolt of electricity surging through the battle skimmity. He attempted to counterattack with his flames, but my new powerful size was finally able to withstand his fire power. With my hammer in hand, I struck down on the foe with great force. Before he had any time to recover from the blow, I unleashed the full extent of my powers, slowly but surely wearing him down. He attempted to dodge my channel blast by taking to the skies and flying away from me, but I gave chase, knocking the toilet out of the sky and sending him plummeting to the ground below. With Sonic Blast of my own, I confused the battle skibbity, leaving him vulnerable. Finally, with my new Titan form, I had overwhelmed him, and with one last lightning channel blast, the enemy collapsed, defeated once and for all. After the battle skibbity was defeated, laser fire rained down from the sky. It was the jetpack skibbity. There you are. You can't escape this place. Out of the frying pan, am I right, TV woman? He started blasting everything, and it was pure chaos. I hadn't gotten a chance to heal yet, and I was sure I would die. Just then, TV woman returned. Everyone, run! I'll hold them off! My hero, we'll come back for you, I promise! I fled with all the speaker men, leaving TV Woman to face the jetpack skibbity. On days 63 through 66, I had made it back to the speaker man base with my new speaker man allies, but my commander was still in trouble. Where is the jetpack skibbity stationed? I have to go back for TV Woman. We were lucky to get out of there. We need to be gathering our forces to fight the Titan skibbity toilet. I know, but I can't leave her to be tortured. She sacrificed herself for us. You're right, I don't want to leave her either. The jetpack skibbity's usual whereabouts are kept top secret. You'll have to infiltrate one of their bases to find that information. Then it's time to do a little bit of recon. I'll join you. No, we need someone to continue leading the fight. Don't worry, I got this. I flew around the world for a while, until I spotted a skibbity base from above. I landed nearby and checked the place out from afar. I spotted some skibbities and listened in. I just got the coordinates for the jetpack skibbities base. Excellent, let's conceal them quickly. Oh no they don't, that's exactly what I need. I blasted them away with my weapons, but all the other skibbities saw me and attacked. All right, it's showtime. On days 67 through 70, I attacked the skibbity toilet base. Gripping my hammer firmly within my clutches, I swung forward towards the horde of enemies, sending them flying backward. The remaining forces of spider, helicopter, and regular toilets on the rooftop swarmed me. Utilizing my lightning channel, I was able to electrify the majority of the foes. Even as they retaliated to the best of their abilities, my gargantuan form was near impervious to their minuscule attacks. I alternated between all of my channels. Fire, ice, and lightning making quick work of their surviving forces, dwindling them down until there was only one toilet remaining. With one final mighty lightning blast, I was able to take out the last of the skibbities. They dropped what appeared to be the coordinates to the jetpack skibbities base I was looking for. I better skibbity tattle out of here before the big guy arrive. And so, I flew to the coordinates, but when I arrived, there was nothing but a big empty field. What is this? Is this some kind of prank? Am I being recorded? Suddenly, I stepped down on a pressure plate and the ground opened up beneath me, causing me to plummet straight down into the depths below. On days 71 through 74, I landed inside of another underground lab. This must be the base. I better take a look around. I shrunk myself down with my device so I wouldn't be spotted immediately, and then began stealthing around the base. I quietly went from hall to hall, making sure I was unseen. So far, nobody had spotted me, but I was so tiny I almost got run over by a skibbity tank. Whoa! Oh, I'm vulnerable in this state. I need to be careful. Just then, the skibbity tank stopped in its tracks and turned around. I can sense the curse. We have an intruder. They charged right at me, but I used my ice channel to freeze them in place. I gotta get out of here. I didn't have anywhere else to go, so I ran deeper into the facility. On days 75 through 77, I arrived in another room where I found the TV woman waiting for me. I ran towards her in excitement, seeing her still alive. TV woman, you're okay. I didn't think I was gonna see you again. She turned around, but something wasn't right. I was so shocked, I stopped in my tracks. TV threat detected. Must be eliminated. Suddenly, she started attacking me. The toilets had taken over her mind. She wasn't in control of her actions, and I didn't want to hurt her. So I did my best to avoid TV Woman's attacks rather than damaging her. You gotta step out of it! Please! But she wouldn't listen. All she did was charge at me, trying to stomp me out or attack me with her lightning. You leave me no choice! I had my ice channel at the ready and blasted it at the TV Woman, leaving her frozen right where she was. After freezing TV Woman, I heard a strange whirring as machines came to life, and to my surprise, the jetpack skibbity teleported in. Looks like I have some company. 
What did you do to the TV woman? You have other things to worry about. He immediately charged and attacked me. On days 78 through 80, I was facing off with the jetpack skibbity toilet. As the foe's missiles detonated with a ferocious boom, the battlefield became engulfed in raging flames. Surrounded by the scorching embers, I knew I couldn't maneuver around them. I had no choice but to jump down from the platform onto the ground below. Being so much smaller than my opponent, I knew I couldn't face him at such a great disadvantage. So I activated the device once more, this time allowing me to grow back to my titan form. Now, the two of us were on an equal playing field. I barraged the toilet with the full extent of my long range abilities, burning him with my fire channel, electrifying him with my lightning channel, freezing him in place with my ice channel, and shooting him from a distance with my lasers. The enemy retaliated with his missiles once more, but I was able to weep past them, dodging his attacks as I moved in close where he was most vulnerable. There, face to face with my opponent, I attacked him head on, swinging my mighty hammer down onto the foe. I had him on the ropes, and to my surprise, he started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? If you defeat me, your TV woman commander will never return to her senses. What? Turn her back this instant! Never. Do it yourself. How? I can send you into her mind, but if you fail to free her, you'll be mind controlled too. I don't care. I'll take the risk. That's perfectly fine by me. He'll happily take the cinema man as part of the Skibbity army. He then zapped me and I got sent into the TV woman's mind. On days 81 to 82, I woke up inside of a void where I was once again tiny. The TV woman was there trapped in a cage. Commander! Pax, what are you doing here? Leave now. What? Why? I came here to save you. Suddenly, a giant skibbity toilet spider dropped down behind me. Time to take the cinema man's mind for myself. The spider toilet started to attack me. With his long, spindly legs, the arachnid-like foe came barreling towards me. No matter how fast I ran, the toilet's multiple legs gave him the advantage. I couldn't escape, and the enemy hit hard both with his melee attack and his jolts of electricity. Luckily, even within his realm, I still possessed all of my powers. I retaliated with my hammer, lasers, and my fire, ice, and lightning channels. But even still, my abilities weren't enough. It was neck and neck. I had to use my smaller size to my advantage. I flew circles around the spider toilet, disorienting him and causing him to lose sight of me. Before he could regain his footing, I used my lightning channel once more to finish him off. After defeating the skibbity spider, I went and freed the TV woman from the cage. Thank you, Max. Once I saved her, we both returned to reality, and the jetpack skibbity was gone. As I was looking around, I found a note on the ground. If you're reading this, you may think you've escaped death, but you haven't. The curse that you possess will grow fatal and kill you in 10 days. I will bring honor to the skibbity army. I have to do something about this curse before it's too late! On days 83 and 84, we fled the facility. After we were safe, I stopped to talk to TV Woman. I'm glad we were able to make it out of there. Were you able to learn anything about the curse while you were brainwashed? Yes. The Skull Skibbity Toilet is the one who conjured the curse. You're gonna have to find his base and search the area for a cure. It's the only way to stop it. Got it. Thanks for the info. I better hurry though. I only have a few days before this curse becomes lethal. No time to waste. The clock was ticking, so I took to the skies in hopes of finding any clues on where the Skull Skibbity Toilet's base might be. As night fell, I spotted a graveyard and decided to check out the area. Area. I landed and began exploring, looking for any clues that might lead me to the Skull Skibbity. After a few minutes of searching, I suddenly experienced a wave of nausea and pain. I had never felt this sick before, and I was overwhelmed by the sensations. I lost five hearts! Oh no, oh I need a second, this hurts so bad! Is this due to the curse? As I tried to recollect myself, the Skull Skibbity Toilet and his goons suddenly popped out of the ground and began attacking me. Wait, he's still alive? On days 85 and 86, I found myself face to face with a horde of undead skibbity toilets. Led by their horrible leader, the Skull Skibbity Toilet. Emerging from their underground confinements, the undead toilets flew up into the air and began attacking me from all directions. Meanwhile, their resurrected leader lobbed globs of acid at me from afar. I don't know how he came back to life, but I knew I'd have to end him for good this time. With my hammer strikes and lightning channel blasts, I was able to send the minions flying back and keep them at bay while I turned my attention to the Skull Skibbity. Even though I was now much bigger than my old foe, I couldn't gain the upper hand. The curse was weakening all of my attacks. I was already feeling ill from the curse, but the toilet's poison was magnifying the effects of my sickness. For every undead toilet minion I took out, even more would rise from the grave and attack. I couldn't take on all of them, 
This wasn't good. This curse was having a powerful effect on me, and I was much weaker than usual as a result. The battle was so much tougher than I expected. No, stupid curse! I can't die! Not yet! Suddenly, the Skibbities let out a horrible, ear-piercing cry and rushed towards their leader. As they all surrounded him, the Skull Skibbity toilet began to transform. His minions were converging with him to form an even larger and more powerful opponent. After consuming them, the foe tripled in size. With the enemy's newfound increased size, the fight began anew. I hit him with everything I had, but his poison continued to eat through my heart, disintegrating my health to almost nothing. Frantically, I devoured the food in my inventory to regain some of my hearts. With my health restored, I took to the skies, flying circles around the gargantuan adversary. While his size was great, my speed proved to be greater as I swooped in, hitting the foe with my hammer and avoiding his poison attacks by gliding through the air. Landing one final blow, I sent the skull skibbity toilet flying back at so great a force that he instantly died upon impact with the ground. That's right! That's what you get for messing with a cinema man! Out of nowhere, the ground suddenly began to shake and tremble. Much to my surprise, a hole broke open and revealed the doorway. This must be the Skull Skibbity's secret lab. I need to get in there and find a cure before this curse makes things worse. I quickly shrank my size and entered the mysterious doorway. The clock was ticking, and I was running out of time. On days 87 and 88, I found myself inside the Skull Skibbity's base. After a few steps, I felt the effects of the curse again. Racked with pain, I lost five more hearts. Oh no! I need to hurry and find that cure before I lose all of my hearts to this terrible curse. I heard something approaching quickly and managed to hide just as something came zooming towards me. I peeked out from my hiding spot and saw that the modded skibbity toilet was entering the room. I smell an intruder nearby. I'll protect the skull skibbity toilet slab at all costs. Once I find you, wherever you are, you're done for. Thanks to this curse, I'm in no shape to take this guy on. I need to be really careful. I slowly stealth away from the modded skibbity. Once I had some distance, I continued to explore more of the lab. If it wasn't for my drinking device, I would have been caught in an instant. After a bit of exploring, I finally arrived in the main chamber of the skull skibbity toilet. The area seemed safe, so I took a look around. I found a book on the ground. It was a journal written by the skull skibbity toilet and had all kinds of information. I flipped through a few pages. Aha! Here we go! The cure to the curse is locked inside of the modded Skibbity. Nobody except for me will be able to get it. Oh, great. It's inside the modded Skibbity? This isn't gonna be easy. My thoughts were interrupted as the modded Skibbity fell from the ceiling. Found you! On days 89 through 90, I was facing off against the modded Skibbity toilet and he charged at me, swinging his saw wildly. Unfortunately, the room was too small for me to grow to full size, so I was forced to take on the opponent in my minuscule form. Despite my comparatively puny size, my hammer was luckily still proving to be effective against the modded skibbity toilet. My shortened stature also proved to be advantageous in dodging the foe's saw blade attacks and missile fire. I utilized all of my channel abilities, successfully chipping away at the enemy's health slowly but surely. But the toilet retaliated in full force, decimating the room with his firepower and engulfing the ground in flames. Things were going pretty well until suddenly my curse started burning, and it caused my health to drop all the way down to one heart. Ah, huh, what the heck? I can't get hit, otherwise I'm dead. I knew I couldn't let the modded skibbity hit me anymore, so I backed away to a safe distance and started shooting projectiles at him from afar. Quickly ducking behind cover, I sought shelter behind the pillars and tombstones in the room as I fired a barrage of missiles at the toilet. I knew if I was hit by his projectiles, I was done for, so I needed to be extremely cautious. The modded skibbity chased after me, backing me into a corner. Putting it all on the line, I ran in close once more, striking down on the adversary with one last mighty hammer strike. As the weapon made contact with his porcelain exterior with an echoing clang, the toilet finally keeled over defeated. When he died, he dropped the cure for the curse I'd read about. This is it! Awesome! I grabbed it and drank it down as fast as I could, regaining all of my hearts and removing the curse once and for all. Finally! I'm free! My celebration was cut short as the ceiling was suddenly vaporized by the Titan Skibbity Toilet. Not for long. Uh-oh. On days 91 and 92, I was face to face with my arch enemy, the leader of the entire Skibbity Toilet army. I unshrunk, ready to face off against him. You, you have the nerve to kill my loyal Skull Skibbity and then desecrate his base. I didn't desecrate anything. That toilet murdered a countless number of my friends. They all got exactly what they deserved. Anybody who isn't on the side of the Skibbity Army must die. That includes you. Yeah? Well, I won't be going down easy. That's for sure. I've already defeated a ton of your officers and even removed the curse you put on me. What else you got, fool? Do not mock me, TV head. I am going to personally ensure you don't live a single day more. Then come at me. Not yet. I've got other plans for you. What's that supposed to mean? Suddenly, a spider skibbity sprang at me out of nowhere and bit my brain. Sweet dreams, tube head. 
I tried to fight against it, but it was no use. The toilet venom sank into my brain, and I passed out. On days 93 and 94, I found myself trapped in a vision inside my head. I was a regular TV man, and I was in a field, surrounded by all of my fallen allies. Gosh, so many lives lost. Max, we missed you. How am I speaking to you now? You're all dead! We've been here all along, waiting for you. Join us, Max. Uh, no thanks. I still have things to do in the land of the living. <laughs> this is getting kind of weird. Join, Join us, Max. No, Join this isn't right. Max. This is a trap. Join I turned us. around to discover the spider skibbity was standing Join before me. Us. He was huge and horrifying. Not you again. You're a clever one, Max. Oh, well, looks like I'll just have to kill you instead. I beat you once. I'll beat you again. The giant freak laughed before vanishing. Suddenly, out of the fog, apparitions of my allies started to attack me. The two titans who were once my allies immediately began their assault on me as a horde of my deceased friends swarmed around me. As the enemies approached me, I quickly realized that in this form, I lacked all of my channel powers. I had no choice but to begin running for dear life. Luckily, I could still use my riot hammer and laser gun. Utilizing those two powers, I was able to cut through the ranks of the smaller enemies like nothing. Sorry, but you're all just illusions! However, the titans would not fall so easily. Their superior firepower caused my health to dwindle. After a while, there were very few stragglers that remained. As the battlefield became clear of enemies, I noticed a little skibbity spider hiding amongst the grass. I knew that if I defeated him, the dream would come to an end. As the threat of the titan's overwhelming size and abilities loomed over me, I chased down the spider and quickly brought its life to an end. After the spider was defeated, I was freed from my mind prison and the vision began to fade. On days 95 and 96, I woke up to find that the titan's skibbity toilet had locked me up in a cage. What? Hey! I defeated your spider, and this cage won't stop me either! I immediately blasted the cage open and freed myself from it, when suddenly the jetpack skibbity came flying in. You... you broke free of the mind control and the curse. Soon the titan skibbity will finish his biggest and most powerful weapon yet. And when that's done, this war is as good as over. That is, so long as you don't get in the way again. That's why I'm going to personally make sure you no longer intervene. And how are you gonna make sure of that? Personally! Without another word, the jetpack skibbity charged towards me and our battle began. With great speed, I flew around the massive aerial toilet, whacking it with my hammer as I got it close. In retaliation, the foe rained missiles down onto me, but after our many battles, I was well acquainted with dodging his attacks. Unfortunately, the same applied to the enemy, as we had fought so many times previously that he was used to enduring all of my strongest channel attacks. The two of us darted through the air, unleashing powerful lasers and blasts all around the facility. Eventually, I flew up to the top of the cage and fired down with my powerful speaker blasts. To my surprise, this gravely injured the toilet adversary. With one final barrage of speaker blasts, the jetpack skibbity was finally defeated once and for all. I gotta prepare for the final battle. The end is near! On days 97 through 98, I returned to my army. There, I found everyone. Cameras, TVs, and speakers together united as a group. Max, you're okay! Yeah, but I don't have much time. We need to call a meeting now. And so, TV Woman assembled everyone around me. I informed them of the weapon the Titan Skibbity Toilet was planning to unleash in a few days. We have to stop the army before they unleash the final attack! What if we're not strong enough? We will be! We will claim this victory for all the friends we've lost along the way! <laughs> With everyone properly motivated, I started handing out armor, weapons, and rations to my army. I even gave myself a small arsenal of firepower. Mamma mia! Let's do some plumbing! On day 99, I arrived at the battlefield with my army to find the skibbity forces already waiting for us. The area was covered in toilets of all shapes and sizes, and they looked really tough. Surrender or face the wrath of the resistance! It's cute you think you can win. Onward, men! Charge! Ah! The two armies clashed in the ruins. Gunfire drowned out the Skibbity's dreaded song. The Titans rained down their powers onto the toilets. The battle raged on and soldiers were falling left and right, allies and toilets alike. I assisted my men in battle the best I could, but the Titan Skibbity toilet was causing a ton of fatalities. You have to stop the Titan if we're gonna have any chance of winning this war. We'll hold things down here. Go! All right, let's win this war! With that, I charged after the Skibbity Titan to take him on one final time. On day 100, I was facing off with the Skibbity Titan. The fight was tense and we were evenly matched. It was anyone's game. I used my sonic boom to blast him away from the battlefield and defend my army. So you're gonna make this personal, huh? You made it personal the minute you took away a TV's life. Prepare yourself. 
Valiantly, I charged in, and the two of us colossal titans clashed with immense force amongst the city's rooftops. With one mighty swing from my hammer, I sent the foe flying back. Without hesitation, I zipped towards him, ready to continue our battle. Using my ice channel, I froze the massive fiend in place and seized the opportunity to unleash my arsenal of abilities onto him, flashing my fire and lightning screens at the opponent to deal massive damage. I took to the skies and the enemy followed suit, our battle continuing in the air. I retreated, landing on top of a large building, but nowhere was safe as the skibbity used his powerful beam to decimate the structure. My health was getting low. I attempted to withdraw from the chaos of battle, but the adversary was right on my tail not allowing me a moment of respite. Landing on the deck of a nearby ship, the fight continued once more. With my trusty hammer, I was able to send the foe flying once more upon the fierce impact. But the toilet unveiled his beam once more, dealing massive damage at me from a distance while I was out of ammo and unable to fire back. As the opponent moved in close, we engaged in a battle of fisticuffs. While the fight was close, I was fueled by all the allies I had lost along the way, granting me the strength to overpower him. And with that, the Titan Skibbity Toilet was rendered completely defenseless. No, this can't be. So long, and don't let the Skibbador hit you on the Skibby Derriere on your way out. With one final hammer blow, I killed the Titan Skibbity once and for all. Suddenly, I heard a loud bass booming, and the Skibbity War rang in my ears as I was transported into a new body. On day one, I spawned into the city as a speaker man. To my horror, the place was being ravaged by a massive Skibbity Zilla. My men were all running for their lives as the massive radioactive monster vaporized the city. They fell left and right to the lizard's might. The toilets have biological warfare on their side? As I thought all hope was lost, the upgraded Titan Speaker Man was seen approaching the battlefield. He landed in front of me, ready to defend the Speaker Man. Stand back, I have this. The Titan Speaker Man turned around and fired his laser arms at the Skibbity Zilla. It hit hard enough to knock him back a few meters, but this kaiju's armored toilet shell let the damage glance right off of him. Skibbity Zilla retaliated with an atomic breath attack of his own. One after the other, the giants traded devastating attacks back and forth. While these two titanic monsters duked it out, the rest of the city wasn't faring nearly as well. Innocent civilians tried to avoid as much danger as they could, but there's hardly a place safe from the Skibbity Wars. Despite his efforts, the Titan Titan Speaker Man was soon hit with an attack that caused his whole body to be surrounded in electricity. He turned towards our forces, acting strangely. Eliminate. He began to attack the Speaker Man with everything he had, blasting our army to death. The Titan was being mind controlled by the Skibbity Toilets. Suddenly, a horde of mini Skibbity Zillas swarmed the area. Without any weapons, I was defenseless. I ran for my life. On day two, I was being pursued by a horde of miniature Skibbity Zillas. The right the radioactive toilets were killing my allies left and right with their razor sharp teeth. Their cursed song filled the streets along with the screams of my friends. I need to find a weapon, fast! Just then, I spotted an abandoned music shop. I ran inside, searching for anything in the store I could use. I picked up one of the instruments and felt a new power surge through me. The mini Skibbity Zillas closed in and I unleashed the power of my Speaker Man song. Take this! As the stampede rushed through the doors, I unleashed a blast of sound through my speakers, stunning all the dinos who were caught within its effect. I took advantage of their slowed march and maneuvered through the record shop to get a better position. With all of them grouped up, I fired a bellowing concussive bass. Their jaws were sharp and they were able to chew down my health with each bite. After everything, the Skibbity Zillas still stood strong and kept up their attacks. My new powers were powerful and I managed to take down a a few of the enemies and stunned the rest. But as I tried to flee, a tank Skibbity Zilla stopped me in my tracks. Eliminate speaker threat. The Skibbity Zilla tank unleashed its firepower onto me, leaving me with low health. I tried to fight back with my music, but its armor was too strong for me to penetrate. The Skibbity forces closed in. On day three, I was about to be leveled by the Skibbity Zilla army when a cameraman jumped in to defend me. He shot back the toilets with his laser gun, buying us some time. Come with me. I followed behind the friendly cameraman as the mini Skibbity Zillas and Tank all followed close behind. We navigated the maze of the city, but no matter what we did, there were toilets around every corner. The two of us ran into a street only to be completely surrounded by Skibbity Toilet enemies. Here, take this! The cameraman dropped me a plunger to help defend myself. I'll clear the path. Find the Titan cameraman. He's the only one who can help us now. The cameraman ran into the fray, clearing a path for me to escape. I made a run for it, but in the process, my new camera ally fell to the might of the Skibbity Zilla forces. No! With a heavy heart, I continued to run until a little voice yelled out to me. Oh, no, you don't. 
Out of nowhere, a mini Skibbity Spider jumped me. On days four through five, I was fighting for my life against the mind-controlling Skibbity Spider. Before I could stop him, he slipped into my brain, causing me to feel a weird sensation. Ah, he's in my brain! The spider plopped out a few controls and began controlling my every move. I have you now. <laughs> A group of speaker men came to aid me, but instead I lost control of myself and began attacking them. No! Stop doing this! <laughs> Their blood is on your hands, speaker man. I thought fast and turned my speaker up to max volume. I unleashed a powerful music attack that blasted the pesky spider off of me. In his place, he left a strange computer chip in my inventory. What the? You're not getting away that easy. I looked behind me and spotted a swarm of larger skibbity spiders crawling after me. The horde went at me with everything they had and I retaliated with my music attacks. Unfortunately, there were too many for me to take on and more kept coming after everyone I killed. I ran until I spotted a manhole in the ground and took a leap of faith. On days six through seven, I took cover in the sewers as I heard the scuttling sound of the spider's feet running overhead. I gotta find another way out of here. I scoured the sewers for an alternate route, but when I turned the corner, I was spotted by a skibbity toilet patrolling the area. There's the speaker! Get him! Him and his men came after me. There were too many for me to take on my own, so I made a run for it. The horde of toilets were closing in, but I spotted a massive waterfall in the distance. I took the plunge and jumped into the water to escape the toilets. Good thing skibbity toilets can't swim. Just then, I spotted a swarm of many skibbity zillas swimming after me like a swarm of piranhas. They can swim? Not fair! I swam as fast as I could, but the skibbity zillas were faster. They were much better fit to swim to the water than I was. They were closing in, and I wasn't sure how much longer I could hang on. Luckily for me, I spotted another passageway that led upwards. This might be my only chance! I took the path, and when I came out the other side, I was back in the overworld. Just then, the mind-controlled Titan Speaker Man touched down in front of me. Hey, buddy! Eliminate! The Titan pointed his weapons at me and fired. On days 8 through 9, I was being attacked by my former Titan ally. I didn't want to fight, so I pleaded in hopes of him snapping out of his trance. Please! You have to remember! You're our friend! Despite my pleas, I wasn't able to get through to him. He continued his onslaught, and a little speaker man like me was no match for the power of the Titan. One more blow from him would be enough to kill me. Looks like this is the end. Suddenly, from out of nowhere, the Titan cameraman swooped in and defended me from the Titan speaker man. The two of them clashed, Titan versus Titan. It was anyone's game, and neither side was giving in. The Titan camera flew in front of the Titan speaker man to protect me from his attacks, stunning the speaker man on impact. The speaker man retaliated with his explosive red blast, impacting his target, but the cameraman still fought back against the speaker man. The cameraman hit the speaker man with his Thor-like hammer, causing the speaker man to bounce backwards in the water. The two continued battle, exchanging blow for blow. Just then, I heard a voice calling out to me. Over here! I looked up to find that a cameraman had come to my aid. I rushed over to join him as the Titans held each other off. I was soon among a group of the cameraman forces. Suddenly, a massive explosion shook the area, releasing a swarm of skibbity toilets hungry for blood. They set a trap! Everyone defend yourselves! On days 10 through 11, the camera forces in the skibbity toilets were fighting in all-out war. The cameras shot at them with their guns and smashed down the toilets with their plungers, while the skibbity toilets sang their haunting song to rally their forces. They were neck and neck, but thanks to the camera's arsenal, it was looking like we would stand a chance. I helped using my plunger weapon along with my musical instrument to take down every toilet that stood in my way. Just as we thought we had won the battle, a strange sensation came over me. Ugh, my head! Suddenly, sparks flew all around my body and I lost control of myself. I fired attacks at my own cameraman allies, causing them to fall one after the other. I couldn't stop my own attacks! No, stop! How is this possible? <laughs> Just then, the tank Skibbity Zilla rolled out in front of me. The chip the spider Skibbity implanted you is all we needed. Each commanding officer is now able to control you whenever we please. I didn't want to hurt my allies any longer. I focused hard and managed to gain some control for a short moment. I blasted a massive sound wave into the ground, causing a hole to open underneath me. The tank Skibbity and I plummeted into the earth below. On day 12 through 14, I woke up in an underground cavern with the tank Skibbity Zilla. The fall made me take massive damage, but I regained control of my body once again. I gotta get rid of this chip! I tried to toss the chip from my inventory, but no matter what I did, I couldn't get it off of me. The tank Skibbity Zilla turned his attention towards me. I see I can't control you anymore. If you won't be my puppet, then I'll just have to kill you. 
Without a moment to waste, the tank Skibbity charged at me with everything he had. He used his mounted cannon to fire grenade blasts at me. I could only narrowly dodge direct hits before being blown away by the blast. I nimbly dodged out of the way while the ground around me was blown apart. I closed the distance and swung with my plunger, landing a few consecutive hits before being forced on the defense again. To my horror, the Skibbity tank switched his ammunition, using flaming rounds to light the battlefield ablaze. His explosive missiles were getting harder to dodge, with the surrounding area becoming harder to maneuver around. He was too strong for me to defeat. I was close to death when I spotted a strange object on the ground. What's that? I ran to it and picked it up. Suddenly, I felt my body change. My arms elongated, and I grew bigger in size. My speaker head was now larger and more powerful. I was a large speaker man with five additional hearts. Time for round two. I jumped back into the fray, unleashing my newest power. My large speaker man fists were able to dig into the tank's hardened body dwindling his health substantially. I was quickly overpowering the tank's skibbity toilet using my newfound power. My sound wave screeching frequencies were highly amplified, disorienting the tank, giving me more opportunities to strike. He continued to blast me with powerful explosive artillery, but it didn't phase me too much because of my newly increased health. My towering size seemed to intimidate the poor little skibbity toilet, causing him to try and retreat to no avail. With one strong blow, I knocked the tank's skibbity toilet to his knees. <laughs> I might have lost control over you, but the other skibbity officers will make sure you fight for our cause. I had had enough of his nonsense and blasted him into the lava below. I then exited the cavern, when suddenly I spotted the Titan Speaker Man flying overhead. The chip is gonna have to wait. He's looking for me! On days 15 through 17, I kept buying cover to keep myself from being tracked by the Titan Speaker Man. The Titan flew over my hiding spot, patrolling from the sky above. I held my breath as he passed by but he didn't seem like he'd be leaving the area anytime soon. Come out wherever you are, huh? I need to get out of here without getting spotted. I waited for an opening and stealthed from one hiding spot to the next to stay out of his sights. It was a game of cat and mouse, but I was determined to win. Unfortunately, I soon reached an area where an open field separated me from the only other piece of cover left. I'm gonna have to make a run for it. As the Titan was passing over, I ran as fast as my legs could carry me. The Titan was closing in and I still wasn't at the next hiding spot. I'm not fast enough, he's gonna spot me. I jumped under the cover and stood still, unsure if I had successfully evaded the Titan. Did he see me? To my dismay, the Titan speaker man touched down in front of me. No. He blasted me with the sonic boom attack, sending me flying into the unknown. On days 18 through 20, I landed on a remote island made of strange rock formations. Inside the island was an even smaller island. Where did that sonic boom send me? Suddenly, something zoomed by as fast as lightning, putting me on edge. Who goes there? Just then, the speeding enemy ambushed me, revealing himself as the sawblade skibbity toilet. You're on my turf now. The sawblade skibbity tried to give me a fresh fade with his whirling blade, but I wasn't due for a haircut anytime soon. I tried to use my plunger, but I couldn't get within melee range without getting damaged. I tried to land sonic blasts while the skibbity was banking for another run, but it was far too quick. He whizzed back and forth at blinding speed, dive bombing me. I had to dodge out of the way or else I'd be sliced in half. Each hit I tried to land failed to connect. He was too nimble for me to land an easy blow. I have to run. I tried to run, but that's exactly what the toilet wanted. He was gaining on me fast. I was gonna get mowed down to nothing. Suddenly, a massive laser shot down from the sky above and blasted into the pesky sawblade skibbity toilet. When I looked up, I realized that the Titan cameraman had come to help. Don't worry, I'll save you. <laughs> Not so fast. Suddenly, the strange sensation from days prior came over me once more. Lightning zapped around me and I lost control of my body. Ugh! Let me go! Against my will, I lunged at the Titan cameraman. On days 21 through 23, I was battling with the Titan cameraman due to my mind control chip. What are you doing? I'm sorry, those toilets chipped me. What, no fair, I want chips. Not that kind. They put a device in my brain and now I'm not in control of my actions. Oh no, enough talk. Kill him. I went at the Titan cameraman with everything I had. The Sawblade Skibbity laughed before leaving us to our fight. I tried my best to hold back. The Titan cameraman blasted me with a fire attack immediately, followed by taking the brunt of a missile barrage. I tried desperately to resist as the world around me exploded into fire, but I couldn't stop my body from attacking. I unleashed my speaker attack as I felt my legs carry myself across the battlefield trying to dodge his attacks. I wasn't fast enough, however, and the Titan cameraman brought his hammer down directly 
onto me, which sent me flying across the field and causing extreme damage. I felt my body turn to retaliate, launching a relentless concussive base attack in an attempt to confuse him. I was met with sonic waves generated by the Titan Cameraman's hammer, and my body felt the hits. I was narrowly dodging hammer swings and I attempted to navigate the flaming battlegrounds. I wanted nothing more than to stop attacking, but my body wouldn't obey me. I felt my body begin to finally run, but I was caught up in another missile barrage. The Titan Cameraman unleashes powerful attack in self-defense. Please, I'm gonna die! I'm sorry for this, but I can't let you kill me. The Titan charged up his finishing attack and fired a massive laser down onto me. Luckily, I managed to dodge it, but his laser vaporized the ground beneath my feet. I fell into the darkness below. On days 24 to 26, I landed inside of the Sawblade Skibbity secret underground lab. I was worried I would be forced to battle again, but the fall allowed me to regain control of my body. I'm gonna have to be careful of who I'm around. I never know when I can lose control. I began to explore the laboratory for any clues that could be helpful on my journey ahead. As I investigated, I walked into a room full of zombie Skibbity toilets trapped in cages. They growled through the bars and I knew that they could be trouble. At least they can't get me through there. Suddenly, the security alarms began flashing red. Intruder alert. Intruder alert. That's probably a coincidence. Releasing skibbity zombies. Maybe it's for a different room full of caged zombie skibbity toilets. The doors to the cages opened and the zombies were unleashed onto me. Aw, oh, man! Ugh, get away from me! The zombies rushed from their cages, eager to attack. I engaged cautiously, attempting to keep my distance, but they were upon me almost immediately. I let loose of my powers, forcing them back with my booming blast. I was able to kill a few, but the rest didn't stay down for long, and they continued forward, with even more appearing behind the others. I began using my confusion tone on them to keep them from being completely overwhelmed. I tried to dodge and weave, but there just wasn't enough room in the hallways to maneuver. Before I knew it, they were right on top of me, and I found myself cornered by the giant horde of zombie toilets. I unleashed a barrage of tones and sounds in a desperate attempt to get them off of me. I took out one after the other, but their numbers seemed endless. No matter how many I killed, another always seemed to pop up in its place. There were just too many zombies for me to defeat alone. I knew I wouldn't be able to keep this up forever, so I used a sonic boom to blast them off of me. That gave me some breathing room, and I was able to spot a way out. I ran as fast as I could, hoping to lose the zombies. On days 27 through 29, I was being chased through the Sawblade Skippy's lab while the zombie toilets pursued me. I tried to shake them off, but everywhere I went, there were more of them. Quickly, I became surrounded, and I thought this was the end. No, there's just too many. It can't end like this. But just then, I heard someone calling out to me. Over here. With nothing else to lose, I ran towards the sound of the friendly voice, only to realize it was coming from a camera toilet. Ah! No, don't worry. I'm friendly. My name is Tom. He explained to me that he was a failed experiment at the lab and wanted to help the Alliance defeat the Skibbity Army. Quick, lead the way! Those zombies are still after me and they aren't far behind. I followed Tom down a few secret passageways throughout the facility until finally arriving at the entrance of a top secret room. It was of high importance, judging by the number of zombie toilets guarding the entrance. How am I supposed to get in there? Don't worry, I'll take care of this. Tom walked out in front of the zombie guards, pretending to be a mindless goon just like them. Intruder, go this way. Intruder, follow ugly toilet. The swarm of zombies tailed behind Tom, giving me the chance to sneak into the top secret room. On days 30 through 32, I made it inside the top secret room to find a strange porcelain girl in a massive glass tube. What's that? Just as I began approaching the test tube for a better look, the sawblade skibbity emerged out of nowhere, ambushing me. This right here is my latest creation, and I'll use your scraps to make her stronger. Once again, the strange sensation came over me, and I lost control of my body. The sawblade skibbity made me march towards a massive vat of lava. Ah! Legs! Stop moving! I tried to regain control of my body as I inched closer and closer towards my doom, but nothing seemed to work. Stop right there! Out of nowhere, Tom jumped in and hit the sawblade skibbity toilet, freeing me from his control. You pest. The sawblade skibbity attacked Tom, but the strength of his sawblade was too much for the little camera. He died to the might of the commander. No, Tom, you'll pay for this. With control back over my body, I charged in and attacked the sawblade skibbity. On days 33 to 35, I was retaliating against the sawblade skibbity to avenge Tom's death. We ran at each other, clashing as I swatted viciously with my plunger. I let loose my concussive blast, narrowly missing him as he zoomed by. 
I was able to land a few hits with my sound waves, jumping away as he attempted hit and run tactics. I retaliated every time he came near, taking a few hits myself. He got cocky, and after landing a really good hit, the sawblade skibbity attempted to retreat. He flew away to the upper level, but I followed up quickly to continue the fight. I came out, striking carefully when I could, having to be cautious as not to fall. Maintaining my balance on the raptors was tricky, and the skibbity sawblade took every opportunity they had to zoom in, attack, and then run away. I was able to fight back using my sonic blast, dodging whenever he zoomed in too close. I had to duck into a doorway and catch my breath for a second. He was too big to follow me in, so I studied his movements, waiting for a chance to strike. The commander was tough, but I was finally beginning to get an edge. I emerged from the doorway, unleashing my sonic and concussive blasts. I knocked him back down to the lab and was ready to finish him off. Not so fast. You didn't really think I'd let you beat me, did you? What do you mean? It looks like I finally got the upper hand. Not quite. Get him, my creation. Just then, the sawblade skibbity released the porcelain toilet girl from her tube. Whoa, what is that thing? Say hello to my secret weapon. Oh yeah? Bring it on! The porcelain toilet girl charged me immediately, and before I knew it, we were in an epic slugfest. On days 36 through 38, the battle with the porcelain girl was not going in my favor. A bunch of lasers suddenly materialized out of thin air, and I was hit with rays of searing damage. I ran to avoid more damage, when suddenly pylons rose out of the ground. Unsure of what they do, I did my best to dodge them as I approached her and attacked with my plungers. I was able to land a few blows before being walloped by a powerful punch of her own. I flew back and landed, only to be met with another group of lasers floating in midair. I ran immediately, attempting to dodge their deadly blasts, and unleashed some of my sonic sounds at the porcelain toilet girl as I got close. She aimed her lasers downward and let loose, causing the ground to temporarily turn into molten rock. I backed away to avoid the burning sludge, narrowly avoiding the attack before re-engaging. Unfortunately, I strayed too closely to the pylons and was hit by a lightning trap. I ran back to collect myself and then let out a barrage of sonic and concussive blasts as I charged forward for a combo of melee attacks. Her new strength was crushing. I wasn't sure how much more fight I had left in me. I was gonna have to turn the table somehow, but I got an idea. Out of my way! I dodged the porcelain girl's next attack and went for the sawblade skibbity toilet instead. Wait, what? My sneak attack did just the trick. The sawblade skibbity fell to my strength, dropping a remote as he died. Huh? What's that? I snagged the remote and used it, unsure of what it would actually do. To my surprise, the porcelain girl stopped in her traps. What the? Who the? Ouch, my head. Oh, of course. I get it now. There are remotes that power the mind control chips. I have to find the Titan Speaker Mans and my own to keep us from being mind controlled. Thank you for saving me. Here, take this as a sign of my gratitude. Oh, you're too kind. Holy moly. When I touched the gun, I felt an overwhelming sensation come over me. My body began to transform. My legs grew longer and my arm materialized into a new weapon. I was now a Titan Speaker man with five more hearts and a laser beam. I feel incredible. Wait, is this like a piece of you? Don't you need that? Or did you have a spare? And if so, where were you keeping it? You don't even have pockets. Suddenly, the room trembled wildly and the porcelain girl looked my way. Oh no, this is bad. We gotta go. Follow me, now. On days 39 through 41, I followed the porcelain girl outside to find that the skibbity Zilla was emerging from the ocean. What are you doing here? I got word of your little rebellion. You've been a real pain in my sight. And now, I'm going to put an end to this. The oversized lizard charged at me, ready to take me out. The skibbity Zilla unleashed his dino breath, setting me aflame. I retaliated with my laser attack, and he fired back. Our blast meeting point blank in a giant clash. I channeled as much energy as I could into the attack, but Skibbity Zilla was more powerful and pushed me back. We fought furiously along the beach. Lasers shot through the air as we dodged each other's attacks. I blasted him with my own laser barrage as the Skibbity Zilla was knocked back temporarily. He began stomping at me furiously and I dodged out of the way, letting loose with a barrage of missiles. They landed to little effect, and I charged in, attacking with a flurry of punches. He belched out a burst of fire and began gnashing viciously with bite attacks. Unfortunately, I misstepped and allowed him to get a heavy hit on me with his atomic blast. Don't worry, I'll take care of this. The porcelain girl jumped into the fray to help me fight. It was Skibbity Zilla versus his own science experiment. The Skibbity Zilla attacked immediately. 
blasting her with a bout of fire and setting the trees ablaze. She returned fire with a laser attack before leaping from the tree to engage at close range. She summoned her lasers again, letting loose another quick barrage before turning the floor into superheated lava. I tried to help, blasting from a safe distance, as he rained his own laser barrage down upon the porcelain toilet girl. I flew closer, trying to help in the fight, and we began the vicious double team attack. The Skibbity Zilla attacked us both wildly, seemingly unaffected by our onslaught. He stomped on Porcelain Toilet Girl furiously as she summoned attack after attack, but none of it seemed to matter. Despite her best attempts, the Porcelain Girl just couldn't get an upper hand. The Skibbity Zilla unleashed a powerful beam attack, melting the girl down to rubble. No! Just as I didn't think it could get any worse, the Skibbity Zilla began to transform. His skin turned metallic like armor and his body became more massive. He was now a Mecha Skibbity Zilla. <laughs> All will fall to my might. In his new form, I knew I wouldn't stand a chance. I took to the skies as the Skibbity Zilla followed after me. On days 42 through 44, I was in a heated chase as the Mecha Skibbity Zilla pursued me through the skies. I flew over the ocean away from the remote island, but I couldn't get him away from me. He can fly now too? I turned around and tried to fire attacks back at the monster to slow him down. However, he swiftly dodged each and every one of them. Is that the best you've got? The Mecha Skibbity Zilla fired back projectiles of his own. I stayed quick and managed to dodge one after the other, but they kept coming. I'm not sure how much longer I can keep this up. Hey, big guy, don't you get tired? Unfortunately, I was hit by one of the attacks, causing my jetpack to temporarily malfunction. Ah! I plummeted down into the ocean below me and splashed into the cold water. My vision blurred and everything went dark. On days 45 to 47, I found myself in a strange dark void wondering where I could be. What's going on? Suddenly, I heard a familiar voice beckoning to me. Save me, Max. I turned around and saw the Titan Speaker Man standing before me, taunting me of the past. Why didn't you save me? I will! Please, just hang in there a bit longer. It hurts. Why didn't you save me? I'll make you pay! The Titan Speaker Man attacked me and I shrunk back down to my first form. No! This has to be a nightmare! Get out of my head! <laughs> this is real life! The Titan Speaker Man transformed into a giant version of the Skibbity Spider that implanted my chip. You're under our control forever! The Skibbity Toilets will win this war! <laughs> No! Stop! Get out of my head! All I could think of was the Skibbity song swelling into my head like an inescapable nightmare on repeat. <laughs> on days 48 to 50, I woke up from the horrible nightmare and the cinema man was standing right in front of me. You're finally awake. Was that a dream? Ugh, my head hurts. What happened? I rescued you from drowning because I need your help. Wow, you're too kind. Really, your generosity is overwhelming. Look, the Titan Speaker Man has captured all of my TV forces, and I need someone to help me save them. That'd be pretty tough. I may be a Titan, but the Titan Speaker Man is upgraded. I already accounted for that. Cinema Man then handed me a map to a factory. This will lead you to where you can find your next upgrade. Suddenly, as I was looking at the map, the place started to get swarmed with Skibbity Zilla tank minions. I'll handle this. Follow that map and get that part. I didn't hesitate, knowing that I needed to get stronger to end the war. On days 51 through 53, I booked it towards the location that the Cinema Man gave me a map to. Sure enough, I spotted an old factory with a glass roof in the distance. I snuck around to the top of the building and took a peek inside, seeing a line of skibbity toilets being manufactured by other toilets. I guess the part I'm looking for is inside of here. With my upgrades, it would be impossible to stealth my way through. Well, it's a good thing I have a plan B in mind. I blasted through the glass roof with my attack. I wonder if anyone heard that. There's been a breach. Get that speaker. Huh. Perhaps plan B was not the right call for the stealth mission. Oh well. Stealth missions are boring anyways. Time for some all-out epic brawling. That's right. Come and get me, you toilet travesties. The toilets started to swarm me, but I was ready to fight. I shot them back with my sound waves, but they continued to press on through with sheer numbers. Once I had some breathing room, I destroyed their construction line in hopes that they wouldn't be able to create more of the nightmarish toilets. But ultimately, I was able to burn them to ashes. The army of toilets were no match for me, and I made quick work of them. That's right. No one can take the Maxter. Master of toilet disaster. Who's next? Me. I couldn't react fast enough, and I was hit directly by a missile. I turned to see that the missile was fired by a massive armored toilet. Out of my way. I'm getting that upgrade. Not on my watch. Your story ends here. 
No chance! I've still got 19 days left! On days 54 through 56, I was duking it out with the massive armored toilet. He was the toughest opponent I'd faced so far, and I had to put all my skills and abilities to use if I wanted to win this fight. The enemy bombarded me with a barrage of missiles, detonating upon impact with immense power. His onslaught was relentless, covering the battlefield below in a layer of scorching flames. Although the foe was persistent in his attacks, I wasn't ready to go down yet. Summoning all the strength within me that I could muster, I unleashed the full extent of my powers. Deploying my full arsenal of abilities, hitting him long range with my laser beams and sonic blasts, and getting in close to whack the enemy with a mighty blow from my plunger. By the skin of my teeth, I was able to take down the massive armored toilet. Phew! Thank goodness that's over! Now I can finally get that part without any more interruptions! Yeah! <laughs> I turned around in horror to see that the massive toilet had come back to life, revealing himself to be the Skull Skibbity Toilet. No! What did I just say? You'll pay for this! The smaller toilets I had beaten earlier were resurrected as Skull Skibbity Helicopter Minions. This is a nightmare! I was frozen in shock as the undead toilets charged at me. They swarmed around me and bit at me with their gnashing skull teeth. I did my best to avoid their attacks, but the whole room was on fire, making it difficult. I blasted them with everything I had, but they just kept coming at me. Even when I bombarded them with my powerful lasers, they just kept getting back up again. I was already weakened from fighting the armored toilet's last form, but now I was almost completely drained. I might not make it! Say goodnight! The skull skilly toilet used his poison bomb and attack on me. I couldn't withstand the toxins and passed out. On days 57 through 59, I woke up to find that I had been taken to a graveyard. As I was looking around, I looked up and noticed that the skull skibbity toilet was looming over me. What are you gonna do with me? You're merely bait for the bigger fish. I looked up in the sky and saw the cinema man flying towards me. No! Turn back! It's a trap! The cinema man didn't seem to hear me and he touched down. As soon as his feet hit the ground, he got ambushed by the Skull Skibbity. It all happened so quick, and within seconds, they had implanted a chip on him. No! Get him, my minion! Cinema Man? Cinema Man wasn't himself anymore, and had fallen under their control. Eliminate! He started to attack me! On days 60 to 62, I was under attack by the Cinema Man. The foe moved in close and with a heavy wallet from his fist sent me reeling back from the impact of his powerful punches. I didn't want to hurt my ally, but I knew if I held back then the adversary would make quick work of me. I had no choice but to hit him with everything I had. I unleashed a barrage of my abilities onto the enemy, sending him recoiling back towards the outer area of the graveyard and leveling much of the tombstones and fencing. Utilizing my concussive base ability, I managed to stun the Cinema Man temporarily, allowing me to hit him at full force with a decisive speaker blast. Although I couldn't maintain the advantage for long, as he stunned me in turn using his TV screen. I took to the skies and continued my onslaught of blast from above. I believed I had the upper hand, but it turned out the enemy had a ranged attack of his own, landing a devastating burst of lasers onto me. As we exchanged blows, the two of us moved and circled around the graveyard as if locked in a waltz that could cost either of us our lives. While I continued to bombard him with my abilities, the brainwashed enemy proved unrelenting, unleashing swing after swing of his fists, preventing me from getting too close. I didn't want to hurt him, and I really needed to get back to the Skull Skibbity to break Cinema Man out of mind control instead of fighting him. I tried getting the Skull Skibbity, but every time I tried, the Cinema Man blocked me off. I have to trap him! I looked around and spotted a group of sweetberry bushes. Aha! Uh -huh. Those should do the trick! I blasted the cinema man back into the sweetberry bushes and he ended up getting stuck. This is my chance! I turned my attention to the skull skibbity and attacked. I hit him with my laser beam, killing him. He dropped the cinema man's remote, as well as the upgrade that I was seeking. I picked it up and transformed into the upgraded Titan Speaker Man. I gained 10 more hearts and a new sonic boom power that could send people flying back. I also unlocked my final burst attack that leaves a ring of musical power dealing devastating damage. I then used the remote to snap Cinema Man out of his trance. Ah, my head. Don't tell me that toilet mind controlled me. Sorry, but I got the upgrade. It's time to free the Titan Speaker Man. On days 63 to 66, I arrived at the base where all the TV men were being held captive. I'll hold off the guards! You take on the Titan Speaker Man! Sounds like a plan. Together, the two of us stormed the area. 
The Cinema Man took out the front lines, while I pressed further in to confront the Titan Speaker Man. Show yourself! I know you're here! Suddenly, the jetpack skibbity toilet flew in. Not so fast, Max. I felt myself lose control again. I knew the jetpack skibbity had total dominance over me. Let me go! No. You're going to do my bidding, and you're going to hate it. Suddenly, my weapons aimed towards the TVs, and I began to fire uncontrollably, feeling regret with every shot. No! On days 67 to 70, as I was firing my weapons onto the TVs, suddenly the Cinema Man ran in front of them and intercepted the attack to protect his men. Cinema Man, no! I hit him right in the screen, and he was badly damaged. The blow was fatal, and he wasn't going to last much longer. I wanted to rush to his side, but I was frozen under the toilet's control. <laughs> Please, protect my men at all costs. No! You can't die! It's all my fault! Please! You can't go! Shh! Don't blame yourself! You weren't in control of your actions! It's not your fault! There has to be something I can do to make things right! You must win this war! You cannot let the skimmity toilets roll over the city! Without another word, Cinema Man passed away in front of me. Ah! How could you?! Enraged by his death, my emotions allowed me to break free from the mind control. Cinema Man was right. It wasn't my fault. It was yours! You're gonna pay for this! No, stop this! At once, I command you to stop! Why aren't you stopping? Driven by anger, I charged the jetpack skibbity, ready to exact revenge. On days 71 through 74, I was fighting the jetpack skibbity toilet. I did my best to fight him off with my upgraded laser, and it was super powerful, but he just kept bouncing back. He flew around me quickly, blasting at me with his missiles, and I was forced to fly back to a better vantage point. I landed on the bridge to get my bearings, but he just flew in and started headbutting me. We were engaged in a fist fight for the ages, my fist versus his head, until he backed up and started using his lasers and missiles on me again. I fought through his powerful blasts and got in close enough to use my concussive blast, which dazed him. This was my chance. Although the commander was proving to be an evenly matched opponent thanks to my new upgrade, I managed to finish him off with my sound boom and take him out. Any last words? Need backup! Calling the Titan Speaker Man! No! Not those words! As I hit him with one final blow, the jetpack skibbity finally took his last breath. Suddenly, the mind-controlled Titan Speaker Man flew into the battlefield. Eliminate! Eliminate! Alright, buddy. It's just you and me! Now on an equal playing field, the two of us began trading blows on the bridge. My new powers were devastating. But the two of us were evenly matched, and the speaker man would just return the same powers back at me in retaliation. Lasers cascaded through the air, erupting in a burst of flames. Luckily, I had a couple abilities that the foe didn't. Unleashing my speaker and concussive blasts, I was able to wear the enemy down, but it still wasn't enough to best him. I needed to reposition myself, and so I took to the skies. But the adversary was right on my tail. The battle continued in the air as we exchanged blows once more. This dogfighting wasn't getting us anywhere. I needed to act fast if I wanted to make it out alive. The two of us landed below in a parking lot where the fight commenced once more. There, I released my new ability, Final Verse. The power dealt massive damage to the speaker man, propelling him upwards and completely disorienting him. However, despite my best efforts, it still wasn't enough. Even though I was giving the battle everything I had, he was still too strong for me to beat him without finishing him off. It was with a heavy heart that I had to retreat, leaving him still control. I'll have to find his remote if I want any chance of being able to free him. On days 75 through 77, I was feeling like a failure. I couldn't save the TVs or the cinema man. Am I going to be able to win this war? I turned around to see the Titan cameraman standing before me. Titan cameraman, you're alive! I quickly caught him up about everything that had happened. I told him about the Cinema Man's sacrifice and how I needed the mind control remote to stop the Titan Speaker Man. He handed me over a list and I looked it over. Diamonds, metal pipe, and a giant plunger. All right, I can do that. Okay, I'm on it. On days 78 through 80, I was flying around looking for the items on the list. First, I started by mining some diamond. Using my powerful laser, I was able to blast into the ground and easily mine what I was looking for. One down, two to go! Next up was the metal pipe. I went to the remains of the factory from earlier and found one in some scrap. Now I just need a giant plunger. The one I currently have is too small and shabby. Where am I gonna find one of those? Before I could leave, the battle skibbity toilet appeared, blocking my path. Stop right there! Why does this happen 
every time I say something out loud. It may be humorously ironic, but it's also quite inconvenient. What do you even want? After what you did to this factory, I'm turning you to scrap. Wait a second, is that a giant plunger? The battle skibbity toilet lunged at me, raring for a fight. On days 81 and 82, I was locked in battle with the battle skibbity toilet. We whizzed around, flying through the air as the two of us unleashed our arsenal of attacks. Swooping in close, the foe smacked me with his massive plunger. And even at a distance, I wasn't safe as missiles and lasers erupted from the battle skibbity. Around us, the already decimated factory deteriorated even further into nothing but flaming rubble. The toilet released a blast from his speakers, but it was no match for my own abilities, immediately outdone by my own sonic boom. I used my last burst ability to deal massive damage to the adversary, elevating him helplessly into the air and allowing me to strike him as he was most vulnerable and incapacitated. He was an annoying opponent, but eventually I was able to overpower him and take him down. When he died, he dropped his giant plunger arm, and I claimed it as my prize. The list is complete. Time to report back. I quickly returned to the Titan cameraman and handed over everything I had collected. Thank you. One moment, please. The Titan cameraman began tinkering away until he revealed to me a diamond plunger. Whoa! Awesome! Thanks! Here, take this too. This map will take you to the next Skibbity Command. He has the remote to control the Titan speaker map, but he has the toughest phone you will have faced so far. I don't care if it's a challenge. I'm freeing the Titan speaker man! More power to you. You're a brave hero. Just then, the ground began to shake as we heard a bellowing roar reverberate through the area. Uh-oh, we got company! Before we had any time to repair, Mega Skibbityzilla appeared, and he looked like he was ready to tear me apart. On days 83 through 84, I was face to face with the Mecha Skibbityzilla. Well, 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 look what we have here. Do you really think your little rebellion of titans will be enough to stop me? With our armies united and the titan speaker man back on our side, we'll see who comes out on top. <laughs> How cute. You'll never defeat my next officer. How can you be so sure? I've defeated all of them up till now. Because I'm going to kill you right here before you ever get the chance. Skibbityzilla charged up an attack. I was defenseless. All I could do was brace for impact. But before the attack could land, the Titan cameraman intercepted the attack. Don't worry, I'll hold him off. You go save the TVs. Thanks for everything. And so I took to the skies to free the Titan speaker man and the TVs before it was too late. On days 85 through 86, I arrived at the location on the map and found the base where the TVs were being held prisoner. I entered the base, only to find that they were all standing around, silent and unguarded. Wait, why aren't they in cages? I guess freeing these guys will be easier than I thought. But something was wrong. They didn't exactly seem happy to see me. They mindlessly stared at me with their blank TV faces. They weren't in cages because they were being mind controlled. They came rushing towards me to attack. While I could easily overpower the TVs, I had to hold back because I didn't want to hurt them. I used my concussive face and my diamond plunger to keep the horde at bay. My laser and sonic boom would kill them immediately, so I couldn't use them. Please, you guys have to snap out of it. No matter what I said, I couldn't get them to stop. I tried to keep my distance, but the TV men even started jumping at me from above. Unable to fight back, I was overwhelmed by the TVs and lost consciousness. On days 87 and 88, I found myself in a dark void once again, back in my first form. Oh no, is this another nightmare? My suspicion was confirmed when suddenly the giant skibbity spider dropped down right in front of me. Ah, uh, not this guy again. That's right, it's me. <laughs> Fall to your knees. Never! The skibbity spider sent a wave of psychic energy at me, giving me a splitting headache. Ugh, I'll never kneel to you! Very well, if you won't succumb to this, I have other ways of making you kneel. The giant skibbity spider charged at me, trying to attack me again. But before he could reach me, the cinema man landed next to me and destroyed the spider skibbity. <gasps> Cinema Man, my hero. Don't let your evil thoughts consume you, Max. Their mind control will only get stronger. But I'm weak. You're dead because I couldn't overcome the mind control. You're the strongest Titan I know, Max. If anyone can do it, it's you. Keep fighting for our cause, and those smelly toilets are sure to lose. Ah. <sighs> 
Thanks, Cinema Man. On days 89 through 90, I woke up in a cage over a pit of lava. Ugh, my head. Where am I? Across from me was the Titan Speaker Man who was looking at me from the sidelines. Titan Speaker Man, free me quickly! I tried getting the Speaker Man's attention, but he didn't respond. He was still fully under skibbity mind control. Well, it was worth a try at least. Just then, I heard a laugh nearby and the modded skibbity toilet commander emerged. <laughs> Rumor has it you're after the Titan Speaker Man's remote. You'll never get your hands on it. I'm turning you to scrap. Over my dead body! Yeah, that's the idea. Using my sonic boom attack, I blasted the modded Skibbity away. Then, with the power of my diamond plunger, I was able to break out of the cage. I went for the modded Skibbity toilet while he was dazed, but before I could reach him, the Titan Speaker Man intercepted me. Speaker Man, please, don't! Kill him, Titan Speaker Man! On days 91 and 92, I was duking it out once again with the Titan Speaker Man. The two of us traded punches. Although the enemy's blows were powerful, my diamond plunger gave me the upper hand. I tried to fly away to escape him, but he followed, and a dogfight began. Bursts of lasers and sonic booms cascaded through the air as we exchanged our abilities. I was able to hold my own against him now thanks to the diamond plunger, but I needed to target the modded skibbity toilet. I tried to go for him, but the Titan Speaker Man kept intercepting me. As my health decreased, I retreated, seeking refuge on top of the cage. But the Titan Speaker Man was right on my tail. A game of King of the Hill ensued as we both attempted to knock the other off of the cage. Unleashing my lasers once again, the enemy was sent recoiling back falling down into the lava below. I thought I had gained the advantage, but even the magma couldn't defeat him. The adversary flew back up to my position and did the same to me. The lava was boiling hot, burning through my heart, but my fighting spirit was stronger. As my foe came down to try and finish the job, I quickly readied my diamond plunger and used it to knock him backwards into the cage. Get out of my way! Landing a heavy blow on the Titan Speaker Man, I was able to temporarily stun him while I made a run for the modded skibbity. Using my diamond plunger, I launched at the modded skibbity, taking it by surprise. The tenacious toilet tried to fight back with his saw and his rocket, but I was much stronger than him. I managed to defeat him, and as he died, the modded skibbity dropped his remote. I picked it up off the ground. This had better work. As the Titan Speaker Man lunged at me, eager to deliver the final blow, I pointed the remote at him. On days 93 and 94, I used the mind control remote and stopped the Titan Speaker Man right in his tracks. Bucks? You're back! I quickly filled him in on everything that had happened. But before I could finish, the place was suddenly swarmed by a ton of Skibbityzilla tanks. Releasing a barrage of their heavyweight ammunition, the tanks opened fire on the two of us. Their numbers and artillery were overwhelming us on the ground, so we took to the skies and began returning fire down onto the enemies. We unleashed our sonic booms and laser blasts from above, but the foes were undeterred, still managing to swarm us. The Titan Speaker Man and I had no choice but to retreat up the volcano in an attempt to gain the upper hand. We were blasting through Skibbityzilla tanks left and right, but they just kept coming. I don't know how much longer we can keep this up. I think I might have a solution. Man, assemble! He blasted a booming song from his speakers, and pretty soon all of the Speakerman forces returned. They swarmed over the Skibbity tanks, and together they were able to hold off the forces. You're all alive! That's right. We've just been waiting for the right time to strike. Hold these guys off. I'll go save the TVs. On days 95 and 96, I returned to where the TVs had attacked me. They rushed at me, but instead of fighting them, I decided to try something different this time. I used the TV remote for the Titan Speaker Man on the TVs as they charged, and it broke them free from their mind control. Thank you, Max. We are at your service. Nice! With these guys back in our team, I finally have enough forces to take on the Mega Skibbity Zilla! Suddenly, I felt a familiar sensation and realized I couldn't move my body anymore. Oh no! I forgot about my own chip! I tried to use the remote on myself before it was too late, but the buttons didn't do anything. I must have been programmed to a different controller. Unable to stop myself, I felt my body move by itself. Suddenly, I let loose with my attacks, blasting my own men! Ah, sir! What are you doing? Stop! I can't stop myself! I'm sorry, everyone! Run! As if this wasn't bad enough already, suddenly the Mega Skibbity Zilla showed up. This isn't good! On days 97 and 98, I was face to face with the Mega Skibbity Zilla. How does it feel to be so powerless, Speaker Man? With your controller in my hand, I can make you do whatever I want. 
Wait, you have my controller? Let me go! Why would I ever do that? You already bravely rescued our other Titan speaker man. So, we need a replacement. I'll never work for you. I don't think you would have much of a choice. <laughs> Stop right there! The Titan cameraman had arrived, deploying a massive hole in the facility wall. With him, he had brought our entire army. TVs, cameras, and speakers alike all banded together and stormed the Mecha Skibbity Zilla. On day 99, my valiant army collided with the Mecha Skibbity Zilla. It was a massive all out war. Despite our numbers, our army was getting leveled by the Skibbity Zilla's powerful beam. Come, my men! Fight for me! On his command, the area flooded with the tank Zilla reinforcements. An all-out war broke out between the two forces. I could do nothing but watch, the mind control freezing me in place. Fortunately, under the Titan cameraman's leadership, we were starting to get the upper hand. Suddenly, Skibbity Zilla used his remote to turn me on my allies, before flying away to watch the carnage. No matter how hard I attempted to regain control, my actions were no longer my own, as I was forced to massacre my own men. I unleashed a barrage of lasers raining down onto my former allies. Seemingly satisfied with the destruction of what were once my forces, my chip commanded me to turn my attention to the Titan cameraman. I soared towards him, but the force of his lasers was too great for me to penetrate. As I recoiled back from his blast, the Titan cameraman seized the opportunity to retreat, flying up into the air and leaving me to focus my attack on my army once more. The tides were no longer in our favor. Just when I thought this might be the end, the Titan cameraman landed a massive blow on Mecha Skibbity Zilla, causing him to drop the remote he was using to control me. Uh, wait. Before the beast could react, the Titan cameraman blasted the remote with lasers, destroying it once and for all. No. Thank you, everyone. Great work. Now, time to end this. With my free will restored, I charged at the massive beast, and the final battle had begun. On day 100, I was finally fighting a fair battle against the Mecha Skibbity Zilla. We flew high into the sky, landing on the massive building at the center of the city. My men were tied up fighting the tanks, so I didn't have any backup. This was a one on one fight between me and the Skibbity Zilla. There wasn't any turning back now. Determined to end this once and for all, I gave it my all. In Enraged by the acts the Skibbity Zilla made me commit on my own men, I harnessed all of my anger into my attack. I charged at him with my plunger swinging, landing blow after blow onto the enemy. He retaliated with a close range attack, using his own massive plunger. I put some distance between us and bombarded the gargantuan foe with the full extent of my arsenal. Even though I was at my strongest, the Skibbity still proved to be a more than formidable adversary, brushing off even my most powerful blows. As I unleashed my lasers, he did the same in turn, dealing massive damage. The enemy was proving to be extremely resilient, so I took the skies once more flying circles around the foe. I moved in close to utilize hit and run tactics, dealing quick damage before whizzing away once more. However, the adversary was just as quick, firing bursts of blue flame at me, engulfing me in its colorful embers. He also unveiled a razor wind ability, sending gusts of air slicing through my exterior with ease. Nevertheless, I endured and continued my assault while dodging his abilities as best I could. After wearing him down a substantial amount, I harnessed all of my remaining strength and unleashed my final Final burst power, finally doing some damage. But still, the Skibbity Zilla refused to go down. This was the toughest opponent that I've faced so far. It felt like we were trading blow for blow, totally evenly matched. I was desperate to try to get the upper hand. When I remembered all the lives that were lost during this war, it ignited a fire deep within me, and I realized there wasn't any way I could let him win. Fueled by this, I unleashed one final attack, determined to make sure the Mecha Skibbity Zilla paid for all of its destruction. But my problems weren't over yet. In a turn of fate, I once again felt my mind drift into a whole new form. This time, a terrible thought entered my mind. What if I had been fighting on the wrong side the whole time? On day one, I spawned in a Skibbity Toilet during an all-out war. There was a massive battle unfolding between Toilets and the cameramen. I joined my allies in battle and we fought for our lives. There was just one problem. How do I win? I'm just a Toilet! I stormed through the battlefield as my friends were being flushed left and right by the cameramen's forces. They retaliated with attacks of their own, singing a song that empowered our forces. Lasers and gunfire flew wildly around me as the Skibbity Toilet Army rejoiced. I tried to run away, but suddenly a giant Titan cameraman landed in front of me. Ah! He readied his laser, preparing to eliminate every toilet in his path until a giant Skibbity Toilet intercepted the attack. Are you okay? 
I don't have much time, Max. Follow your destiny and become the strongest skibbity toilet. I looked up and saw the Titan cameraman charging another attack. They obliterated the larger toilet with one final blow. All of the cameramen looked towards me and I ran for my life. On day two, I was being pursued by the cameraman forces. I tried to shake them off my tail, but every corner I turned, they seemed to be waiting. I made one wrong move and found myself cornered. I'm trapped! Suddenly, a mysterious melody played in my head. I finally realized the power that was in me all along. I took a deep breath and unleashed my power. The power of the music gave me strength and I jumped into battle with the cameraman goons. I used the strength of the skibbity melody to smash my head into each of the goons one by one. They outnumbered me, but the war was only just beginning. I had to hang on for the battles to come. As their forces pummeled into me with their fists, I held strong and continued fighting with all of my might. I didn't think I could hold up much longer, but I sang until my lungs hurt. With the power of the skibbity song, I managed to take out the lesser cameraman. But it wasn't long before a stronger reinforcement arrived. The large cameraman in a tank fired rockets at me and I fled for my life. I ran and took cover in a nearby building, but to my horror, I was met with even more goons. I had walked right into a cameraman base. On day three, alarms blared throughout the cameraman base and I searched for a place to take cover. As a skibbity toilet, I stood out like crazy, but I had an idea. I found a restroom and camouflaged myself with the other toilets. Okay, Max, stay still. I heard the footsteps of one of the cameramen entering the room. They entered my stall, but I stayed completely still, not wanting to give away my position. They didn't seem to notice me, but as they came closer to me, I came to a horrible realization. Nope! I popped my head out and belted the skibbity toilet song. Thanks to my power, the cameraman went down. Unfortunately for me, my song attracted the attention of more men. There's the skibbity toilet! Eliminate him! They attacked and I was forced to flee. I was running out of places to run when I spotted a nearby vent. I gotta try! I slid into the vent as the army of cameramen tried to nab me, escaping them by a hair. As I traversed through the vent, I ran into a miniature cameraman standing in front of me. Oh no! I have nowhere to run! On days 4 through 7, I was trapped in a vent with a cameraman. Please don't hurt me! I'll do whatever you want! Huh? You're not an enemy? Huh, in that case, how about you become my ally? Sure, my name is Cammy. I asked Cammy how to get out of here, but he told me it was a difficult task. Not only was the Titan cameraman hunting me, but all of the cameramen shared the same video feed. If you're spotted by one, then all of them might be able to see you. Wait, but aren't you a camera- Hey, who's in there? Just then, a cameraman spotted us, revealing our whereabouts to the Titan cameraman. Get them. Follow me, I know a shortcut. I followed Cammy through the vents of the facility until finally we managed to come out the other side. Unfortunately for us, there was another guard waiting. Suspect spotted. Cammy and I ran and ran until there was a distance between us and the facility. I knew that the cameraman could attack at any moment, so I decided to get to work on a base. I used blocks of iron to get to work on building a giant toilet. I wanted to strike fear into the hearts of anyone who dared to approach it. I bet I'll get as big as this one day. Once I finished the main structure, I got to work on on building an underground labyrinth of pipes. Within the plumbing system, we built a room for me as well as Cammy to call our own. As I was wrapping up the build, I spotted the Titan cameraman walking in the distance. I quickly took cover as he scanned the area for me and Cammy. Luckily, my base did just the trick and he flew away. If I'm gonna survive this war, I'm gonna need some better weapons. There's a secret camera facility just north of here full of weaponry, but it's crazy dangerous. I have to give it a shot. On days eight through 10, I arrived at the weapons base to find it crawling with cameramen. I knew I couldn't get caught. Otherwise, it was definitely game over for me. I stealthed through the facility when suddenly someone came walking in my direction. I quickly took cover, narrowly avoiding their sights. They're around every corner. I entered a room and discovered that I was in a testing facility. Skibbity toilets were trapped in cages and the cameramen were testing different weapons on them. This is horrible. Who said that? One of the guards inside had spotted me. Guards, get that toilet. Guards began to flood the room and I was completely defenseless. I looked around desperately and to my surprise, spotted a plunger on the ground. I rushed to it and snatched it before anyone else could. Have a taste of this. I used the plunger as my sword and swiped down cameraman after cameraman. 
Turns out this weapon wasn't only effective on skibbity toilets. The cameramen fired back with their guns, dealing loads of damage from each bullet that managed to hit. Even though I was only armed with a plunger, I had a fight with all of my might. I ran in before they could react and snuck in hit after hit with my plunger sword. It was three against one and things were looking close. With the power of my skibbity toilet song and plunger combined, I stood a chance until more cameramen showed up. I continued to fight with all of my might, but there were too many guards. I got hit with a heavy blow, leaving me with only half a heart. Is this the end? On days 11 through 14, the cameramen surrounded me ready to deal the final blow until an army of skibbity toilets flooded in from above. Backup had arrived right on time. Skibbity toilets and cameramen collided in a fiery battle. The helicopter toilets swarmed the cameramen from above, tearing into them with their helicopter blades. All the while, the cameramen tried to retaliate with gunfire. It looked like it could be one-sided, but the power of the skibbity toilet song was stronger than they had anticipated. The skibbity toilets kept up a good fight, keeping the cameramen on their toes every step of the battle. While their forces were distracted, I moved deeper into the facility in search of anything to help take out the cameramen goons. Just then, I stumbled upon a strange room. At the center was a red gem. What's that? Before I could get a closer look, the Titan cameraman burst through the wall. How'd you? The Titan cameraman prepared to fire his laser onto me. I couldn't let myself get killed, so I quickly went for the mysterious gem. When I grabbed it, a strange sensation came over me. My porcelain body grew larger, and I gained five additional hearts. I had transformed into a stronger skibbity toilet. You may have gotten stronger, but your end is now. I ran out into an open area outside the facility and the Titan followed close behind. I was surely doomed with the Titan readying his weapons until suddenly lasers shot out of my eyes. This new power was just what I needed to buy more time. I fought off the Titan as I waited for help to arrive, but he was incredibly powerful. He shot lasers from his chest that dealt massive damage and set the grass around me ablaze. The longer the battle raged on, the more the field was consumed by flames. Luckily, I had water close by which I used any time I was set on fire. All the while, I shot back at the Titan with my laser eyes. Although they were powerful, they weren't enough to pierce through his riot shield. I felt like they did almost nothing to him. I wasn't going to hold out much longer, but the song of my people filled the area as more toilets ran to my side. Reinforcements are here! Max, report to me at once. I spotted my commander calling out for me. I quickly rushed to his side while my allies tried to keep the Titan at bay. On days 15 through 17, I spoke with the commander toilet as my allies fought valiantly to hold off our enemy. He told me that the cameramen had been capturing our brethren and using them as test subjects for weapons. If you can save them, you can find more upgrades to become an even stronger skibidi toilet. Who knows what they're doing to our boys over there? I'll do everything I can to help. Just then, one of our allies ran next to me. Titan is too powerful! We can't win! The Titan's powerful laser vaporized him right before our very eyes. Retreat! We can't leave without saving everyone! I ignored the commander's orders and rushed back into the building. Countless toilets had fallen to the Titan's might, but I wasn't going to let my friends die. I activated my laser eyes and quickly melted through all the cages. Let's get out of here, guys! The Titan cameraman locked his sights on me and we all fled the facility. On days 18 through 21, I fled the facility with my skibbity brethren as the Titan cameraman followed close behind. Luckily, I knew just the place to take cover. We hurried back to my base and hid inside. The Titan cameraman scanned the area, but he had lost his sights on us. You're never safe. I will personally find and dismantle every last one of you. The Titan flew away on his jetpack and all of us came out from hiding. The commander toilet was furious for my reckless actions, but thanked me for saving our people. Just then, Cammy ran out to greet me. Max, I'm so glad you're okay. A cameraman. Everyone, eliminate the threat. The commander mistook Cammy as an enemy and began to fire his weapons at him. The little guy wasn't strong enough to defend himself, so I quickly broke the two up. He's on our side. Don't worry. No camera is an ally of us. He's giving away our location. Cammy would never do that. Suddenly, a horde of cameramen ambushed us. They had somehow found our location. The cameramen all ran into the fray, taking on both me and the other toilets. They were armed with nothing but their fists, but we weren't ready for the surprise attack. I tried to fight them off, with my powers as well as my skibbity song, but there were too many. How did you find us? That little camera trader is still hooked up to our video feeds. We know your every move. I fought and pleaded for help, but the commander gathered our forces and fled to save his own hide. This is what happens when you trust a camera. I couldn't defeat their crushing numbers. 
everything went black. On days 22 through 25, I woke up inside of a testing room. All around me were different terrifying weapons made by the camera forces. I can't believe the commander was right. One of the cameraman scientists entered the room with some sort of gadget in hand. This weapon is going to be promising. Goodbye, toilet. I braced myself for the worst as the scientist aimed his weapon onto me. But just as I thought it was over, Cammy jumped out of nowhere. Leave him alone. He punched into the scientist and knocked him down momentarily. While the villain was immobile, Cammy broke me free of my constraints. I'm sorry, Max. I forgot that I was still on the main feed. Ugh, I need backup, quick. We couldn't stick around here anymore. I blasted the scientist with my laser eye powers and the two of us took off running. On days 26 through 28, Cammy and I ran through the facility in search of an escape route. But around every corner were cameraman forces waiting. Cammy's video feed was giving our location away. We need to get you off that feed. I have an idea. Follow me. I followed Cammy into a control room where computers were lined up all along the walls. The cameramen were following close behind, so we had to act fast. I tried to hack into the system, but I didn't know what I was doing. We were running out of time. I have to try something else. Suddenly, I had a great idea. I focused on the power of the music and sang out the Skibbity Toilet song. The computers began to malfunction and bursted into flames. That should do it. My feet is no longer connected. The cameraman caught up to us, but they were too late. Our mission was a success. I readied myself for battle and fought off the swarm. The cameramen fired their guns into us and I retaliated with my laser eyes. It was me versus an entire army, and while I was strong, their weapons dealt a lot of damage. I tried to evade their attacks while retaliating with ones of my own. We were neck and neck, but the cameramen were still too strong for me. Suddenly, Cammy began to fire off electricity onto the cameramen, short-circuiting their systems. Freeing you from their video feed must have given you powers. Go, reinforcements. The room started shaking with booming footsteps, and a Titan speaker man started to approach us. What's that? I couldn't fight back. The speaker readied his arm cannon and fired at us, sending us flying through the wall and into the sky. On days 29 through 32, I was high in the sky, plummeting towards my doom. It looked like this was the end, but then I realized I'm a toilet. I used my toilet water to get a bucket of water and clutched before I could hit the ground. Cammy and I were separated. I hope he's okay. I looked around my surroundings and realized I was in a different testing site. There, more skibbity toilets were trapped in cages, and the next upgrade was waiting at the center surrounded by lava. How am I gonna get to that thing? I thought about my next move until the area was suddenly swarmed with speakerman enemies. Wait! Am I fighting speakers and cameras now? The horde rushed at me and I began to fight them off with my powerful song. The speakers were quick on their feet and used loud sonic boom attacks that made my ears ring. They carried large rifles and surrounded me, piercing my toilet body with deadly artillery. I fought back with my laser powers, but the speakerman brushed it off and continued firing and blasting huge sound waves in my direction. The onslaught was tough, but I couldn't give up now. My ears rang from the sound of their subwoofers, causing severe damage to my health. Despite my efforts, the speaker men were unlike anything I had ever faced before. They were much stronger than the cameramen. I was left with only half a heart. I had to do something. Otherwise, this was the end of the line. I have to get rid of this lava. Wait a sec. I used my toilet water once again to turn the lava into obsidian and successfully grabbed the upgrade. Just then, my body grew even more powerful. I gained five more hearts and a brand new flush ability. Sweet! I jumped back into the fray and tested out my new flush power. I was about to turn myself into a powerful tornado that sent the speakermen flying away. They smashed into the walls, taking massive damage. Although they tried to pierce my ears with their sonic boom powers, I kept up my attacks. The power of my flush ability combined with my skibbity toilet song and lasers would prove to be too strong. Soon, one after the other fell to my might. Take that! As the dust settled, I heard the sound of heavy footsteps behind me. I turned around and discovered a large speakerman had entered the area. You may have defeated my men, but that little flush power isn't enough to stop me. The large speakerman attacked, and I prepared for battle. On days 33 through 35, the large speakerman and I were fighting it out. I tried to get in close to my plunger, but he kept blasting me back with sonic booms. The shrieking sounds dealt heavy damage, but I retaliated with deadly attacks of my own. I continued to shoot devastating lasers from my eyes, catching my foe on fire. He resisted as I continued my flurry of attacks. 
I used my new tornado flush ability to lift the large speaker man off his feet, but it was no use. The speaker headed man continued to use his powerful sound waves to injure me even further. Barely surviving my last fight, I didn't think I could last much longer. I was fighting a losing battle, but I couldn't leave my allies to die. Suddenly, Cammy ran out of nowhere. I'll free everyone, just buy me some time. Cammy ran from cage to cage, freeing each toilet one by one. All the while, I was holding off the large speaker man with everything I had. I wasn't gonna last much longer, but luckily, Cammy managed to free everyone. The toilets are free! It's time to fight back! All of my skibbity toilet allies rushed to my side and helped me fight off the large speaker man. The toilets darted in and immediately went for the speaker man's legs, smacking him off balance with their powerful combined force. I continued shooting my lasers from a distance while I healed, while Cammy electrified the speaker man from afar. Our teamwork was paying off, and it was clear the speaker man was getting overwhelmed by our numbers, but only barely. My allies took some heavy hits, and the cracks in their porcelain started to show, but they never backed down. Eventually, we were able to throw the speaker man completely off balance and push him backwards, shoving him into the molten lava. The battle was fierce, but together, we managed to defeat the powerful foe. It took a whole army to take out one of those guys. Suddenly, more large speaker men entered the area ready to take us on. I knew even as an army, we didn't stand a chance. There were too many. Run! On days 36 through 39, I returned to the base with my saved allies. Luckily, we managed to get the speakers off of our tail. Thank you for saving us. Cammy seems cool too. Mind if we join your cause? Sure! The more the merrier! I decided to take a moment to work on my base a bit more. I started by adding a living quarters for all of my new Skibbity Toilet allies. I made sure that they had comfy beds and a jukebox that they could listen to the Skibbity song with. Afterwards, I built a garden so that I had plenty of food to feed all of my new residents. As I finished up my expansion, I heard a familiar voice. Help! I looked in the distance and saw the Titan Speaker Man and his army of spider speakers chasing the Commander Toilet. Everyone, defend the Commander! We all got into our battle stations and prepared to take on the enemy. My allies and I rushed through the tree line and took the speaker spiders head on. Our enemies were tough, but our willpower was strong, even in the face of the looming Titan Speaker Man. The Commander Toilet did his best to run crowd control with his rockets as I used my laser eyes to wipe out more and more of the spiders. The Titan shot down at us from above, and my brothers did their best to put their heads together and see this battle through to the end. The spiders were scuttled across the burning battlefield and began to unleash their super abilities. The tide was turning, and unfortunately, not in our favor. Despite our efforts, one after the other toilet fell to the might of the speakers. At this rate, the battle would soon be over. Max, I'll take care of things here. You must find the spider toilet leader. He's our last hope. I didn't want to leave everyone, but I knew someone had to get help. I agreed and set off in search of the spider skibbity toilets. On days 40 through 43, I was searching for the spider skibbity toilets. I felt like I had looked everywhere until I arrived at a frozen ship. Could they be here? Just then, a massive spider speaker jumped out of nowhere. I had been followed. I set my sights on the foe and fought them off with my skibbity song. The giant spider speaker roared violently, and with every bellow, a sonic blast came from his face. Spindly legs were super creepy, but I wasn't about to let the ick factor keep me from my goal. I had places to be, and this behemoth was in my way. I used my flush ability to send my foe flying through the icy arena, and to my surprise, it battered against the arctic walls, dealing massive of damage. I was able to take them down, but smaller ones kept coming. I was getting overwhelmed. Just then, a swarm of skibbity spiders all crawled to my aid. One by one, my new allies took my creepy foes down. It wasn't long before all the speakers were destroyed. Thank you for your help. Could I speak to your leader? Any skibbity toilet is an ally of ours. The spider took me to their leader located in the massive shipwreck. There, I explained the attack on my base and how I needed help taking down a titan. We have been working on a powerful ability that could defeat a titan, but you must be trained in order to wield it. I'm willing to do anything! Very well. Your training begins now. On days 44 through 46, I began my training with the spider toilet leader. My first test was to improve my climbing skills to match that of a spider. I scaled up a snowy wall to reach the top of a massive mountain peak. With nothing but my teeth to hold my weight, it was challenging, but I managed to complete it. Next, I improved my balance skills by standing on a thin beam across the crevice for multiple days. I nearly fell a few times, but ended up completing the task. Finally, the spider leader showed me how to operate new tech and even 
craft some of my own. I was now more versed in using firearms. Excellent work, Max. I think it's time for your final test. The skibbity spider took me to an obstacle course and tossed over a strange broken upgrade. He told me that I needed to complete the course in order to obtain the missing piece from the upgrade. I agreed to their mission and set off to complete my test. I was forced to use both the climbing and balancing abilities I had trained in order to obtain the part. But after a lot of determination, I managed to complete the obstacle course and get the piece I needed. Now it's time to repair this thing. I put my new technological knowledge to use and repaired the upgrade all by myself. I had successfully completed my training. Great work, Max. Now hold on to that upgrade and use it once you get home. You will know what to do at that moment. Thank you for everything. Time to take back my home. I returned back to the base to find it crawling with speaker men. The Titan and his goons were destroying everything I had worked on. Looks like it's time to use this thing. I used my new upgrade and my body transformed. My porcelain shell became powerful armor and I sprouted four legs. I was now a spider skibbity toilet with five more hearts and a hacking device. What does this do? I tried out my new gadget on one of the speakers only to realize that I was now able to control them. Whoa, this is sick. In my new speaker man body, I started taking out the other goons hit by hit. None of them realized I wasn't on their side anymore. So I was able to get quick and easy attacks on the enemy. Things were looking better, but even with the element of surprise, there were two many of them. I need to take them out faster. I released control of the speaker man and set my sights on the Titan. It was the only way to take them out all at once. I aimed my device and tried to take over his body only to be met with an error. Error. Passcode required to pass security. How do I get the passcode? I was running out of options and the speaker man spotted me and began to close in. Let's try this instead. On days 51 through 54, I unleashed my last ditch effort. I used my hacking device to try and control multiple speaker men at once. Just before they were about to reach me, all of the speakers stopped in their tracks. My device had worked. Time for plan B. Armed with my new forces, I charged with the speaker man army right back at the Titan himself. He was forced to flee from his own men. Heed my words, skibbity toilet. I'll make you pay for what you did to my men. Once the Titan was gone, the Commander Toilet approached me. Thank you for helping me back there. I wanted to say sorry for judging you and your camera friend before. You saved a lot of lives. Don't worry about it. Let's work together to win this war. Now that my base was reclaimed, I decided it was time for another expansion. I started by adding a room for the Commander Toilet. Now that we had a truce, he was more than welcome to stay at the base. Next, I made an area for all of the mind-controlled speakers to stay in. They were working for me now, so I figured I'd make them a comfy spot to call their own. Finally, I built a laboratory for us to experiment and create weaponry for our army. The facility was sprawling, and I knew one day it would be filled with impressive tech. With that, my expansion was complete. Just then, Cammy ran up to me with news. I know how to get that passcode you need to take control of the Titan. Take this map. So that passcode is here? Then there's no time to waste. On days 55 through 57, I followed the map until I arrived at a strange green pipe sticking out of the ground. Where does this go? Before I could look, an Italian plumber hopped out of it. Mamma mia, a man has his head stuck in the toilet. Don't worry, I'm a plumber. He took out his plunger and chased me around, trying to free me from the toilet. Little did he know that it was my body. Leave me alone! I just look like this! I hopped into the green pipe and the man followed after me. When I landed on the other side, I was in the middle of a video game level. I have to platform through this! I jumped from platform to platform as the Italian man chased me through the obstacle course. The game level took all kinds of twists and turns. I found myself jumping through pipes and over bridges. I even jumped through the clouds in the sky, but all the while the plumber chased close behind me. I couldn't let him catch up, or else I'd be done for. I kept jumping with all of my might until I was nearing the finish line. Finally, I made it to the end, completing the level. My feet was impressive enough that the man stopped trying to attack me. Oh dear, sorry, I wasn't listening. Take this as an apology. The man handed me the passcode I needed to hack into the Titan Speaker Man. I better get back home and put this to use. On days 58 through 61, I returned to the green pipe to find the Titan Speaker Man waiting for me with a number of large speaker men to back him up. At last I've found you. This time, you won't be so lucky. The Titan readied his weapons, but little did he know I had a secret weapon now. I hacked into him once again and used the passcode to override his security. My vision changed, and I now had full control over the Titan Speaker Man. Time for some fun! I used my new ally to blast a sonic boom attack into the speaker men goons. 
They all took loads of damage in a single area. The might of a titan was incredible. I tried out my arm cannon, blasting the ground to smithereens and leaving a trail of flames in my way. The large speaker men were tough foes for me before, but now with the help of the titan, I was taking them out with no problem. Their attacks couldn't penetrate my incredible armor. I wiped the floor with goon after goon. The speaker men were completely powerless to the strength of the titan. I'm unstoppable! Just then, the titan cameraman flew down from the sky ready to ruin my fun. This ends now, skibbity torment. I readied myself for battle as the titan cameraman rushed towards me. It was Titan v Titan, and the cameraman was my mightiest foe yet. But thanks to my control over the speaker Titan, we were now on an even playing field. The cameraman fired his powerful laser at me, scorching the landscape around us in flames. It wasn't long until the entire battlefield was completely set on fire. Luckily, as the speaker man Titan, I had resilient armor that shielded me from the flames. I retaliated with my own missile blast, but the cameraman would take to the sky to evade my attacks. To bring him back to my level, I fired my sonic boom to blast him from the sky. He was now forced to fight me head on and the two of us unloaded our weaponry onto each other. It was anyone's game and neither side was giving in. The cameraman was on his last legs and unleashed his most powerful attack yet. He fired a massive laser from his chest at me. It was insanely strong and dealt loads of damage, but I held on. He continued to fire lasers from his chest, but they were taking a toll. Now is my chance. This fight was my toughest so far, but with one final barrage of missiles, I took down the Titan cameraman with only a few hearts remaining. I'm the mightiest Titan! Are you sure about that? Before I could celebrate, new reinforcements had arrived. A Titan TV appeared before me. I'll take you down too! I clashed with the TV Titan, but was immediately met with his crushing power. He was stronger than 10 Titan cameramen combined. The TV would smash his fist into me for loads of damage. The claws on his back sliced through my armor like butter. I was completely defenseless. I tried to retaliate with my missiles and sonic boom attack, but it seemed to have no effect on him. He shined a red light from his TV screen that powered him up even more. I tried my best to fight him off, but the Titan speaker man was badly damaged from the battle with the camera. I was beginning to lose. I fought valiantly, but the Titan speaker man was no match for the TV Titan's strength. Before he could land the final blow, I retreated with my damaged Titan. You are no match for me. This war belongs to the TVs now. On days 62 through 64, I took the Titan Speaker Man into my lab to try and see if we could fix up the damages from battle. I can fix them, but I need you to find some parts for me. I agreed to scavenge for everything we would need and set off in search of them. I figured a good place to start would be in a parking lot, so I went by car to car to see what I could find. Luckily enough, I found two out of the three parts in the abandoned automobiles. Where's that last one? I kept looking, and instead of finding the third part, I spotted a cameraman on the ground. Is he dead? I leaned in closer, when out of nowhere, a different cameraman jumped me. Your feed was still live, fool. I've got you now. I jumped into the battle and fought off the goon. I had to defeat him quickly if I didn't want more cameramen showing up. I used my laser eyes and flush ability to make quick work of him. Upon his death, he dropped the final part. I should never let my guard down. That was close. With the three parts in hand, I returned to Cammy so he could get to work. After handing off the pieces, the commander toilet had something important he wanted to tell me. I found another base with more captives. Do you think you could retrieve them? For sure. The commander gave me the coordinates and I set off on my next rescue mission. Little did I know, this would be my most difficult one yet. On days 65 through 68, I arrived at the super secret facility and began to scout it out. The place was crawling with TV men. I had never seen so many in one spot. What's with these guys? First cameras, then speakers, now TVs? They look tough. I knew getting spotted was a death sentence, so I took extra care stealthing around the facility. Finally, I found the room that held my brethren in cages. There, a large TV man was discussing his plans with his underlings. How did the subject react to our newest weapon? Unfortunately, it wasn't functional. Unacceptable. Those toilets defeated the other two Titans. We have to eliminate them at all costs. Y yes sir. We're not scared of you. Max will be here to save us soon. Silence! The large TV man screens flashed bright white and the skibbity toilet that spoke out died. No! I couldn't watch as the TV man killed my allies. I jumped out and revealed myself to the enemy. Leave them alone! Well, would you look at that? Are you the Max I've heard so much about? That's right! I won't stand for your evil action any longer! 
I've heard an awful lot about you and how you defeated the Titan Cameraman and took control of the Titan Speaker Man. I'll just have to stop your little rebellion right here. The large TV man charged at me and I prepared for battle. The TV shined his bright screens white, sending rays of electricity at me for massive damage. I didn't want any of the toilets to get hurt, so I lured the TV outside to have more room to fight. The two of us gave it everything we had. I zapped my enemy with my laser eyes and slashed him with my plunger. However, it seemed like no matter what I did, the TV kept attacking. He used his multiple screens to shine white light into my eyes, temporarily blinding me. While I was stunned, he'd zap me with his electric powers. I was falling victim to his combo of attacks, so I tried to use my flush ability. To my luck, it deflected his projectiles, giving me a chance to get in close. I fought with all of my might, but it seemed like no matter how much damage I dealt, the TV wouldn't budge. The large TV man was incredibly powerful. I was losing this fight, but I didn't want to leave my men behind. I kept fighting until I only had half a heart remaining. I could hear the trapped toilets begging me to retreat, and even if I didn't want to admit it, they were right. I had to find backup. With a heavy heart, I tried to escape. Oh no you don't. The TV man shined his white screens at me. I was blinded. Everything went black. On days 73 through 75, I woke up in a cage inside of a TV facility. I looked up to find the large TV man looming over me. I'll go down in history as the one who won the war for the TVs. It's over for you. I felt an overwhelming sense of guilt. I failed my mission, and now both me and my men would die. As I was about to accept my fate, the commander's skibbity toilet blasted through the wall of the facility. Don't give up. I'm here to help. He charged in and set his sights on the large TV man. The two of them began to fight it out in an incredible battle. I wanted to help him, but my cage was still locked. The commander fired at the TV man with everything he had, sending blast after blast erupting down onto the battlefield. Not one to be bested, his screen-headed adversary fired back with attacks of his own. The TV man projected a flurry of electric sparks that cascaded around the arena. He also unleashed a beam of stars, confusing and blinding the commander. The commander recoiled, jostling himself left and right until finally the effect subsided and the battle continued. The longer the fight went on, the closer the commander got to death. I wasn't sure if he was gonna make it. Max, save the others and take this. Cammy will know what to do with it. The commander blasted open my cell and tossed over an upgrade data card and I did as I was told. I freed the other toilets, but once I finished, it was too late. The commander was hit with one final blow, killing him once and for all. No! I couldn't let him die in vain. I took our forces and rushed back to the safety of the base. On days 76 through 79, I returned to my base with a heavy heart. We had saved our allies, but at the cost of the commander's life. I'll make the TVs pay for this. Everyone was a bit shaken up, so I decided to expand the base some more to calm down. I started by adding monumental pieces of the toilet base in honor of the commander's sacrifice, complete with armored plating and giant missiles. Next, I added an animal pen for some cows and pigs for any extra food that is needed for my toilet people. After my expansion was completed, I checked in on Cammy to ask him about the upgrade data card the commander had given me. This is extremely rare. I could use this to make you a powerful upgrade, but it will take me a couple of weeks. I don't mind waiting. Please use it to make the upgrade. How's the Titan holding up? He's nearly done, but he's missing a radioactive core to use as an energy source. I think you could find one in the sewers. Then I know what I'm looking for next. On days 80 through 83, I headed to the sewers in search of the radioactive core needed for the Titan. As I looked, I spotted a glowing orb in the distance. That must be it! I rushed to grab it, but I was suddenly ambushed by two Ninja Turtles. Back off! That core is mine! Then it looks like I'll have to fight you guys for it! The three of us clashed to see who would win the core prize. I tried to utilize my headbutt and plunger attacks, but it was no use. The turtles were agile, rolling out of the way of my close range abilities. I had no choice but to switch to my long range attacks. As the turtles attempted to dodge my blows from a distance, I emitted a beam of red light from my eyes, firing a massive laser beam at them. Not allowing them even a moment of respite to gain the upper hand, I shifted to my whirlwind flush attack. An aerial cyclone flew forward towards the turtles, dealing tons of damage and temporarily incapacitating them as they got trapped in the circling wind. The battle was tough, but I bested the reptiles in combat. You have defeated me. Very well, you may take the core. I took my prize and headed back to the base with a radioactive core. When Cammy got it, he immediately started tinkering with the Titan. And done. The repair is complete. Time to avenge the captain. On days 84 through 86, armed with the Titan Speaker Man, I returned to the large TV's facility. 
The TV emerged from the hole the commander had blasted and faced me. You think your little toy is enough to stop me? Don't underestimate me. You killed my commander and friend. I'll make you pay for this. We'll see about that. I'll avenge the fallen Titan cameraman. The two of us clashed in a battle for revenge. Aiming up at me, the TV man hit me with all the power he could muster. Sparks flickered all around me but its electric jolt wasn't strong enough to stop me. Even a lightning bolt which came down from the sky and struck me wasn't enough to deter me. He switched his confused ray attack, firing a ray of stars towards me. Although I was temporarily discombobulated, I shook off the confusion quickly and fired back with an attack of my own. Using my massive blasters on my hands, I shot round after round down onto the TV man, igniting both him and the ground, cloaking the battlefield in a layer of flames. The fact that the TV man was putting up a fight against a titan showed his strength. We went back and forth with each other, but I was beginning to get an edge. Unfortunately, he had other plans. The TV man stopped attacking the Titan and noticed my toilet body nearby and ran for that instead. Oh no you don't! I returned to my original body and landed the surprise attack, taking the large TV man down once and for all. I did it! Upon his death, he dropped another upgrade which I quickly grabbed for myself. I felt a new power surge through my body, and I gained 5 hearts as well as a new TV static ability. I keep getting stronger! Suddenly, the ground began to tremble. I looked behind me and to my horror discovered the Titan TV looming over me. On days 87 through 89, I was face to face with the TV Titan. You may have defeated one of my head officers, but you will never get close to my power. I'm getting stronger by the day. I'm gonna catch up to you in no time. Skibbity toilets always have such big mouths. I'll put you in your place. I then resumed control over the Titan Speaker Man right before the Titan TV Man attacked me. I unleashed all of my might upon the Titan. A relentless barrage of missiles erupted from the cannon on my hand, causing earth-shattering explosions and sending shards of shrapnel hurtling through the air. Yet, the TV man remained unfazed. With his colossal razor blade claws, he descended upon me, inflicting devastating damage. Determined to gain an edge, I swiftly led our battle to the rooftops. A surge of energy erupted from my chest, manifesting as a colossal beam of energy that stretched before me. But even that proved inadequate. As the Titan relentlessly assaulted me with his blades, desperation began to take hold. We plummeted back down to the road below, leaving me no choice but to unleash my sonic boom and bolts of lightning. However, the Titan's power proved insurmountable. In a retaliatory act, he unleashed a blinding flash from his red screen, instantly stunning me. The Titan TV was still far too powerful for me to defeat. My health was low, and the TV aimed to land the final attack. Goodbye. The TV man destroyed the Titan speaker man, causing me to return to my body. The giant TV then aimed towards me and shined his red screen, causing me to black out. On days 90 through 92, I woke up inside of a strange dark void. Standing before me was none other than the Commander Toilet. Commander? Is that you? Am I dead? Don't worry, Max. You are merely dreaming. I'm so happy to see you! Please, tell me what to do! Even with the power of another Titan, I can't defeat the Titan TV! A strong leader adapts to the changes on the battlefield. You have grown more powerful but failed to see that. Approach the battle with the TV Titan differently, and you will discover the truth. I don't understand. You will in due time. Good luck. Win this war for all Escobity toilet kind. On days 93 through 95, I woke up to find myself in a strange underground facility. How did I get here? I thought surely I was killed from the TV man's blast. Regardless, I couldn't let the commander down. I had to figure out a way to defeat the TV Titan. I decided to check out my surroundings when I noticed a top secret room, but it was being guarded by a TV. I can't just walk in. Mind control powers, go! I took control of one of the TV patrolmen and walked up to the guard. I figured I could smooth talk my way in with a disguise. Ah, <laughs> hello, good sir. I like your, uh, suit. Thanks. Today is a special occasion. Oh, really? What day is it again? Terry, you don't remember? Uh... Today's my birthday. How could you forget? No, I didn't. <laughs> Follow me. I uh, have a surprise for you. I lured the naive guard towards my real body and ambushed him when he least expected it. It only took a few moments before I was able to knock him out cold. Let's see what's in that room. On days 96 through 98, I entered the top secret area where the TV Titan was scheming with one of his goons. Inside of the room was a massive super weapon unlike anything I had ever seen before. That doesn't look good. Preparations are nearly completed. Excellent. Soon I'll be able to wipe this world of those horrible toilets and their annoying song. 
on day 100, I'll unleash my weapon and destroy all remaining life. The TVs will win the war. Sir, what if the toilets discover your weakness first? Nonsense. They would never. They're not smart enough to aim for the core of my chest. His chest is his weakness? Maybe that's what I needed to know all along. With my new intel, I quickly rushed back to the base to make the final preparations. I had to get ready to take out the Titan before he could deploy the super weapon. On day 99, I returned home and called a meeting with my army. Everyone gathered around outside the base to listen to my speech. Skibbity toilets! In a day, the TV Titan will unleash a powerful weapon onto us. Things may feel helpless, but I have the solution. I now know the TV Titan's weak point. Before he's able to use his weapon, I will fire my own attack and take him out. With the Titan TV gone, nothing will be able to stop us. Let's win this war for our fallen allies and our commander! As I finished my speech, Cammy rushed over to me with the new upgrade. I used it and my body transformed. I grew bigger in size, gained heavier armor, more hearts, and missiles. I was now a mecha skibbity toilet. My men all rejoiced together and we sang in harmony. It was time to win this war. On day 100, I arrived at the launch site of the super weapon to find the Titan TV preparing his attack. Stop right there! Oh my, it looks like you've gotten an upgrade since our last encounter. That's right! I'll give you the chance to surrender now! Why would I do that? My weapon will soon end this war! Winning it for the TVs! You think those little fireworks strapped to your sides can stop me? There's one way to find out! You're not using that weapon! I readied myself for battle, and the two of us clashed in the fight that would decide the war. Widening my eyes, lasers shot out of my pupils, propelling forward and making a direct hit with the Titan. But my barrage didn't end there. I began bombarding the giant with my missiles. They detonated upon impact, sending the foe stumbling back. After taking a moment to regain his composure, the Titan shambled forward, slamming down his fists in a mighty downward strike. To avoid his specialty of close-range attacks, I moved back and sent forward a flurry of sparks. Bolts of electricity struck down on him from above and a roar of thunder echoed across the battlefield. But that wasn't all I had. Finally, I begun spinning around rapidly, creating a vortex of wind around me and charging to the Titan in a massive whirlwind. The TV Titan was powerful, but I still had my secret weapon up my sleeve. I aimed my missiles and my laser eyes for his chest, and unleashed one final attack as I sang out the Skibbity Toilet tune. Brrr, skibbity bup bup gap, skibbity bup bup yeah, yeah. The missiles exploded onto the Titan TV man, and he was unable to take the hit. He died. On day 101, I was a giant armored Skibbity Toilet. All around me was my army of smaller toilets, destroying the enemy forces with our powerful song. Just then, the TV woman arrived with more TV forces to back her up. We're taking back this war. Her screen lit up bright orange and sent a wave of energy in my direction. Using her powers, she shrunk me back down into a normal skibbity toilet. Oh no, I'm completely defenseless. Things got worse when a Titan mecha cameraman revealed himself on the battlefield. He began to blast away my army with his massive arsenal of weapons. His Gatling gun rained down fire on any toilets within range, while the cannon on his chest was able to target entire groups at once. What remained of my army began to swarm him. The helicopter skibbity toilets used their flight and reach to try to attack higher on the Titan while the regular toilets went for his feet. The mecha cameraman was so massive though that their attacks weren't doing much harm despite their advantage in numbers. He stopped, shot, and blasted them to smithereens. No! My men didn't stand a chance against the mecha cameraman. It was clear that the skibbity toilets were now losing this war. With my army gone, the mecha cameraman set its sights on me, and I was forced to run for my life. On day 102, I was being pursued by the all-powerful mecha cameraman and his camera army. He fired down explosive projectiles from the sky above as I tried to evade each of his attacks. I turned to the streets of the city, but every corner I went down, waves of his men were waiting for me. His camera feed is tracking my every move! I couldn't run forever, but I needed a weapon if I wanted a chance to defend myself. Just then, I spotted a porta potty and had an idea. I climbed into the box and camouflaged as part of the room. I waited patiently for one of the foolish cameramen to walk inside and took my moment to strike. I popped my head out and killed the camera with a surprise attack. Upon his death, he dropped a machine gun. Now this is more like it. 
Just then, the porta potty was blasted apart. The camera feed had given away my location, and I was faced with the entire camera army. Bring it on! On day 103, I was in the middle of a heated battle with the cameraman. Armed with my new machine gun, I was able to blast through the army while I rejoiced in my skibbity toilet song. However, even with this new weapon, their numbers were crushing. I fought with all my might until a new threat emerged. Treads rolled towards my direction, revealing a giant tank cameraman. What is that thing? Eliminate toilet threat. The tank fired its weapons onto me, dealing loads of damage. I knew this was no ordinary camera. I tried to retaliate with my machine gun, but its bullets were completely ineffective on the tank's armored body. This is impossible! The tank began to charge a massive amount of energy. I knew a big attack was coming, so I ducked into my toilet. I endured the blast, but it demolished the floor beneath me, causing me to fall into the darkness below. On days 104 through 106, I landed inside of the waters of the city's sewer system. I looked around and was soon followed by the TV woman's head. I dug behind cover as she began searching for me. They're even monitoring the sewers for me? I can't let my guard down. Next to me, I noticed a plunger I could use to help defend myself. I picked it up and began traversing the sewers. I stealthed through the wet passage of the sewers while the TV woman's head monitored my surroundings. I had a few close calls, but I managed to slip my way deeper inside. Eventually, I found another one of my toilet allies staring at the wall. Thank goodness, someone else just like me. To my horror, this wasn't an ordinary toilet. He had transformed into a zombie. The area flooded with more like him and I braced myself for the impending doom. On days 107 through 109, I was fighting off my zombie brothers. I couldn't let them get too close to me, otherwise I was gonna risk getting bitten. Instead, I used my machine gun to blast them away and keep them at bay until I ran out of ammo. I was forced to use my melee weapon and bash the toilets with a plunger I found. Even so, their numbers were greater than I could have imagined. My plunger weapon was doing the trick, until out of nowhere an even bigger horde of zombified toilets swarmed me. The toilets were practically falling over one another to whack me. I could only barely keep them away, but I had little else to do in this situation. I tried my best to keep them all in sight, but there were too many of them and I was getting ambushed. I had let my guard down and was bitten by one of the zombies. Ow! My body felt heavy and a wave of nausea hit me. If I didn't act fast, I was gonna turn into a zombie just like them. I need to find a cure. I ran for my life. But when I took a wrong turn, I found the TV woman's head waiting for me. Found you! On days 110 through 111, I was about to be scorched by the power of the TV woman, when out of nowhere, a tiny skibbity toilet spider hopped in to help me, catching the TV woman off guard and disorienting her. Follow me! I followed behind my miniature ally and jumped through a pipe after him. When we arrived on the other side, I found myself in a strange laboratory. There, skibbity toilets were locked in cages and were being used in horrible experiments. What's going on here? The cameraman forces have started to turn our own men on us with a zombie serum. Son Suddenly, a strong surge of pain hit me like a ton of bricks. My bite from the previous battle was gonna make me turn soon. The TV woman walked into the room. Release test subject 2B. The room trembled, and down from the ceiling dropped a modded zombie skibbity toilet. Have fun dealing with him. The TV woman exited, and the zombie toilet ran at us with its saw blade spinning. On days 112 through 115, I was being attacked by the modded zombie toilet. The zombie skibbity inched towards me, but I didn't want to hurt it. He was once a normal skibbity after all. I dodged the first few attacks, but he was absolutely relentless, swiping back and forth with his whirring saw blade. Finally, I began to fight back. Despite his massively increased strength, his attacks were a lot easier to predict. Every single opening the modded zombie toilet left, I took advantage of with a well-placed strike. It was incredibly powerful, and I wasn't sure how much longer I was gonna be able to hold on. Hang in there, Max! The mini spider toilet jumped onto the modded zombie and began to mind control him. He held him still, giving me an opening to land the finishing blow. Kill him! Now! But if I do, you'll die too! It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for the war! I knew the mini toilet was right. With a heavy heart, I dealt the final blow and took out the modded zombie skibbity toilet along with my miniature spider ally. I'm sorry, friend. Upon their death, the zombie dropped the cure I needed along with a laser gun. I grabbed them both and ran towards the exit of the facility. But as soon as I made my escape to the surface, the tank cameraman rolled up to stop me. 
On days 116 through 118, I was attacked with a tank cameraman, causing me to drop the zombie serum cure I needed. My foe grabbed it, and he continued forward with his attacks. Aside from the mecha cameraman, this was my toughest foe so far, but I couldn't let all of those toilets fall in vain. But I was so weak from my last encounter. I was in little shape to fight. His rain of bullet fire was incredibly hard to dodge. If I let the tank cameraman land more than a single hit on me, I was done for. My journey would end here and now. Our fight took us across the bridge where his missiles set the forest ablaze. Even with my willpower, I wasn't strong enough to win this battle with brute force. Time for plan B. I took a chance and made a break for a nearby power station, leaving the tank cameraman in pursuit. Hey, Bolt Brain, come and get me! Eliminate toilet threat! The tank charged full speed at me, and I jumped out of the way at the very last moment. The tank collided with the high voltage power lines, shocking his systems and dropping the very cure I was seeking. Yoink! I chugged down the potion and restored myself to full health, giving me the second wind I needed to keep fighting. I continued my onslaught on the tank cameraman until finally he succumbed to my power. Upon his death, he dropped a piece of scrap which I went to claim for myself. However, once I touched it, my body transformed. My porcelain shell turned into armor, and I gained tank wheels to roll over terrain. I was now a tank skibbity toilet with 15 hearts. This is amazing! I didn't have long to celebrate as I heard the sound of approaching footsteps. Using my new wheels, I sped off before anyone else came looking for me. On days 119 through 121, I arrived back in the city to find the Titan cameraman looming over me. Oh no! They already found me! The Titan cameraman powered up his artillery and fired down onto me with his lasers. I maneuvered as best as I could, and my increased defenses blocked tons of damage. The two of us returned fire at one another. I used my massive bomb launcher to soften up his armor. The Titan cameraman's lasers were deadly and destructive, so much so that I could only ride through a sea of flames. I held on, confident I might be able to win this thing. Suddenly, camera tank reinforcements came to his aid. I tried to blast him away, but the overwhelming number of them was too much for me to handle. One of the tanks managed to come to the Titan's side and use an upgrade that caused the Titan cameraman to transform. His armor grew sturdier, and his shield transformed into a powerful hammer. He was now an upgraded Titan cameraman. That's not fair! The Titan lifted his hammer and smashed it into the ground, sending me flying into the sky with a massive shockwave. On days 122 through 124, I landed inside of an area surrounded by boiling hot lava. Thanks to my tough tank exterior, I survived the fall damage, but I was left with extremely low health. I have to tread carefully. Just then, I spotted the upgraded Titan cameraman flying overhead in the distance. He's coming to finish me off! I have to get out of here! The gap in the lava surrounding me was too big for me to jump, and there wasn't enough time to build a bridge, so I had to come up with something else. FIRE! I brute forced my way through and unloaded my weapons on the terrain around me. Once the dust settled, the rubble filled the gap, forming a makeshift bridge. I sped across the bridge and ran for my life as the upgraded Titan flew in closer. You're not escaping. On days 125 through 126, I sped through the trees and mountains to avoid any attacks the upgraded Titan cameraman might throw at me. I looked behind me and noticed the massive hammer he was wielding. If I get hit by that thing, I'm toast! I couldn't keep up the pace and I was beginning to slow down. I thought this was the end until I heard a familiar voice. Incoming! I looked up and spotted a helicopter skibbity from back in day one flying to aid me in battle. They used a special attack that managed to stun the Titan temporarily. Follow me, quick! I did as they said and zoomed off to the skibbity toilet, leaving the Titan clueless as to where I went. Once we were far enough away, we found a good spot to hide. Thanks for saving me back there. What's your name, soldier? Where are the others? I'm Chopper, sir. The other toilets are still trapped in a cameraman prison. I was the only one who escaped. Take me there! We need to save our friends! On days 127 through 129, I followed my skibbity friend until we arrived at a heavily secured prison floating in the sky. It was crawling with cameraman guards. How are we gonna get in there? You stay behind. They'll be looking for helicopter toilets. I got this. Not wanting to put any more of my skibbity allies at risk of being captured, I continued into the mission alone. I made the slow climb up the massive tether attached to the aerial prison. After reaching the top, I began stealthing through the facility, looking for any of my captured friends. Due to my larger tank size, it was a bit more difficult to avoid the cameraman guards. After having a few close calls, I managed to find the entrance to the prison cells, but it was being guarded. I waited for the guard blocking my way to move along and then rushed in. 
Once inside, I noticed there were loads of cages with toilets trapped within them. Don't worry guys, your commander has arrived. I tried to open one of the cages, but when I did, alarms began to blare. That's not good. The wall of the cell room blasted open and an army of tank cameramen was revealed on the other side. Intruder! On days 130 through 133, I was getting swarmed by a horde of tank cameramen. Thanks to my hardened exterior, this fight was fair game, but their numbers were quickly becoming overwhelming. I fired a barrage of rockets onto the camera tanks and quickly drove into the room. My tank tread screaming as I ducked and dodged a hailstorm of machine gun fire that the camera toilets fired from every direction. I did my best to not get shot, but their sheer numbers made it easy for them to maneuver around me and block my path. Lucky for me, my hardened porcelain tank exterior deflected a lot of the bullet's damage as I swung my mighty plunger to push past their troops. Some of them were equipped with flamethrowers and pretty soon the whole room was lit on fire. I did my best to dodge the fire and fought them off with my laser and machine guns. As I began to fire my own munitions back at my enemies, one by one they started to fall. Unfortunately, the rate at which I was taking them out wasn't fast enough. I started shooting more rockets focused on the crowd to give me some room to breathe. My armor was tough, but I was beginning to see that the staggering number of enemies I had to face was too much for me. I need backup! Feeling like it was over, I looked around to see if I could change the fate of this fight. I quickly spotted a control panel and rushed over to it. Not knowing what it would do, I began blasting the panel with my weapons, breaking it completely. Luckily for me, the prison cell gates began to open, freeing my skibbity toilet allies. Attack my brothers! We all sang our skibbity toilet song, and together we faced off against the cameraman tank forces. My toilet brothers died into the flames, surrounding each camera tank one by one and overwhelming them. With the tanks distracted by my allies, I took the opportunity to open fire all my strongest attacks on the camera tanks, dwindling their numbers fast. Once we had the edge, I prioritized the mission over victory, and we retreated. Let's go, men! No other toilets are dying today! We ran out and managed to escape the clutches of the cameraman prison. On days 134 through 136, my crew and I ran from the prison and reunited with Chopper. They won't be far behind us. We all showed up on their camera feed so they'll know where we are. We have to make ourselves some cover. Me and all my fellow toilets traveled to the wilderness to find a safe area. We needed somewhere away from the city to call our base of operations for the resistance. When we found a spot, we quickly dug a hole in the ground to hide it. Seconds after we all jumped in, I heard the sound of mechanical treads and knew the cameramen were coming. Everyone stay silent! We all were quiet as they passed, and thankfully went undetected for now. Phew! That was close. Now we got busy constructing and fortifying a new base. Something that would strike fear in any cameraman that saw it. A giant tank toilet. Reinforced with armor just as tough as my own. Inside we made a space for my soldiers to rest and my scientists to experiment. I made a farm to feed my army and a room for myself equipped with a custom toilet bed. Finally, we added a war room to discuss our plans to defeat the cameraman forces. Even with our numbers regrowing, how are we supposed to stand a chance against these guys? Actually, I think I have an idea. Chopper explained to me that all the Titans have special electronics and parts in them, and if I can beat the Titans, he can use their parts to upgrade me. Then I know exactly what I need to do. Suddenly, one of my men ran up in a panic. The Titan cameraman is getting close to our pace. We need you, Commander. Huh, convenient. All right, men. Let's head out! On days 137 through 140, I charged my men towards the location of the Titan cameraman. The Titan was blasting our buildings, looking everywhere for any signs of our army. Come out, skibbity toilets. I know you're around here somewhere. Right behind you, big guy! We charged into battle, briefly catching the Titan off guard. The toilets wailed on him and tried to knock him over, but after regaining his senses, he blasted back with his most powerful attacks. We were in a real fight. His laser and rockets ripped through our forces as we chanted our skibbity war cry. I put some distance between me and the enraged titan and took out my open laser gun. Firing much smaller beams of energy up at the titan, I still managed to push it back some. It lashed out at my forces in response, sending toilets flying, but they quickly regrouped. I rallied the troops as they fearlessly charged back into battle. Their porcelain bodies cracked, but not yet broken. The camera titan roamed the battlefield, firing its various powers down on us and engulfing the city corner in a sea of flames. I fired my heavy rocket attacks to deal some serious damage to the titan for the first time in this battle. With the fire, I had to constantly eat steak to keep my health up, but I didn't hesitate to run into the fray with my men attacking the titan's feet with my plunger. I then sprayed my machine gun at the camera head of the titan and got its attention. He fired his laser and swung his hammer, now focused at me, giving my men some time to regroup. It wasn't long before the Skibbity army attacked again in full force. With my growing army overwhelming him, it seemed like we had the upper hand. Unfortunately, the Titan had one more trick up his sleeve. Enough! 
With a massive strike, the Titan brought his hammer down and sent me flying. I landed outside of the city, completely separated from my army, and the Titan cameraman landed across from me. This fight is between you and me. On days 141 through 143, I was face to face yeah. with the Titan cameraman with no army to back me up. Both of us were weak, but I had to win this for the sake of Toilet Kind. I charged the Titan across the narrow top of the mountaintop. I gave him everything I had, blasting rockets and swinging my plunger, but he brought his giant hammer down, cracking against the top of the mountain and sending me tumbling down its side. I quickly regained my bearings and ran further down into the woods below, switching to my laser and machine guns and firing at the titan above me. I ducked past the trees as the camera titan used its flamethrower and lasers to set the forest ablaze. Explosions went off all around me as I retreated to the river before turning back to fire a barrage of rockets. The titan marched through them undeterred, heading straight for me. My armor may have been tough, but I had to be smart if I didn't want to get swept away in the titan cameraman's firepower. I tried to get my health back up by eating as I crossed the river. I tried to maintain my distance from it as I used my laser gun. He fired his own and explosions went off everywhere as the beams collided. I knew if I was going to finish this once and for all, I would need to get the high ground. I went into top gear and sped back to the mountain where this fight started. I was almost there, but to my horror, the titan cameraman flew past me cutting me off. The fight was close, and I was low on health, but I heard my men calling out below. They had followed me here, and they were cheering. Max! 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 The chant of my army gave me strength, and I defeated the Titan with one last flurry of plunger hits. After the massive cameraman fell, he dropped the Titan part that I needed. I picked it up and instantly felt its power as it transformed me into a Titan skibbity toilet. I now had 10 additional hearts, a missile cannon arm, and super strong punches. Whoa! Now this is more like it! As I celebrated, the sound of my army cheering was drowned out by a different, much louder sound. As I looked over the horizon, I saw and heard an approaching horde of... Speakermen! Everyone, run! On days 144 through 146, I fought off the incoming horde of speaker goons as my army bolted back to the base. The speakerman horde quickly surrounded me from every angle. They tried to use their numbers to overwhelm me, attacking me from every direction. Even with their numbers, the regular speakerman didn't hurt much, but the larger speakerman's blows were much heavier. Luckily for me, my new titan form could take a beating. I swung my mighty fist, causing explosions in the crowd. After they were thrown back, I would then use my missiles to devastate their forces. Still, they were relentless, swarming back every time I threw them away. Fortunately, their numbers meant nothing now that I could fly. I launched up and landed on a nearby overpass. I rained down missiles as they were unable to hit me. The speaker man started to fall one by one until suddenly they changed their tactics. Retreating back to gain some distance, they began to fire booming sound waves at me. My head was sent spinning as I was struck from every direction. One or two sound blasts were okay, but when they grouped up, it was unbearable. I fired my missiles wildly to disperse their forces. As the crowd thinned and pulled apart, I charged in close to finish the stragglers with my powerful punches. I knew I had to match their numbers with sheer firepower. I unleashed everything I had, including my laser and my machine gun on them. I was unstoppable! Yeah! Take that! I was making quick work of the speakers until I spotted the Titan speaker man flying overhead. Not this guy! They touched down right in front of me. It was impossible to get away in time. Yo, Rothman's here, skibbity toilet. Without hesitation, he blasted me with a huge sonic boom attack. The sound made my ears ring like crazy, and I was left paralyzed by its intensity. Ah! My head! I can't hold on! The next thing I knew, everything went black. On days 147 through 150, I woke up confined in a cage in some sort of facility. Huh? Where am I? Wait, TV woman? The TV woman was standing in front of me on the other side of the bars. At last, we've apprehended you. You won't be getting any stronger now. She detached her head, which landed on top of mine and sent me into a vision. I was standing in a field as a normal skibbity toilet, with all of my skibbity allies around me singing merrily. Everyone seemed really happy. Out of nowhere, the TV woman appeared, but she was giant. Yes, this is it. She shined her screen onto all of us, setting us ablaze and killing everyone. No! <laughs> Submit already! Your resistance is futile. No! I refuse! You can't fool me! I know this is all in my head! Through sheer willpower, I grew back into a titan even larger than TV Woman and clobbered her. The moment she reeled back, I snapped back into reality. The TV Woman's head flew off of me and back to herself. <sighs> Looks like I'll have to do this the hard way. 
She left angrily, and after her, the mecha cameraman came in. Eliminate threat. On days 151 to 152, the mecha cameraman readied his weapons. There was no way I was gonna get out of this one alive. It had to be the end. Stay away from him. It was Chopper, and he had arrived just in time. He buzzed around the mecha cameraman, buying me the seconds I needed. Quickly, I broke out of the cage. Let's go! The two of us made a run for it. Eliminate! Eliminate! Behind us, the mecha cameraman locked onto me from afar and fired his cannons. No! Chopper intercepted the attack, taking incredible damage in my stead. Chopper! No! <clears throat> I'm okay. Let's keep moving. We kept running until finally we escaped all the way back to our base. Chopper, are you okay? I don't have much time. Please, find the nano repair pod just north of here. Without it, I'll be done for. You got it. I didn't have a moment to waste. As fast as I could, I took to the skies. Between days 153 and 155, I made my way northward and found a cameraman weapons facility waiting for me. This must be the place. I had better hurry though. Chopper's running out of time. I chose to stealth around the facility, but stealth will only get you so far when you're a massive skibbity titan. Ah, if only there's a way to get smaller. I tried my best to evade the patrols of the cameraman tanks by ducking behind buildings as they moved around the facility. Finally, I spotted the item surrounded by barricades and lasers. There it is. I'm getting so close. I just need to stay. Hey, Skibbity Titan, 10 o'clock. Hidden. Skibbity Titan detected. Engaging. It was the beginning of days 156 to 158 that the host of tank cameramen descended upon me. Come on, can't I ever catch a break? The tanks were just as strong as before, but in my titan form, I was able to take them. Now it's an even fight. In the midst of the unending barrage of bullets from the enemy, I responded in kind by launching ammunition of my own, firing rockets that demonstrated my overwhelming firepower. Realizing they were outmatched, the cameraman became increasingly desperate, rushing me in a coordinated attempt to overpower me. Stepping over the compact tanks who could do little to stop me, I employed a lethal combination of laser precision and machine gun fury to thin their ranks. As bullets sliced through the air, I gracefully ascended to the skies, evading the most potent threats. I encountered more tanks lying in the wait. They ambushed me with a barrage of bullets, forcing me back to the ground below. As I landed in the trenches, the relentless tanks surged forward once again, only to be met with my resolute counterattacks, a series of monumental punches that sent them scattering. Despite my strength as a skippity titan, I couldn't defeat them all. There's too many, time for a change of plans. I rushed through the barricade and grabbed the upgrade for Chopper and promptly took to the skies. The tank cameramen fired so many projectiles at me, I thought they might empty their weapon systems. Titan Speakerman, follow him. Emerging from the facility, the Titan Speakerman soared into the air, hurtling towards me. I needed to get this upgrade to Chopper as soon as possible, but I knew that I'd be leading the Speakerman right to my base. Ugh. I'm gonna have to be smart about this. Suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I spotted a rogue speaker spider walking in a different direction. I followed them to see where they led, outpacing the Titan speaker man. On days 159 through 161, I trailed the speaker spider to another massive facility. Deep inside, I spotted some sort of device sitting on a pedestal. What's that? Is this something I can use to my advantage? I mean, it must be important, right? Having learned my lesson from earlier, I waited patiently for the speaker spider to leave. When the coast was clear, I swiped it from its pedestal. Now that I had it, I decided to fiddle around with it. Now just what do you do, huh? I activated the device and suddenly shrank down to a fifth of my size. Whoa! Thinking quickly, I used my reduced size to my advantage and hid in a small nook. To my horror, the Titan Speaker Man had caught up with me and began to search the area. I know you're in here, toilet. Come out so I can flush you. Make it easier on both of us. He spent a good amount of time searching, but thanks to my small size, he lost me for now. I need to get back to Chopper before it's too late. On days 162 through 164, I returned to the base and used the device to return to normal size again. I quickly went and fixed Chopper up before he succumbed to the damage. Sir, while I was hurt, I could barely stay awake, but while I was asleep, I had a dream. What kind of dream? Just give me a minute. You'll see. I followed Chopper outside and he started building something. Once he was finished, it looked like some kind of massive signal tower. Just then, we began to hear the loud music of the Speaker Man army approaching. I hope this works. He started up the signal tower, and as the speakers came up over the hill, their loud music turned into the skibbity song. Ah! Oh god, I'm too old for this Gen Alpha garbage! They all freaked out and started dying one by one. Great work, Chopper! Not so fast, little friend. 
The Titan Speaker Man descended from the skies and touched down in front of us. The signal tower! It has no effect on him? Chopper, run! I got this! But just go! On days 165 through 168, it was a one-on-one -on -one fight between me and the Titan Speaker Man. Wasting no time, I made the first attack. Without another word, I charged at the gargantuan foe, not granting him even a moment of respite as I immediately swung my mighty mechanical fists in his direction. With a ferocious clang from my massive metal hands, I made contact with a direct, close-range hit. As I pummeled relentlessly into the Titan, he attempted to retaliate with a melee attack of his own, but his close-range abilities were no match for my own. This gave me a false impression that this battle would be a breeze, but that was shattered as the foe unleashed a blinding laser directly in front of me. The beam soared in the air at a rapid speed before hitting me point blank and sending me reeling back. That laser served as a firing gun for the beginning of our fierce duel. Engulfed in a storm of projectiles, we traded fiery barrages of weaponry. Rockets thundered from my arsenal, and as they rained down upon him, I took to the skies in an attempt to evade his reciprocative attacks. Taking me by surprise, the fiend unleashed waves of devastating sonic booms, leaving me spiraling. It was then that I recognized the threat to my comrades, so I tactically retreated away from my base, ensuring their safety amidst the impending chaos. But the speaker man followed close behind. Across the desolation of the battleground, we clashed fiercely, our weaponry igniting fires that consumed the landscape. With each blow, the titan's life force waned, but mine was not faring much better. I needed to finish the fight once and for all, so I lured the speaker man to the very hill his men had perished upon. There, the battle continued with increased vigor. Amidst a symphony of exchange attacks, our Titan powers reverberated for miles. I summoned my last reserves of strength and, catching the foe by surprise, delivered a final blow onto the enemy. With the opening I created, I managed to overpower the Titan Speaker Man. Finally, the Goliath came crashing down. After I defeated the Titan Speaker Man, I saw another upgrade. I used it to transform into a new form. I now had a plunger sword arm and five more hearts. <laughs> I'm awesome! Who else was to take me on? Suddenly, the Titan Mega Cameraman came flying down out of nowhere. I do. On days 169 to 171, I was face to face with the Titan Mecha Cameraman. He was intimidating to say the least, with his massive height towering over me. Your little resistance is about to be phased out. Yeah, right. Look how powerful I've become. I can take on anything, including you and any cameraman that gets in my way. Or so you thought. How do you think you got here in the first place? This was my plan all along. To let you grow stronger so you would get overconfident and die. You're joking if you think you're going to defeat me. Eager to prove him wrong, I charged in enthusiastically at the gargantuan cameraman. As the two of us clashed, we exchanged a flurry of monumental blows, each strike resonating with undeniable force. Quickly, the truth became apparent. His assaults were inflicting colossal damage to me and I couldn't withstand them for much longer. Determined to emerge victorious, I shifted strategies and attempted to outmaneuver my larger adversary, employing a bombardment of missiles and laser gunfire as I nimbly circled around him in the air. Yet, it became increasingly more apparent that my efforts were no match for his might. In fact, I was barely penetrating his defenses. I wasn't hurting the cameraman. I was hardly even tickling him. Unleashing the full extent of my power, I hurled every resource in my arsenal his way. But to my dismay, my health continued to dwindle. Even in this incredible form, I couldn't take them out. I thought to myself, maybe I wasn't prepared for this fight. Just give up. You don't stand a chance. I'll never back down, and I'll never give up. I was hit with a large attack and knocked down to half a heart. I thought it was the end of me. Just then, I thought of a plan. I shrunk my size right before the mecha could kill me and was practically invisible since he was so large. <laughs> you can't see me! The mecha cameraman blasted everywhere, but he couldn't get a direct hit onto me. Run while you can. I'll hunt you down and dismember you myself. With immense frustration, the mecha cameraman left the area. On days 172 through 174, I regrouped with Chopper and the rest of my men. Okay, any ideas on how to beat this guy? You're probably gonna need another upgrade. Luckily, we've gathered some intel on where another Titan is. Chopper handed me a map to a TV men base not far from here. I thanked him and set out to find it. When I arrived, I found that the TV base was also a train station. I have to be sneaky if I want to avoid a dangerous fight. I shrunk myself down so I wouldn't be spotted by the TVs as I stealthily maneuvered around their base. I stayed close to the walls, and when guards came towards my direction, I hid underneath a nearby train car. Hey, did you see something just now? Nope, just the rats. 
Phew! That was a close one. Finally, I made it into a broadcasting room that was lined wall to wall with screens. The TV men had access to every camera feed in the city and were watching everything. I looked through all the screens and spotted a strange looking one. Wait, that's... Found you, rat. The roof exploded and revealed the titan I was looking for, the Cinema Man. On day 175 through 176, the Cinema Man towered over me in a trap laid by the TV woman. Directive, eliminate all skibbity toilets. You must be the newest titan. Time to take you down. Target acquired. On the rooftop of the train station, we lunged towards each other, clashing with an immense force. As our battle commenced, rockets, beams of lasers, and streams of fire flew around us, causing great collateral damage to the site, reducing it to rubble. With all of the power I could muster, I released a mighty swing in my plunger, making direct contact with the foe. He retaliated with his own close-range attack, rapidly firing a flurry of punches towards me. But despite his efforts, I was still able to maintain the upper hand, landing blow after blow consecutively. However, my advantage wouldn't last for long, as the Cinema Man's screens suddenly flashed bright red. The screen's image sent me reeling in pain, and I stumbled back. Now that there was some distance between us, I took to the skies in an attempt to evade and outmaneuver the foe. However, even in the skies, I wasn't safe from the Cinema Man's wrath. Lasers and rockets whizzed by me, soaring through the air and exploding all across the city as the two of us titans clash once more. Swooping in overhead, I unleashed a series of flyby hits on the adversary with my plunger. After some time, we met face to face again, this time on top of an overpass. Our fierce battle raged on. We unleashed the full extent of our powers onto each other, utilizing our heavy melee attacks and launching our massive firepower point blank at one another. Once more, the foe's screen became a glow with red, forcing me to recoil. I could withhold my rage no longer, and as I pushed back, it all came exploding out of me in the form of my new ability. My sheer anger and rage transformed into sound waves and blasted back against the cinema man. It was apparent that I had absorbed more from the titan than I had realized. Putting some distance between the two of us, I bombarded the cinema man with an unrelenting wave of back-to-back -back sonic booms. Thanks to my upgrades and battle experience, I was strong enough to rival the titan. The fight was neck and neck, and it was beginning to look like I could win. Just then, I spotted a camera woman down below. Surprise! The camera woman aimed a crazy looking weapon at me and fired, doing loads of damage. Gah! I couldn't withstand the damage, and before I knew it, I blacked out. On days 177 through 178, I woke up in a cage over a pit of boiling lava. Looks like you're finally awake. What are you gonna do to me? What we should do to all skibbity toilets like you. Melt you down to scrap. No way! I'm out of here! I quickly shrunk down and slipped through the bars before she could open the bottom of the cage into the lava. I tried to take to the skies, but she locked onto me with her weapon. Oh no you don't. Despite my size, she hit me with a direct attack and sent me plummeting to the ground. The impact sent me back to my normal size, and the camera woman walked up to me weapon aimed. Any last words? Leave him alone! To my surprise, Chopper had come to aid me with the rest of my army. The camera woman shot at my forces but couldn't keep up with their numbers and had to retreat. I used their distraction to make a quick escape. On days 179 to 180, I regrouped with Chopper and the remnants of my forces. Where are the others? While you escaped, they were all abducted by the enemy. What? No! We have to save them! I started to run off, but Chopper stopped me. Wait! Not yet! It would be foolish to run in blindly. Fine. Then what do you recommend? I found the whereabouts of another upgrade. If you get it first, then we can infiltrate the base and save them. Chopper handed me the coordinates and I set off. They'd led me straight to an amusement park. Things seemed to be too quiet though. I don't see any upgrades around here. I heard a sound behind me, and when I rolled around, I spotted a horde of camera toilets coming right at me. Those monsters! Look what they did to my men! I braced myself for the incoming clash. On days 181 to 182, I was attacked by the camera toilets. No, this is terrible. I didn't want to hurt them, but I had no choice. They were vicious and obviously didn't remember me. The friends I knew were gone. Fine, take this. I unleashed a storm of rockets that rained down onto the wave of enemies, exploding on impact. As I picked off the last few mindless camera toilets that survived the blast, reinforcements came charging at me from across the bridge. The mental toll of slaughtering my own man was weighing heavy on me, but I couldn't linger on the feeling for too long. Unloading my gun, bullets sprayed all around me, finishing off the last remaining stragglers. With a heavy heart, I took out the last toilet abomination. I'm sorry, everyone. I'll save the rest of you. I promise. The toilets had dropped something upon death. It was the upgrade I was looking for. Hopefully this does the trick. I used the upgrade in a whole arsenal of weapons appeared in my inventory. These would pack a punch. Also, my armor became thicker and stronger. Now time to save the remainder of my army. 
On days 183 to 184, I arrived back at the TV station where the TV men were busy rebuilding from the rubble. At the center of the construction, they had all of my army trapped. Let's wreak some havoc! I flew in and started wrecking the place again, using my new power to destroy everything they were building. It's the Titan! Get him! The TV men started to fire back at me. Soaring in at full speed, I unleashed a torrent of rockets aimed directly at the structures the adversaries were stationed on. As the projectiles found their mark, they unleashed a massive explosion, reducing the constructions beneath the foes to debris and sending the enemies hurtling to the ground below. But their retaliation was swift. The TV men began to unleash a hail of gunfire aimed in my direction. However, my arsenal would prove far superior. With the relentless chatter of my minigun, the calculated precision of my sniper, and the explosive punctuation of my rocket launcher, shotgun, and grenade launcher, the foes didn't stand a chance. But there were still way too many TV men. There was only one solution here. Bombs away! I blasted open the cages and set my men free. George! My men poured out of their cages to fight the TVs for me. As chaos ensued, I noticed a familiar shape in the distance. It was the Cinema Man. We have these guys, sir. Go for the Cinema Man. Thanks, everyone! With my forces covering the fight here, I left them to go and confront the Titan. On days 185 through 186, I charged toward the Cinema Man to take him down once and for all. The two of us began duking it out on the rooftops of the city skyscrapers. With my trusty plunger and his swift punches, we engaged in an epic duel of fisticuffs. As I swung my weapon down onto the enemy, he recoiled back and unleashed a barrage of flames at me in my direction. To evade his blasts, I maneuvered to the edge of the city alongside the water. There, I released my arsenal of weaponry, encompassing a missile launcher for long-range devastation, a shotgun for close quarters impact, a precision sniper for unparalleled accuracy, and I emitted an ear-piercing sonic blast. As the foe was sent reeling back from my screech, I seized the opportunity to put some distance between us. I launched up to the skies and took a moment to eat, regaining some of my lost health. Having the aerial advantage, I fired at him from above. Despite my upper hand, the enemy was still as tough as ever. I needed to lure him into a trap. Flying forward, I led him onto the deck of a docked boat. There, I unleashed my rockets once more, forcing the foe to choose between facing a watery demise by jumping in the ocean below or choosing to remain on the ship and burning to a crisp. Landing atop the vessel, I prepared the final blow, but as a last-ditch effort, the fiend's screen lit up red in self-defense. Nevertheless, his futile resistance was powerless to stop me as I unleashed my bazooka, obliterating him in a resounding blast. Once the Titan had fallen, he dropped an upgrade that I quickly picked up and I immediately gained five more hearts and an upgraded version of my laser beam. Its power was now so focused, it cut through blocks like nothing. This is incredible! Suddenly, the mecha cameraman arrived once again. You may have defeated Cinema Man, but I still have the might of my entire army. The area began to flood in with his cameraman tank army, completely overwhelming me with his forces. There was no way I could take on another Titan and an enemy fleet of this size. My only option was to retreat. I fled the area as the mecha cameraman and his camera army fired in my direction. On days 187 through 188, I managed to arrive back at my base with the remainder of my army to discuss our next course of action. Even with this upgrade, their numbers are overwhelming. How are we supposed to win this war? We have to get some stronger allies of our own, and I think I know just the people who can help. Chopper then handed me a list of names of different Skibbity toilets that could potentially join our cause. The modded Skibbity, Sawblade Skibbity, Jetpack Skibbity, and Armored Skibbity Toilets. What do I do with a list of names? These are the names of the four legendary Skibbity Toilets. They were captured by the enemy forces, and if we can recruit them, we might stand a chance against their cameraman tanks. Chopper went on to explain where I could find these various skibbity toilets and how each of them can aid us in this fight against our enemies. Then what are we waiting for? Time to get searching! I exited my base and took to the skies in search of my first ally to save. On days 189 and 190, I flew through the skies until I spotted a floating sky base, like the prison I had been to earlier. I snuck inside and discovered a jetpack skibbity toilet trapped in some kind of special prison cell. There's the first legendary toilet! And help finally arrived. You know it! Stand back! I used my rockets to blast open the cage, bring the jetpacks given, but the explosion set off an alarm and camera tanks rushed in to stop us. I was about to spring into action when the jetpack Skibbity stepped forward and started melting them all down with his laser eyes. Don't worry, I've got this. Go save the others. Okay, I'll see you soon. I flew away from the base, but I was hit by a well-placed rocket. My jetpack sputtered and failed, and I plummeted towards the earth. On days 191 and 192, I crash landed into the ocean. As I was looking around to see where I was, I saw the sawblade skibbity trapped in a water top 
camera base. Well, well, it looks like they brought me right to the next toilet. I flew up to free the Sawblade Skibbity from his prison. At last, the toilets will rise up again. Thanks, mate. Let me fix that jetpack for you. The Sawblade Skibbity repaired the boosters on my jetpack and told me where I could find the modded Skibbity. As he was making some final adjustments, a bunch of guards came rushing in. I was about to fight them off when he stopped me. Don't worry, I've got this. The Sawblade Skibbity zipped around the room, making short work of all the guards. They didn't stand a chance. Keep moving, I'll meet you at the base. On days 193 and 194, I continued my journey, searching for the remaining legendary Skibbity toilets. Following what the Sawblade Skibbity toilet said, I came across a volcano and took a look inside. The modded Skibbity was inside, locked in a cage that was surrounded by lava. I rushed in to save him, but before I could get too close, he yelled out to me. Look out! Suddenly, the camera woman jumped out from behind a rock and ambushed me. Not so fast. Without another word, she promptly unleashed a barrage of lasers that were able to damage me even despite my armor. In response, I swiftly utilized my arsenal of weaponry and returned fire. Despite my best efforts, the camera woman managed to deftly navigate the volcanic terrain, nimbly dodging all of my attacks, even evading my most agile missiles. Finally having had enough of this cat and mouse game, I struck back with my upgraded laser, obliterating her and reducing the ground beneath her to nothing but rubble. After I defeated Camera Woman, I was able to finally free the modded Skibbity from his cage. Thanks, brother, but we don't have much time. I overheard the Camera Woman saying the armored Skibbity is about to get executed. Not on my watch! On days 195 and 196, I traveled to the final location to find and save the captured armored Skibbity from the clutches of the cameramen. After I arrived, I explored the area cautiously, before finding the armored Skibbity in a massive cage. Commander? I looked closer and realized it was a different armored Skibbity, much larger than my fallen commander. The TV woman was in front of his cage. She was telling him her master plan. I shrank down and crept in close to listen. You may kill me here, but you will never win this war. See, that's where you're wrong. We've already begun plans for unleashing the final attack on the toilets. In five days, the mega cameraman will strike down your titan toilet leader, winning the war for the cameras. You'll never get away with this. Oh, we already have. Don't speak so soon. I took the TV woman by surprise and jumped from my hiding spot ready to fight. Before I could do anything, she acted fast and flashed her screen, lighting me on fire. My shrinking device was caught in the crossfire and began to malfunction. I couldn't revert to my titan form. I wasn't about to let that stop me though. If I couldn't fight as a titan, my mini form would have to do. As I flew at her to fight back, she detached her head and ran out of reach of my melee attacks. So I pulled up my guns and started to shoot. TV Woman had some tricks up her sleeve as well. She fired back with blinding TV flashes that lit me on fire or electrocuted me, as well as sprayed confusing rays of stars at me that darkened my vision, blinding me. It was hard to fight in that state, but I was determined to win, and eventually I realized that it would be a lot easier to attack her main body. With the help of my trusty bazooka, I took aim and sent her body flying. Even though I had gotten the upper hand in our fight, the TV Woman reattached her head and fled before I could defeat her. You're a fool! If you think you can stop us. After she left, my shrinking device started working again. I rushed over to the armored Skibbity and released him from his cage. Come on, let's go regroup with the others. We have to prepare for the final battle. On days 197 and 198, the armored Skibbity and I returned to our resistance base and met up with all of our troops. They would need protection for the upcoming battle against the cameramen. I made helmets, chest armor, leggings, and boots for all of my allies. I wanted to make sure they'd be well protected and survive the onslaught. I handed out swords, guns, and other weapons as well as food so we'd be ready for anything. With all the preparations made, I rallied the troops so I could give a speech before the attack. My soldiers looked up at me, and I knew they were eager to take the fight to the cameraman. Attention Skibbity Toilets! The camera army is planning to strike me down in a matter of days and end the war. We cannot allow this to happen! I have managed to free all four of the legendary toilets, so we have the upper hand. We will strike with an army much more powerful than before. Stand with me, and we will win this war for Skibbity Toilet Kind! The Skibbity Toilet Army cheered as I finished my speech, and I knew they were ready to take on the enemy. With courage burning in our hearts, we set off towards the battlefield. On day 199, my Toilet Army stormed towards the city, ready to take on the enemy. When we arrived, the TV woman was already waiting for us, surrounded by her goons. Well, look who finally decided to show up. Huh. Your journey ends here, dirty toilets. I think you're sorely mistaken, TV woman. My army is much stronger than ever before, and so am I. Even with the legendary toilets on your side, you're no match for our might. 
charge! Yeah! My army bravely charged into battle, ready for anything that they could throw at us. Chaos erupted as the two armies clashed with monumental force. Amidst the destruction, I soared through the sky, releasing a barrage of rockets overhead of the enemy forces and unleashing laser fire. The colossal armored skibbity toilet began spinning rapidly, transforming into a whirling tornado which hurled adversary skyward. Meanwhile, the sawblade skibbity toilet swiftly darted through enemy ranks. In the heat of battle, the modded skibbity toilet took advantage of his proximity to the ground to methodically execute precise melee attacks, taking the foes out one by one with unrivaled precision. In the air, the jetpack skibbity toilet dies lit ablaze with lasers, slicing through the opposing army from above. He fired his gun, the blast echoing through the battlefield. Our armies were looking evenly matched, when suddenly I spotted the mecha cameraman approaching in the distance. I needed to stop him before he reached my army. Continue ahead, sir. We can handle things back here. Good work, soldier. With that, I turned away from my army and went to confront the mecha cameraman. On day 200, I stopped the mecha cameraman before he could reach the battlefield. Your fight is not with them. This is between you and me. So be it. The mecha cameraman flew at me, and the fight began. He began by blasting scorching flames directly in my face, sending me staggering back off of the building's edge. Regaining my composure, I retaliated with a swing of my mighty fist, but the mecha cameraman towered over me, seemingly unfazed by the blow. As the two of us circled in deadly combat, he unleashed incredibly powerful missiles at me with explosions so great that left craters in their wake, and intense lasers that burned through my remaining hearts. I fired back with all the weapons in my arsenal, but they barely even seemed to scratch him. Utilizing my upgraded missile, I unleashed my strongest attack, but he even managed to tank through that. In turn, he began to hit me with his own new and improved abilities, including a jolting static shock and disorienting high-pitched frequency assault that sent me dazed and confused. Our fight spilled into the surrounding areas. Bombs and lasers went flying everywhere as we flew around each other in a deadly dogfight amongst the top of the nuclear reactor. My hearts were constantly diminishing and I tried desperately to keep them up by eating, but I knew this song and dance couldn't last forever. He was by far the toughest foe I had ever faced, and all of his upgrades made him even tougher. But I couldn't let my men down after everything we had been through. I charged in and hit him with one final huge blow. I blasted a laser so concentrated and prolonged it left a massive crater and slowly burned away the mecha cameraman's armor till the there was nothing left. He was defeated. I did it! I had survived the cameraman onslaught, and the skibbity toilets had won the war.